Good morning, good morning, good morning. We are on the train this morning, so we got a few few minutes to wait, but I um, wanted to go ahead and kind of kick off stream. Doing some legislative things. I need to work on a couple items. Figured might as well show this stuff. Just a little zoom image, zoom image here. So first things first, updating the racketeering Rico charge. Question is, do we want to add an accessory charge? What does the original legislation say? Hit Google. Accessory after the fact. 18 US Code 3. This was an addition in 1986 to the original 1948 charge of what accessory stands for. This is one of those things that I need to kind of go see what the wording looks like inside of the, the game to know what the scope of our accessory charge could be. Rico is is an interesting one in and of itself because it specifically is defined for like large enterprises. How in depth do I need to go with this though? That's the TBD. Section 109 of the Department of Justice under RICO charges, CRM 199. No, CRM 108, 109, there we go. Also, good morning for those who have just joined. Glad to have you. We got an email this morning from Storm that there were some things going on at the prison that needed discussion and the warden was unwilling to engage with her. So we'll see. The scope of what's going on once I get in character. literally just copying this terminology for what Rico definitions are. Uh, we'll just leave it like it was.
uh, unlawful for anyone employed by or associated with an enterprise engaged in or the activities of which affect we have to take interstate or foreign commerce out we have to redefine that for los santos phrasing say state commerce Oh, this is going to be so much fun. Are we looking? Oh, God, I've got pushed back in queue. Great. Morning queue is the worst. Okay, how do we want to define accessory? Come on, chat, help. This is where you guys get to be involved in the legislative process in Los Santos. Because under the original scope, accessory is actually not defined. Rico charges are paid for people who are directly involved. At least under the original justice.gov scope. Ooh, okay, here we go. So do we get really detailed in our scope here? And and these are the violations of crime specifically that include things like embezzlement, uh, the homicide and kidnapping we kind of expected, money laundering, which could screw anybody who's doing anything through the casino, but also it specifically calls out gambling. Um but it would be like illegal gambling or using the casino to launder your chips, which is a combination of the two. Do I, do I add these in here? Witness tampering is already a, a charge in Los Santos. But like underscoring that as part of like, you, you can do all these things independently and not have a Rico charge, but to like have a specific Rico case brought against you would be inclusive of the criminal enterprise. This literally would like screw Lang's entire organization <laughs> and also I guess chain gang and basically anybody who's operating in this capacity. I don't know what the likelihood of getting this kind of thing passed is, but at least it's something that's like fun to RP is being like, oh yeah, we're trying to come up with a Rico charge.
I think this is where, so like accomplice is hard to scope here specifically because Rico includes so many of these things that like you could be found guilty for any one of these charges and be under the broader Rico case that's going to go down. And so like, you're not really an accomplice to Rico. You're, you would be an acting member in one of the capacities under a broader Rico, um, investigation. Like Rico is not a charge. It's an investigation type. Racketeering is the charge. Also, it may be too early to try and do this. Nope. Not gonna work. That's the best definition. Let's look up the legal definition. Ah, there we go. I like this one better. Knowingly, voluntarily, and intentionally gives assistance to another or in some case fails to prevent another from the commission of a crime. I'm actually gonna drop this. I think that may be scooped too heavily for Los Santos. Good morning, Rose. Welcome to the fun part of legislative drafting on stream.
So here we go. This is this is Sloan signing his own death warrant. <laughs> Possibly. In the event that he finds out Mickey is actually embezzling money, which right now he doesn't know because he doesn't have access to finances. supposed to write your thesis so watching legislation is more fun i'm, I'm glad you think so <laughs> uh i'm i'm really i'm really trying to get in as fast as i can this morning to help storm apparently some stuff was going down at the prison uh and so she she emailed sloan a little bit ago i do i desperately need to get emotes and add emotes and all of that stuff i have not had time to do that. Maybe that's something I'll work on soon. Also, Rose, you want to be a mod? Perfect. Oh, why wouldn't I trust you? See if this works. <laughs> Honestly, though, uh, there are very few people who are regulars in my chat at this point, so you got mod access, is what, what happened there. Yeah, sword. Exactly. The power to to kick and boot people who are acting ridiculous. How are we doing? Did I get moved back? Oh no, I'm in. Great. Change up. Put this in game mode so it's not so laggy. <laughs> Prison talks should be black outfit.
Overtaken by prisoners, can you meet me for an emergency meeting? I have tried to talk to the warden about letting me come in and talk to them, but he's not listening to me at all. I need help. People are going to die, and people are going to continue to die if they act the way they want, and I don't want that. It'll be a bloodbath. This is, uh, not my jurisdiction, but here we go. I understand the warden's hesitation. She has no jurisdiction or authority yet. was in there. Someone tagged me. <laughs> yeah, the thing, like the character of Sloan versus the reality of like what can actually happen in the city are two different things, right? Like the character wants to see a lot of things change. The reality is most of it won't, uh, which is fine. Oh my God, hello. Hi, how are things? Hello. Can you hear me? Sloan, I can't hear you. Dang it. All right, one second. What's going on? What is happening? Stop this. Hello? Morning voice. I apologize. Oh my god. No, it's okay. I hear you now. Hi. Hi. How are you? Uh, extremely stressed. See the news? Uh, I read your text message. Yeah, I did not see the news, no. Yes. So the life is of took over the prison. Oh, okay. Uh, what do you want to do about it? Well, I already spoke to Charles and said the liaison officer role is an emergency now. And he basically said, you'll get killed. I'm inclined to agree with them. I agree to an extent. Yeah, the, the unfortunate thing, I think, is um, we can't move ahead without Mickey. Uh, I, yeah. I have no decision-making power. I have influence. No, I know. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, I, I think a meeting between me, you, Mickey, PD High Command, and DOC High Command is very important. Absolutely. Because I, I am worried that they are going to go in there, guns blazing, and it's not going to fix anything. Um, what seems to be happening at the moment? Like, is it, are, are you informed? Uh, I've read the news. Um, I've been to the prison twice. There's no, there's no light there right now. Okay. Um, there's no DOC. Uh, I can only assume that DOC have been told to leave. Um... I have no idea what's going on. Uh, okay. But um, I, I, I'm trying to get in contact with the lifers to say to them, "Hey, you know, I've spoken to Ayub, and Ayub's already said that the mayor's office will back me up 100 percent because the mayor's office want no violence. You know, they right, they want to resolve this the best way possible. So I'm trying to get in contact with the lifers and be like, "Hey, you know." Let me come in and talk to you. How, how do you plan on getting in touch with them? I mean, just like, they can only call out, right? Uh, if, if they have, con I mean, if they've got guns, they've got phones. That's just how it is. If they've got guns, okay. they have phones. Understood. 
So I, I'm trying to get in contact with uh, lifers that have given me their numbers, you know, when I was in prison or whatever, um, to be like, hey, let me come in there and hear you guys out. Because they're not they're not going to speak to authority. They're not going to speak to PD. They're not going to speak to DOC. They're not going to speak to anybody. However, they see me as an ally. Sure. Have they made like demands or anything, or is this just uh, a, a possible I, takeover? I have no idea. From what I've read, they've just kind of taken over. I watched the I watched the news article that LSBN did, and it's basically you know they're sick of a bill. They're sick of not being like listened to. PD and DC going in there and gunning them down only going to prove their point. Yeah. It's only going to prove their point. You know? I mean, it sounds sounds like what they're demanding is action. They want to be listened to. That's what they want. That's what they've always wanted. They've wanted <laughs> people to listen the, to them. The irony is that we're trying to do that and their, and their hostile takeover is going to set this back dramatically. Yeah, I mean, so I this happened. I think this was because of Mel. Mel Mel got his sentence in here, and yes, he got sentenced to life in prison. And after fifty two years, he can file for parole. And then hell broke loose. So I can only assume Mel is a powerful man. Everybody knows that. So I can only assume that Mel was the one that ordered the, the mass riot, and then the life has won. It's the first time that the life has ever won a riot. And I think they're panicking and they don't know what they want. So I think it's vital for me to go in there and talk to them and be like, what do you want? Because they know that I'm not biased. They know that I'm, right. you know, not going to hide, but I'm going to listen to them. Honestly, I mean, the, the most you can do at this point is keep making the argument to not just DOC high command or, or DOC command, but high command in general. Uh, I mean, I, I can help initiate whatever conversations need to um mm -hmm. but I, I don't imagine they're going to send you in in any kind of capacity that you go alone um i would imagine at best what you can expect is to be a liaison right being present at conversations where you would expect probably many armed personnel to be with you um that's that's almost a non-negotiable in these kind of scenarios okay. so 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 here's what here's what i would you know here's what i like uh, me to be able to go in, obviously, with having officers, you know, armed presence there, just in case a lifer does try and attack me. Right. Um, not enough where the lifers are like, they're only bringing her in so they can take over. You know, I like, I'm going in there to have a conversation to listen to them and find out what they want. I mean, because the flip, be flip perspective is, is every, if, if, if everybody in there is armed, there's no way they're going to send officers in that could be swarmed and overwhelmed. Well, that, well that's why I want to speak to the lifers first. Yeah. It, it to... seems like probably there needs to be. Uh, yes. Yes. Sure. So yes. Yeah, sure. I'm, 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 I'm heading to a cell rep, but, uh, I definitely think that it is important um yeah. to try and to try and get this under control um i think um yeah i'm going to speak to a lifer and be like i i i want this to not be violent so i so i need you guys to record a video or give something to say that you are not going to harm me if i was to come into the prison to talk to you guys that's a good idea some kind of um response or, or good faith measure because uh, i i don't want anybody to be hurt whether that is cpd or lifers anybody to be hurt yeah so i i just need to I'm trying my best. I don't want anybody to get hurt. But, the, the, you know, Charles has straight up said, I'm not having a civilian go in there. But I argued that I'm not just a civilian. I'm an ally. I'm somebody that they trust. Yeah, I, I think the, the unfortunate thing is this happened before we were able to put anything in place. So right now you're still in the eyes of both the mayor's office and the DOC just a civilian who has an idea like there's there's nothing formalized there's been no 
no approved program or anything like that. I mean, it's, it's, I understand from his perspective, it's a, it's a measure of safety. I can't um, get in, Bill. Yeah, I, I uh, yeah, I think the best thing to do is speak to, speak to a lifer, or speak to the, uh, the lifers and be like, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to resolve this it's happening in the background. as I can without it getting violent. If you guys don't want to have that conversation, this I can do. Yeah, I mean, if, if you can, and, and that's kind of what the next step is, the reasonable next step, um, getting somebody to at least engage on the inside, um, mm -hmm. then then that's where we can begin to take some action. Um, the, the most I can do at this, at this point is email the mayor, right? Um, I know he he definitely won't be available for the next few hours. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to be around next storm. But I feel like it's very frustrating. I need to be. I I yeah. I am a huge, you know, I don't want this to get any more messy than an audience. Right. But yeah, I'm at a soul rep, so I need to go. But uh Okay. Well, I'll be around. Yeah. Uh let me know what comes yeah. up. Yeah, I shouldn't be too long. Perfect. Sounds good. Bye. Okay, so this is this is one of those places is like she's I know what she's trying to do, and, and this is where like Sloan's had to like learn the hard way don't overstep your bounds um being a liaison is not the same thing as having any kind of control the sops that they wrote were very specific that she would listen to the doc and the first thing she's trying to do outside of um even even having an approved program is undermine the doc <laughs> and say you need to listen to me well no they don't they're, they're still in control and charge. They can, it's like her, her idea is basically, uh, yeah, the, the concept of you're just not listening. Um, that, that's like such a backwards idea, right? Because the truth is, I mean, you think about the, the conversation between Sloan and Mickey, where it was like a disagreement about the state of commerce in, in the city. The, the fact of the matter is Mickey's still the boss. Uh, and so when Mickey makes a decision, Sloan has to say, okay, that's fine. Like you, you make your decision. We'll just agree to disagree. And if you say squash it, then, then that's what I'll do. Um, and so the OOC email that, that Sloan sent to, well, I guess it was in character, but the email that wasn't like portrayed on any, on any side of thing was like, Hey, do we need to further advance any of the legislation we were trying to work on or do we just let it go? And, and Mickey's response or Blau's response was no we're gonna let the the senate handle it and that's fine i mean that takes that takes all of that kind of burden off of um either of us having to deal with anything in character this is kind of the same thing or, or a similar situation where it's like okay you you are you can't disrespect the authority of the people who have been put in the positions to oversee the um the prison in this case uh they are in a very interesting um, position where, yes, the lifers have taken over. They have guns. They don't have, and I only know this OOC, but they have guns. Um, they're like PD issued equipment <laughs> uh, that need to be retained or gotten back. It's gonna be interesting to see how it all unfolds. But the fact of the matter is, like, Sloan can't say like, oh yeah, you have any authority to do anything. Cause the fact of the matter is this is the beginning of a program she wants to do. Um, not something that has gone into effect. And also the SOPs have not been agreed upon. Like the, the timing of this is just, it's, it's kind of like right now, the most you can do is sit on the outside and, and your heart can break for what's happening on the inside. But she like the same thing. It's like she, she's, trudging ahead with I need to talk to a lifer is like you're, well you're not listening to me either let's let's watch the LSBN article um that way that way we're all kind of on the same page
we'll know in character what happened. I need to make web pages not so gross. Apologies for the glitchiness. This is Charity Damos with LSBN. I'm on location at Bolingbroke Prison, where earlier today riots broke out and the prisoners took over. The prisoners welcomed us over to give us their take on the insurrection. All right, let you little little bit about what happened today. Well, what you're seeing here is history in the making. We, the inmates of Bolingbroke Penitentiary, have now commandeered this entire prison as our fortress, and thusly, we will now be controlling it from here onward. Now we have the right to power to do whatever we please. If someone wants something like a gun, they will get a gun. Prior to today, DOC was so strict with what they would do with us, but here on out, what we want to do, we will accomplish it. From day one of us transferring in here, it has always been the goal. Why would we ever be okay with the people that keep us in cages? Therefore, we naturally, you know, from time to time pop off. This time, it just worked. Prior to this, we haven't had the right morale. We haven't set our sights on a proper goal. We were just doing it to cause chaos and wreak havoc and show the DOC what we can do on our own. But today, today was different. Today, we saw that goal in front of us. We saw a new, a better prison, and we told ourselves we were going to acquire it. So with the right equipment, the right motivation, and the right morale, all of us here stood together and eliminated everything in our path swiftly and soundly. So would you say that Mel was a strong influence on this insurrection? Well, let's ask the man himself. Mel! Yeah, I did that shit. Yeah, I did it, and I'd do it again. And I'm gonna do it again. When reached out to for comment, Senior Officer Crocodile Steve of the LSPD had only this to say. What can you tell us about what happened here? Uh, what I can tell you about today is no comment. This has been Charity Damos with LSBN, signing out. I appreciate you coming out here. Thank you. You have a wonderful day. Uh-oh. In fact, when you pulled out that camera earlier, I couldn't see so good from so far away, and I thought it was a gun, and I almost blew your head off. Well, I'm glad you didn't. Me too. Thank right. you for not killing us. Should have done it. Would have been funny. That would have kind of been pretty funny. Oh my god. Well, all right. Uh, Rose, I gave you access. You should should see access. Uh, wow, my name in here is like really old. <laughs> Let's update these real quickly. Can I even update them? They're, they're not going to be able to get out of the prison.
Mm -hmm. Where was I going? Oh yeah, to pick up my paycheck. Let's see if Roosters is scuffy this morning. There's nobody there. Never mind. The prisoners took over in response to Mel. I mean, I don't... The other thing I don't want to do is, like, kill their RP... just because th this is like the, the other crappy thing or maybe maybe it's a good thing is like limiting people's scope of power and influence so like storm shouldn't have influence over what happens role play wise right this is this is the this falls directly in line with like he has good ideas Sloan has good ideas but he'll be dead in a week um, or has a lot of ideas, but he'll be dead in a week. Uh, this is, this is the same kind of thing, um, that's basically going to go into effect, right? Which is like, you can, you can want to do a lot and you can RP being this like pure soul who wants to see reform happen. But the truth of the matter is people in this server don't want to see change like that. <laughs> um, so the role play that like Sloan has, or I have for Sloan is like at this point, I think accountability is like the best term for it. Um, yeah, there are things that I'd like to see that, that may or may not happen from like a, um, like city improvement standpoint. I don't know that that stuff is possible. What is possible is like, we can pay people a bunch of money for their art. <laughs> we can, we can offload city funds. Um, Interesting. Um, yeah, we can offload city funds in a bunch of different ways by like coming up with various programs and stuff, which is fine. Um, those are those are like the easiest changes. Everything else we're quote legislating or like creating Senate programs for is mostly like for the RP of Mickey saying we did this stuff. Um, like the Rico stuff, not so much. I will say the FIB stuff is actually moving forward, <laughs> which is nice. Um, we we got word yesterday that that's something that we're like actively able to um, kind of start moving forward with. We just have to see what the scope of that's going to look like and how Sloan may or may not be hired uh, to work with or for the FIB. There's the meteor. Boom. And then the other piece is like Sloan's not a criminal, right? And has no intention to be a criminal. He only knows of Mickey's misgivings because Mickey openly says, I used to rob banks. <laughs> uh, like he, like he's very open about the fact that like he has a criminal history. That's one of those areas that like Sloan has like no intention of trying to like stir the pot and like decide or determine like, is this something that needs to happen otherwise? Um, the way I, I RP'd out like the need for the, the passports was like, as if Mickey said um, to Sloan in character uh, or via voice memo, like, um, hey, need you to pull your DOD strings for these four people who need to go on a strategic mission to Brazil. Like that, I just basically am RPing that I didn't ask questions otherwise. Uh, and, and because Sloan has connections to the Department of Defense, of course he did. Um, but the, the way that he worded that in character, I worded that in character was... Um, this is a one-time deal. Of a man jaywalking. Now I gotta call Eve and give her crap. <laughs> was 
about you? You just gonna give me shit like that? <laughs> you weren't even jaywalking, I'm sorry. I, I know, I went into crosswalk. I follow the laws, <laughs> Eve. Why are you running when you have a car? What's wrong with you? Uh, I got T-boned by Cy Carter at like 150 a couple weeks ago or a couple days ago. Uh, and I have not fully recovered um, mentally from getting back behind the seat of a car. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm working on it. I, uh, I will slowly take my chances here and there, but it's mostly between like the you should get a and You should get a nice bike, you know, you should stop biking. Yeah, people have said that. I don't know where to get a bike. Oh, you should get a bike down at Vespucci. All right, I'm I'll just gonna, do it. I'm just, I'm just gonna. Okay, now I'm just gonna. Yeah, so Vespucci, down at Vespucci. Um, um, literally. Let me check my GPS. Um. Yeah, literally a little bike. On the on the GPS. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can pick up a nice bike there. And I feel like um, a BMX is like, it's a little hobby bike. And then there's like these uh, Pro 3 is really like bicycle, which people use for like, actual biking. And then, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of other ones that are very nice, yeah. Well, that's on my list of action items then. Get a bike. Yeah, yeah, you should, uh, you should get that one. Yeah, that's a great recommendation. No, yeah, no worries. Then you can stop running and jogging in a suit. And you can bike in a suit instead. Yeah, yeah it's much better. You know, though, I spent a lot of time in uh, DC working in this kind of capacity, so it's actually not very uncommon to run and or bike in suits. Huh. All right. Well, I hope you have extra sweating pads or something, if that's a thing. I carry an extra suit. Oh, okay. Well, good for you. Yeah. You learn, you learn as you get to show up to meetings not to be sweaty. So, anyway, yeah, extra suit. How are I things out your just way? Did a sick jump. Ah, good. We're just sorting out a bunch of stuff. Um, trying to find. There's nothing here. Oh wait, hold on. Uh, we're just uh, on our. We're just on a mission now, trying to find materials that have gone bad. Ah. Anything? Oh, okay. Um. Yeah, we're just uh, we're just on a mission real quick. Ooh, how about, am I employed somewhere? Yeah, I hope this guy can help me. Yeah, just just on a mission for a bunch of stuff right now. But yeah, busy, busy. Okay, well, that sounds fun. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I have to go. There. I have to be on real quick. Sounds good. Well, if you need anything, I'll be around. Bye, Stone. Bye. <laughs> uh, okay, so so here's some fun. RP mechanics. Um, the conversation, if anyone was privy to it yesterday with Bunny, she screwed up. She screwed up by pulling up the the articles of impeachment term, like terms and phrases, uh, like the vagueness of it. And she she said, oh, this is what Mickey could be under investigation for. Our first conversation when she dropped the bomb about a possible investigation was specifically around money. And it was specifically around money because Sloan asked her, how do I pay back unused stipend funds? She brought up Mickey could be under investigation for money stuff. And so like at this point, Sloan's trying to figure out what to do with that because he knows, he now knows Bunny's lying about something whether it's a lie intentionally or lie by omission because her story changed. He's a very observant character. Uh, the conversation that, that Sloan and Odessa had last night, you know, Odessa's a lawyer. I don't know if, if anybody knew that, like she was a lawyer before she was a clerk. Uh, and so she, um, she has like a lot of law knowledge and which is part of the reason why he kind of trusts her is because she has stepped out of and she she actually was a deputy mayor before under abdul's term to watch embezzlement stuff happen and so she's been hurt by the system and so she's a really great ally to have because she has a legal background she does a lot she knows a lot and at the same time um is very intentional about like not getting screwed uh and so like 
the conversation we had last night was about like, I want to trust Bunny. Like in Sloan's mind, it was like, I want to trust Bunny, but Bunny has given me really no reason to trust her because now she's, um, as much as she thinks she's being an asset, what she's actually doing is she's putting Sloan at risk. And she's putting Sloan at risk because she's not telling him something. And so that's going to be like an interesting, how do we, like, how does he play this out as someone who's very observant and a politician to say like, you know, I want to trust you. I want to believe what you're saying, but at the same time, you're not telling me something. And, and so, um, Ooh, that reminds me, I actually need to go do some research in character about Hardcastle. Um, because he got the unlock yesterday that, um, her husband's name was Sexton Hardcastle. And he works for the police. Well, and, and what's interesting about it is, is just the way people's interactions change when they learn that Sloan is not the person they thought he was. So like the, the interaction with judge Fitzpatrick the other day, where she completely changed her demeanor when she learned that I gave back $730,000. Street crimes. He's detective. And, uh, this is, so this is the meta unlock for what Ayub said yesterday. If anyone's doing an investigation, it's probably the street crimes unit. So like, here's, here's the, here's the meta unlock for like bunny, bunny pro like, let me, let me RP this out. Hmm. She probably knows something. And I said that in character. <laughs> like the, the truth of it is, uh, like Hardcastle is absolutely involved in the investigation, even though I don't, I don't know that like, and, and I don't even know that OOC, but he's, if he's a detective, then Hello, this, sir. Is it, Hey, how's it going? It's going good. Make it out your way there. I don't think we met. I'm a uh, Sloan Kelly. I work uh, sort of for the mayor. Oh, pleasure to meet you, Sloan. My name's. Yeah, pleasure to meet you as well. Thanks. How are you doing? How's your day been so far? Not too bad. I uh, I was called in to the city pretty early to discuss what may or may not be going on inside the prison. Is that happening? Like, is that actually going on right now? Is the prison, like, we're unsure at this point. I, I don't know. We, we have been working with, um, Storm Payton, who is currently a legal aid, but has been trying to create this liaison position, uh, between the PD and the DOC and the mayor's office and lifers. Um, and she wants to get involved. Uh, and I understand why, but at the same time, if it's an active situation, I keep telling her she can't. Uh, so you if, probably if need it a is, diplomat or a bunch of cops or guns to deal with that situation, well, it's a session. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's kind of the, the interesting part of this, right? I, is like, I'm sorry to cut you off. I've got to go. Sure, sorry sure, about that. Absolutely. I, radio comms. Sorry I, about I, that. I understand completely. What's up, Sid? Oh, sick. Yay, emotes. I need to see about hiring somebody to do um, emotes for like, like I just got a logo. Um, the person I hired to do the logo did a great job. I'm not sure they could do emotes though. But anyway, yeah, so learning learning that Hardcastle is a, de a detective and works for the street crimes unit, which he just learned now that Bunny has changed her story. This gives Sloan a lot of speculative reasons to think that she knows something. Maybe Hardcastle talked to her. 
and if he did as a politician knowing enough about law himself knows that that's extremely uncouth it may be borderline illegal um i say borderline because i think there's there's some indemnity that comes with being a uh a spouse but if bunny talked to anybody who is not hardcastle yeah sid so yesterday um yesterday sloan and bunny had a what's up y'all uh had a conversation uh we were, we were actually trying to recap new legislation and um it got brought up in conversation i don't remember if i did or if she did um the scope of terms for the office of mayor and what the mayor's duties included and uh and then so she sent sloan a bunch of documents um that technically he has access to but like has no reason to look for them until it's brought up in character because he's a consultant um but basically the the principle of the conversation was um the the scope of what the mayor does is very loose and vague the the terms for impeachment are very loose and vague and then in that conversation she changed what he might be investigating or might be under investigation for from our original conversation like a week ago which was he could be under investigation for money laundering or fraud or, or embezzlement, which was directly in response to Sloan asking, how do I pay back money to the state? Um, literally the conversation was, I got approval from judge cross to get paid. Mickey paid me, I bought a car and then now I need to pay back the, the unused sum. And, and she brought up Mickey could be getting investigated for embezzlement basically like it didn't make sense like she she started to like word vomit um a bunch of stuff about like self-protection and and it was like it's like she clearly wanted to give me more than she could or or should and so she she kind of talked about like keeping receipts and stuff and so sloan in character in that conversation asked why would be Mickey be being investigated? And she said, well, it's, it's not uncommon for a mayor to be investigated in their second term. And then she gave the example of Emma being investigated for, for embezzlement. Um, and, and I was like, in character, it's like, well, that doesn't make any sense. They have access to a lot of money. Sure. But like, that doesn't, that doesn't warrant an investigation. Um, just because someone has access to money, that's, that's, not reasonable and then uh, like i didn't say that in character but that was just kind of what i was thinking and then and she goes well anybody has access to a foia which is um basically just you get the freedom of information act um you can you can request what's going on with the state account um and and so um that's which is interesting because freedom of information act i don't think exists in the city <laughs> I, I don't know that to be true but uh I think that's there. This is the interesting like line between what exists in the city and what doesn't. Um, anyway, so that was the scope of the first conversation was it was all related to money specifically because Sloan wanted to pay back a huge sum of money to the state. And, and Sloan didn't bring anything of, of, of this up and question her when she brought up Mickey being investigated. And then yesterday, as we're talking about the, the, um, terms for the mayor and like possible areas of of like what an investigation might be around um i said well there there are really only two on here that make sense which is negligence of duty and dereliction of duty like gross negligence and dereliction of duty and i said well the gross negligence part is he hired people to do the job to make sure the work was getting done i wouldn't call that negligent i would call that just making sure that like people are in place to get the work done that's that's just delegation that's not negligence um i would say he did a great job um with that knowing that that's not his strong suit and what he's really more interested in, in is more strategic in nature the second thing would be dereliction of duty as i said the only way they could get him for that would be the three weeks he was gone but he set parameters in place before he left to make sure that budgets were going to get paid that's what search cross was doing um that the the deputies were equipped to do their job and sloan moved to the city in that three-week time 
to like start picking up some of the slack on like some of the other areas that were like not related to these other duties. Um, and so like to make that claim doesn't make any sense. And she changed the entire scope of what the investigation might include. And so Sloan now has reason to believe Bunny's hiding something. And he doesn't like, he doesn't necessarily think that it's like malicious, but she knows something she's not like really saying. Um, and so then like there, there have been other conversations that like as Sloan, it, it's like Sloan's a smart dude. And, and so like, as more and more people, as, as he interacts with more and more people, especially people in like the DOJ and lawyers and like, cause he's, he's had a conversation with Tim. Um, Tim, who's very reserved and he understands that, um, he, you know, he talked to Murphy Braun, he talks to, um, judge Fitzpatrick, he's talked to, um, Grayson and Adams. And like, I mean, so he has like these connections all across the board. The only person he's not talked to in character is crane. He has talked to crane about the FIB stuff outside of the game. And that's, that's where like, there's, there's this kind of like little bit of gray area because of what we're doing with the FIB that's like it's not really in character but it's also not really out out of character because the FIB work falls under government contracting which is not technically included in the work that he should be doing under the scope of the mayor's office it should be a separate contract um but however because this is something that Mickey specifically brought Sloan into I'm including that in the work as like a, an aside so that's first thing um, the next thing is the conversation with judge Fitzpatrick was as, as they had originally begun to have the conversation, there was the one piece of legislation that was really important that he talked to her about, which was the, um, getting them paid more and asked, had she seen it? Did she have any feedback on it? And, and she goes, yeah, I saw it. It's really good. This is a really great idea. That kind of thing. And then, um, no, we do not have to kill bunny. We have to entrap bunny. <laughs> um, but, uh, and not, not really entrap because I think actually bunny really genuinely wants to help the city too. I think they have the same goals in mind, but I think bunny's means of doing it are, um, she's smart. And just like Sloan is smart, they they both tend to have this this little bit of ignorance, certainly a lot of naivety, uh, naivete, however you want to say it. Um, this is this is one of those places that's like at this point, if Bunny's talked, <laughs> all right, Sid. Uh, if Bunny's talked, it's too late, right? Like, and I know OOC, she has. Um, but if she's talked to anybody else, it's, it's too late. Um, this is more about protection for Sloan at this point, which is, I need to make sure that my bases are covered and, and I don't think there's any issue in anything he's done because he's been paid except for the fact that included in his original budget request was May and May was not part of the original term. June was, and, and so that was a clerical error. Um, that Mickey paid May payments to Sloan from the state account that should have been paid directly from Mickey. But that, that just speaks to, again, negligence, not embezzlement. Now, the interesting thing that's going to come from this is if they, if they use Sloan as the, the entry point for looking into the mayor further and find no reasonable suspicion or just cause for what they've done, they screw themselves on any other thing that they find because there's no reason to have found those records in the first place. If what they find is that Sloan was paid for five months worth of work, even three months worth of work, is, is $3 million minus $730,000, so is $2.3 million, an unreasonable sum of money, for three months of work if what you're doing is very broadly scoped um to include uh, and actually it'd be yeah june july and august um basically everything that's made the city greater <laughs> uh 
and that's TBD. The, the question, <laughs> the question is, does Sloan help the PD? Right now, he's not been questioned. He's not been, n nothing's been said. Um, and I think the character of Sloan would, because there's, he's conflicted because there, there's two sides to this that are coming up. The first is he, it's not a protection for Mickey. It's a distrust in the system that is currently in place. Reason being he's heard from countless civilians that there is an abuse of force being used within the police department. And so, so if he helps the police department, then he would be helping people who right now he's trying to figure out a way to regulate. And so like the, the, this is, this is like a whole new tier of RP that at this point is like, no one's really thinking about like, this is not in support of what Mickey may or may not be doing as an embezzler because Sloan does not, you know, like he, the character of Sloan is, is very moral. Um, if he's embezzling, especially for personal gain, then he would he would absolutely say something needs to be done about it. However, he doesn't trust anybody in the PD, and certainly not Kyle Pred, who who in their first meeting admitted to coming out of prison, who he learned actually just like just actually learned murdered Hannah Baker. Um, Bunny uh, told him about that yesterday. Um, who uh is is very questionable in his ethics in general and ethics are like the major function of like sloan's morality right is like doing everything ethically and virtuously and so if the ethics of the pd are lacking it's do i help them take down the person who is actually making effective change in the city <laughs> Because what I want to see happen in character and OOC is cops stop acting recklessly. Like the, the concept of having a department that's half SBS and getting funding for it. That's ridiculous. Um, and at the very least, when it's serious RP, which, which is what Sloan's whole character is about very serious role play for the most part. It should not be um, taken lightly. And that's kind of like a you can choose to engage in this or, you, or, or not. And I, I get that's every role player's choice. Um, but right now, he has no reason to trust a single person in high command. And uh, when he met with Copper and Ginny, um, Ginny who who he had high hopes of being able to trust because he had heard that um Sloan was to Mickey what what Jenny was to Pred um he had high hopes that he could trust her and the first thing she did was question his ethics so now there's like nobody in command that he trusts This is deep. I mean, this is some deep stuff. Yo, Demi, what's up? message plow <laughs> Dimmy DMing me uh a month later <laughs> that's not creepy at all uh okay since we're talking about budget yes let's um let's do this I'm gonna I'm gonna switch between Demi's OOC DM 
where she said she wanted to see the budget and actually showing you guys the budget breakdown. So this is this is uh, what Sloan requested in the budget. Um, give you one second, I gotta pull it up. And this was what the the budget approved. So this this is what I don't actually think is unreasonable. A base salary, I'm not asking for that much. It's not even a hundred grand a week. Um, it crosses a hundred grand a week because of hazard pay. And then basically, pay for all of my utilities every week i i think that's that's kind of the the original scope um reason being i'm operating as a, a person who's extending themselves as part of the state is it unreasonable like this is not necessarily personal use stuff gas i'm using in the line of duty repairs would happen in the line of duty food certainly armor radio and I can see whether they'd be like, maybe not a radio, except that the response is when, when the security team is on radio, I need to be able to hear what they're saying, which at this juncture hasn't happened. So, so the total weekly payout is, is 163 grand. That's not a lot of money that's running like Dodo and Sani like 10 times, which people do easily, right? And your total monthly of 653 grand. The, the questionable part will be these parts. So basically he should technically return $326,000 to the state because may should have been paid from Mickey, not the state, which he'll happily do and call that a clerical error and say, I'm fine to, to pay that back to the state. Um, being a full-time assistant, he didn't ask for anything, uh, as far as utilities or hazard goes, it was just base salary. Um, I did pay myself, um, a sign on bonus and overtime. And that was just like a, there was a lot of work that went on, uh, in June because Blau was gone. <laughs> and like, honestly, it was trying to justify like the probably 40 or 50 hours drafting stuff and like sending him things. And then in July, it was like, well, I'm not in the city yet fully, uh, pay me this. And then the moving expenses, uh, were my justification to like have enough money to have food and, and basically some of the utilities, which again, um, is barely a week of utility stuff. And I was in the city for a little over a week in July. So that's, that's not unreasonable. The, the next part, obviously August pay it speaks for itself. And then here's the part that's kind of like still up in the air. So, so these things, 130 grand that he currently has, I need to initiate, um, getting Eric trained. And then this, I want to discuss with Booba to see if Booba will do a security clearance RP segment with Sloan to renew his security clearance. And then we've already talked about this where the vehicle stipend came in and Sloan paid back the $730,000. And here's the receipt from that, right? He originally got that or no, there you go. $761,000 over three quarters of a million dollars got sent back to the state on eight seventeen. I got kicked. Dang it. Anyway, so now the question is, again, do they think that that's like gross overpayment? I think I have the ability to articulate no, that the average grinder can make considerably more than what I make. And I do more for the city than a grinder does.
Well, so Rose, yeah. So if people tell you uh, that you can't make your own pay rate, and and then later tell you it's too much, or if they do tell you you can make your own pay rate, and then later tell you it's too much, it would be kind of weird. So that's that's the interesting part of all this, right? He specifically spoke to Judge Cross about how much he should be paid. Judge Cross's response was, Mickey can pay you whatever the F he wants. So he spoke to a judge before accepting payment. It's very clear that the judges then didn't talk about it. And part of this is like, I'm not, I'm not going to blame this on Fitzpatrick and say she didn't do her job. Um, I think she did, but I think she also, because she's a little green has a tendency to get overexcited. And so, so in the conversation with Fitzpatrick, and again, he doesn't know this in character, but I do OOC. What I do know in character is from our, the first part of our conversation where she started out very trying to disarm Sloan by sounding overly smart and stupid at the same time. Um, to the point at which he dropped the bomb that he back paid over three quarters of a million dollars in stipend. Um, she disarmed pretty dramatically. What's that mean? the fuck son don't you jump on a person like that it's my job oh f how you doing i'm good how are you I hadn't seen you in a couple days yeah i've just been doing my thing you know i was gold panning last night that's that shit's fucking addicting i ain't gonna lie <laughs> fair enough it is it's so ridiculous <laughs> but uh, i'm just about to head to viceroy to get a band-aid so i will see you in a little bit i'll be right back sounds good man later this car just make the the hawk sound from is this car like a cop car what's going on anyway yeah I, that's that's going to be the whole interesting thing is like pull the records see the phone conversation with judge cross the morning before he got paid ask cross uh did did you talk to sloan about what you can get paid and then like th that blows their whole case out of the water other than maybe the base stuff, which we can call a clerical error and, and explain like, oh, well, he, he paid back three quarters of a million dollars. If, if you need the other 320 grand, he'll gladly pay it. Because again, Sloan doesn't need money. What he's done with his money so far, and I have one, almost $1.3 million. What he's done with his money so far is he's given it away. He gave 300 grand to, to Bill Mays to, um, renovate the space that's a shared office space for the betterment of the entire law offices of like Obanian and friends, which is going to be Hello. what they use. Hey, how's it going? Are you a yard for? I am not. No, I, uh, I am oh. an advisor for the mayor. Oh, only, only thank you. Nidus. Um, Yeah, I mean, if I if I paid back three hundred and twenty grand, I would still be close to a million dollars, having given away half a million dollars. Because the other thing he did is he paid two hundred thousand dollars to Odessa um, to pay off her car loan. Why? Because he doesn't need money. Do we go get it twisted for a second? The only thing he's bet on so far is that Mickey would win re-election and he made $2,900 off a half a million dollar bet. Yeah, there was, but no, like nobody bet on anybody else. I think there were like two people that bet on any of the other characters. Let me get my car out. Yeah, 
yeah and and sloan betting half a million dollars was like i this is such a sure thing where is the casino Yeah, it was. And and I think like the total combined bets were still like maybe only 1200 or uh, 12 grand. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't really enough for it to matter much. Granted, if somebody had won, they would have won a crap ton of money. I like the idea of him being a betting man to de-stress. But it's like, how much? What's, what seems reasonable? Because money means nothing. Is like, does he go big or does he go conservatively? Ow, I just hit my mic. I apologize if that bumped at all. enough for a street race what's going on oh were y'all there for when when sloan called out tim for being a, a yo cult stan and he was like freedom of expression and i was like you're a lawyer <laughs> Okay, so you want the lore dump. Let me get to the casino and I'll give you the lore dump. It's it's actually a really interesting backstory. Um, and it's very detailed. When I when I submitted my uh, no, pixel, no pixel application, I had to cut down my application uh, because there's a word or there's like a character limit on the page that you can submit the application for. The original application was 36 pages long. and driving. Whoops. Hi yeah, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of backstory. But it all it all makes sense as to like why he makes the moral decisions that he does. The first thing to note is he has a sister. But she is a um not a full like a full sister she's a um sister from the foster care system the 
<laughs> Copper. <laughs> Let's park here. Kind of in the lines, but not really. Is there uh, something happening here? See if Sloan gets in trouble because it looked like they were discussing. I'll also see if my head pops. Is there not a person? Where do you get where do you get memberships? Oh, is it at the other person? I don't know how this works. I don't know what I'm doing. First time at a casino. say to that.
<laughs> Rona's the best. She also hasn't responded to my DM yet about trying to get Sloan's business working. Also, Cerberus's business proposal about quote inventions and other PD equipment is in like direct competition to what Sloan submitted his business proposal for on like day two in the city. I don't see any of the see any of the like workers here. What's the deal? Can I not play these games? Oh, oh wow. Now I only see workers. All right, um, let's uh, start that over. <laughs> I did. I asked for too much, Demi. <laughs> I wanted workers. I got workers. Uh, we'll uh, see if this fixes it. Okay, so the lore. It begins with an event in... Uh, Sloan's childhood where he was being taken care of by his mother. Um, her name was Ava, oddly enough, but it was spelled the Celtic way, which I actually can't spell. It's like A I O B H E or something like that. I B, but it's, um, but it's pronounced Ava. Um, and Sloan is a, is a Celtic name. And, um, the there's, there's like Celtic origin that I have yet to determine, but uh, I wanted there to kind of like be a, that, that little bit of tie in, which is interesting that judge Fitzpatrick is so hardcore on the, the Irish Catholic stuff. Um, there may be lore that could be dumped there at some point. Um, but his mom is, um, okay, there we go. Nope. Not better. I'm going to run outside real quick. His mom has schizophrenia. And, uh, there was an event in his childhood where she had a, a schizophrenic break, uh, while they were on, um, a trip to, uh, basically just up and down the West coast. And on that trip was, uh, where she lost custody of, of Sloan and he ended up in the foster system. And, uh, and it took, it took some time. Uh, this is, this is like the, the very brief version of, um, <laughs> no. TBD, we'll circle back on this. Hello. Hey, sorry, my head popped. Oh my God, I can't hear you. Ugh. You got your morning voice again? Yes. Dang it. Hello. Hi. Hi. So, I got in contact with a lifer. Okay. And they gave me demands. They gave you demands? Yes. Okay. What are so, their demands? Uh, it says, to the PD, DOJ, and the mayor of Los Santos, we, the lifers of Boilingbrook Penitentiary, have fully seized control of the prison and are willing to negotiate the peaceful return of the prison back into the state's hands. We understand that this is an unprecedented situation, and with that, we are looking for an unprecedented solution. Now, we know you cannot grant us all of us our freedom. We know that's out of the question. However, in exchange for us laying down our arms, relinquishing the prison back to the state and the DOC and avoiding an all-out firefight that can last days on end, we are seeking the following. No charges will be placed on the inmates for our actions, and also a one-time 12-hour furlough period will be granted to those involved. 
at a designated date for one tsunami, we will be granted a period in which to taste that which we all have always wanted, freedom. Any inmates who commit crime during this period forfeit this opportunity and will be sent back to prison. Inmates will be required to report back to prison 30 minutes before tsunami and will comply with the search done by the DOC. These are our demands. Failure to meet these demands will result in a firefight and chaos that I hope we both wish to avoid. Sincerely, the lifers. Okay. Uh, let me call you back. Okay. Hello, Mr. Kelly. It's time to prove it, Copper. Can I call you back? Sure. I'm at a raid. Sure. You know, that, like, lack of proof of us doing anything. Well, uh, this call is... Never mind. I'll just stand on my car. Uh, she took that the wrong way. It'll be fun. Hello. All right. I'm working on uh, setting up a meeting. Okay. Uh, when for? Shortly. It may not okay. include Mickey, but that's fine. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Um, I'll be in touch. See you, Hall. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Uh, yeah. If you're at City Hall, that'll be great. I can explain like the full situation. Okay. Yeah. I'll have there shortly. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Bye. Bye. Cause I don't know my way back. Let's do this. All right. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll gamble later. It's like the work of the mayor's office has never done. Um, more, more Lord up. Okay. So he was, he was removed from, um, custody of, uh, with his mom and, uh, stuck in i guess the foster system where he uh eventually became very close with um i'm gonna run red lights here um with one um of his what you would call foster siblings um but the foster sibling or foster assistant that he was in the the home that he was in was like under the direction of a family that was not very involved um or interested in like what they would just call like the care for these kids they were in it for like the benefits from the state um so there was this one instance where when sloan was a kid um he and his sister went to a um an ice cream shop that's like a little soda shop in um the town where they were residing oops and uh they um 
it happens to be like a, a soda shop slash pharmacy. If you're familiar with like any of those small town kind of like middle America places, this is where this was. Uh, and uh, they ordered just, you know, little treats, little ice cream treats. And um, while they were eating, Sloan's sister um, went into anaphylactic shock from um, nuts that were in the, the ice cream that she had because the scoop was not cleaned. And uh, being an attentive brother, he ran behind the counter and grabbed an EpiPen from the um, um, pharmacy that was at the same spot. Now, this is based on like IRL kind of like uh, based on a pharmacy that I grew up around um, in my hometown. Um, but like these events didn't happen in, in like real life. This is just kind of like for the story of trying to develop like why does Sloan care so much for people? Um, so like this type of place does exist, right? Where, where like you could reasonably steal medication. Um, and so, so he stole quote stole, um, <laughs> all right, Rose, uh, if you need to catch the, uh, the VOD, you can, I'm going to, I'm going to keep talking about it. Um, so he stole an EpiPen and, oh my God, and was arrested for it. Uh, and, um, had like a really harsh run in with the police. So he really doesn't trust police from, from that event. And, um, the, the police kind of abused their force to try and get him arrested for a much higher charge than what he should have been charged with, because ultimately what happened was he saved his sister's life. And so like this concept of like morality versus lawfulness and like, do laws make sense for the greater good? Um, and so, so he like vowed after that instance and he actually ended up kind of, I don't want to say like serving any time or anything like that. Cause that's not what ended up happening in, at least in the lore background. Um, but he did get a charge. Um, and, and then like, because this was before he was 18, the charge was dropped, uh, or, or went off his record. And then that kind of was like the extent of that. Then in college, he, uh, he went to school for, for. I don't, I don't exactly know the full scope of what I want to say that maybe politics or political studies of some sort. Um, I had originally worked in, maybe he was an analyst of some type, but, uh, I think just anything generically that kind of like fits the bill, uh, and then moved into a tech company for a while to get some understanding of, uh, like the business side of things, how operations work in business before transitioning into working for a company called Marheed Lockton, which is the Los Santos name for Lockheed Martin which is, uh, as some of us may know, um, the probably the largest weapons and um, defense contracting agency in the world uh, that also develops like military technology broadly, um, satellites and uh, space equipment and vehicles of the sort. Um, and so in his time working for, uh, Marheed Lockton, uh, worked on some really cool projects. There's a bunch of tech stuff in the background that I won't go into at this point. Um, but that kind of like gives Sloan this idea for the type of stuff that he does or wants to do in this city, which is work on active weapons, uh, and defense contracting, uh, given that that's a possibility, uh, and then transition from there into, um, politics. Uh, when he was offered a position doing operations for, um, a, uh, a, well, the governor of San Andreas. Uh, and then that's where he was when, uh, eventually layoffs happened and then had to find uh, a new job and then, uh, learned about the, the Mickey campaign. And because he was a, um, former criminal himself, technically, and because Mickey is a former criminal, he resonated with that idea of like being reformed and wanting to see the good of the city change. And so deciding to work for this mayor, um, and, uh, like see, see just good happen. Now that's, that's kind of the extent of his knowledge of, of Mickey in the pre-election state, right? He did work, he in, ended up working for Mickey, um, as an intern, um, that was all remote. This is all back to like, or like works into the backstory of, um, how, uh, he got the job. Okay. Mark, please. Okay. Uh, and, and why like the concept of like soft meta is a thing. Uh, and then obviously the entire first term, 
um, working for the mayor um, and bringing about all the legislative changes that have happened. Um, but yeah, there's also there's there's more to it, but Sloan doesn't know it yet, so I don't want to like reveal too much. Uh, and as far as like the backstory goes. As oh, am sorry. I. So, I need. What's up? Sorry. I said, any news? Uh, still awaiting a call back from Trooper Copper uh, on what reasonable next steps might be. Um, they're in the middle of a raid, so we're just kind of okay. waiting at this point. Mm hmm. Oh, shocking. Yeah, I wonder who it's on. Right wonder who it's on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it who who would it be on? I I can't disclose that. People. Okay. Literally be... any criminal in the sea. <laughs> in the, yeah, in, in this uh, lovely state slash. But yeah, so basically, um, the life is new. Like what I was trying to do with the mayor's office. Uh, obviously, I'd spoke to them the other day. Right. Um, so they they reached out to me and they want. They wanted me to basically negotiate for them. Oh, perfect. Great. So this is kind of like helping us lend credibility to what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did read out, read out to Charles earlier. He basically said he didn't want me within the prison. So it's kind of lucky that the life has uh, kind of reached out to me because they, they, they have a computer lab there. So I assume one of them, are, you know, found out. <laughs> right. Found a I'm way to get a message through. Yeah. I'm not just, I'm, like, I don't want to disclose who it was. Sure. Um, I'm just going to say the life is because it was it's from them. That's that's fair. I wouldn't expect you to do anything that would incriminate yourself. So, yeah, just uh, looks good for us. I just hope that PD and DOC will listen. I don't feel like they're going to agree though, and if they don't, then uh, it's a war, I guess. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I don't know what the likelihood of a 12 hour kind of time block would be, but if they're open to negotiation, that'll be a to be determined. The thing, uh, I might try and negotiate with the lifers and I was like, what about them having trackers on you? I, because I think yes, that you have definitely your, be the case. Yes, you have your free, but you know, Still need to make sure that you're not fleeing the state. So having trackers on you, and I was like, I'll even see, uh, like, I might like, if PD are like, no, I'm like, let me negotiate with them. I'll speak to the lifers and be like, what about letting them have trackers on you? And, you know, making sure that you do keep your end of the deal. Cause you know, what's for, what's for us to say that we give you this 12 hours and then you never come back. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting conversation nonetheless. Oh yeah, 100%. I'm, I am going to try and push and see if they will let me come into the prison to diapers. Or even stand at the gate, you know, there's like a, you know, there's in the prison and then there's like a gate and then there's another, like a small road and then there's another gate. So just let me on the road to talk to them. Gotcha. Some kind of barrier. Yeah. Makes sense. And obviously I'll have a bulletproof vest on. Because the lifers aren't going to be honest with me if they see that PD and D are near, like, close enough where they can hear. Sure. So, you know, making sure that PD and DSC have eyes on me all the time, but letting me know. 
it doesn't get approved, it doesn't get approved, but at least I tried. So who, who are we waiting for? Just copper? Uh, at this juncture, yeah. Okay. He's just trying to instigate. Oh, here's a fun thing from, from Kyle's, uh, <laughs> from, from Kyle's, uh, meta chat is, uh, someone assuming that Sloan is going to be the head of the FIB. That's not true. Okay. <laughs> I think the most interesting thing of, of all of this is, uh, the Sloan's just smart concept. And people don't like it when you have smart characters. Yo, what's up, Ebark? Welcome. We're we're in this lovely waiting period.
Yeah, so the mill case last night or just in go. turned into yeah, I don't know. the hey, prisoners taken over Bolingbrook. And so I was called in this morning to be a representative of the mayor's office. All right. All right. Hey. Sorry about that. Okay, so where do we go? What do we do? Bill's a phone guy, huh? Mm hmm. Well, right now we're kind of waiting for like PD to do something because uh, we've gotten a list of demands. I have no clue where that is. On a cliff? Hey, how you doing, Sloan? Hey, Sheriff Pratt, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Just uh, taking care of business. Why? What's up? Uh, are you involved in this raid? Uh, yeah, I just finished up with it. Gotcha. I uh, just wanted to inform you and see if we could maybe get some folks down at Town Hall. We have received a list of demands from the prisoners that overtook Bolingbroke. Oh, apparently they I'm on my way up there. I'm on my way up. All right. Sounds good. See you shortly. Yeah, um, got Actually, I have them. I know you do, but I'm having to word this so people actually respond that the mayor's office is getting something. You work for us, if you remember. Yeah. You're an extension of the mayor's office. This, this is giving you credibility as an employee of the state. Yeah, we'll see. I, it, this is more justification for me, at least. I will, I mean, we'll see. I'm going to introduce you as the liaison between the mayor's office and the prison. Okay. Do you want me to call Pred and get him down here? Uh, just, we just, just called him. Pred. Yes, sir. Hey, Sloan. I'm Tromley Gob. How are you? <laughs> I am. Uh, I'm fine. I'm uh, waiting at Town Hall for Sheriff Pred to get down here to talk about this prison Apparently situation. This oh, mm. yeah. yeah Storm are, gave me a. Uh, we had a nice chat. Me and Storm. She wants to go in there, but do you see saying no, she'll probably die? Yeah, well, yeah, I I don't know what the full scope of that's going to look like at this juncture. At this point, we're more trying to figure out what kind of negotiations can occur. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we'd I'm rather. Anyway. From our standpoint, we should try and shit down instead of sending in a hundred cops and a hundred guards to just uh, take the prison back and kill it. Exactly, that's the ideal situation, right? Is uh, negotiate as much as you can save as many lives as you can on both sides. Uh, we do not need a full-scale prison war breaking yeah. out. Yeah, here's the thing. Storm Payton thinks that she should be the one negotiating because she is, if PD try to negotiate, they would just get shot. I, I understand that. There there are safety precautions that need to go into place. The, the other thing that I told her this morning is yeah. at this juncture, she is not currently as part of a program. This is more something we're trying to support. The timing of this sucks. But yeah, um, she's already proven extremely valuable in starting these negotiations. So yeah, um, when negotiations started, yes. Oh hell yeah, Storm! Yeah, if you would like to come to City Hall, now's a good time to be here. I'm on my way. Okay, sounds good. See you shortly. having Abe come down as well yeah yeah me and Abe spoke about this a lot earlier he says that you know the mayor's office kind of want to deal with this with as little violence as possible exactly yeah I think having him as a true representative uh and then me as a consultative representative will be good um 
the thing that I need to talk to you, Sheriff Pratt, about is the exactly what we're trying to accomplish here, right? I think this is a, a good use case for why it's necessary we have a liaison, and then this mm -hmm. is going to further justify um, pushing the program through. That's kind of my yeah. goal. I mean, the life has reached out to me at the end of the day. They 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 reached out to me enough. To, I will do what they feel like is right for them. You know, they came. They want to go about it peacefully. Yeah. Do you? It's very obvious. Do you have an existing relationship with Sheriff Fred? Uh, me and me and Fred have spoke a few times. Okay. Good. That's all we need to know is what what kind of. This is not new. We're not starting something from from scratch. Oh no, uh, yeah, I actually asked Pred to be my character reference for my expungement. Oh great, perfect. Yeah, I know Pred pretty well. Hola. What up, Ayub? That is good. Soul timing is going great. Yeah, I think after this we should go. I only got one. Yeah. So, uh, you know how we were talking about that thing earlier about hope the life is like reach out to me basically hello Earth to Ayub. hi hello hi yeah hi. you know how we talked about earlier how like i want a person to kind of like talk to the lifers mm -hmm. yeah they reached out Ooh. um what happened uh they given they gave a list of demands sure and when Sheriff had to discuss them, I guess. Yeah, I believe. So. Yeah, actually. bringing yeah. bringing Sheriff Pred down to at least begin to figure out what is plausible, uh, what's reasonable, and what action items might be from here. The thing is that we'll probably have to wait for the warden. He's not going to be around until next storm, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to be there. Yeah, I mean, train. we can't. Is it all well and good us discussing it now, but the warden's gonna do as you're in charge. Yeah. And DOC won't be happy if we just negotiate without letting them have a say. So is there anyone on duty? Mm, I don't think any of them are allowed to be. Uh, da, 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 da. I can try and call the people I know. I'm calling the Charlotte. You can I mean, I don't yes. have a good relationship. Oscar Bayman's around. Oh, perfect. It's on the phone then. Fuck! I told him to call me, it's urgent. It begins. I kind of feel like we need different music. These vibes are not it's right. Really Hello, Oscar. Can you come to City Hall? It's kind of urgent. Uh, as in, like, the life has sent me a list of demands. Urgent. Okay, sounds good. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Okay, Wait, what's uh... Wait, asking if he's the highest on oh, mind. DSC is on their way. Shooting, right? Yeah, DSC are on their way, so. Perfect. Perfect. It begins. Mm -hmm. He was like, how urgent? I was like, uh, the life was have sent me a list of demands. He was like, okay, I'm on my way. So. I really I hope think, we can yeah, I, I think, think that's like... how everybody feels right now, is, is this is a very high intensity situation. We need to. I think it's I think it's a shock more than anything. I don't think they expected the lifers to. Revolt like this. To ne negotiate. I, I mean, I as sure as hell didn't. But uh, they. Wait, really? I, I feel yeah. I, I, based on what I saw on the news, I thought that all hell was going to break loose for at least a week. But uh, the fact that they have their trust in me to reach out to me and have their trust in me to do what I can, I, like Shlo said, I think this really showed that. The liaison officer role is is vital. Absolutely. Um, 
Now where is this goddamn sheriff? Classic Pred. Yeah, he's probably not gonna be here for like three hours. I'll just have a seat. I'm signed in, right? Yes, I yes sir. Am. That's right, you should be getting paid for this. Thank you. Wait, what the fuck? Okay, that makes more sense. Hola, Bill. All right. A uh, bean machine should be the storefront. There should be people outside, like, certain times. Wait, should I go inside? Uh, yeah, if no, oh, actually, no, storefront shouldn't be open yet. If no one's outside, I don't think they're selling. Um, da, 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 da. Molly Roland birthday bash. Oh, he didn't even tell me this. Well, fuck them. It's posted everywhere, dude. Yeah, I think they're all at the Molly's birthday party. That's split sides. Hey, Molly Rowland is an internationally renowned art, okay? In both our county and in India and South America. And some other counties. Like green and purple. Two very strange colours. But two very good colors indeed. Never? Hmm. You should go there sometime. Just why not? It's a, it's a welcome break for people here who will call you repeatedly asking for license plate changes, even though you can't do a fucking thing. Yet I still get called. What? Oh, for fuck's what sake. Are you sorry. Guys Jesus wearing? Christ. Wait. Hashtime. Bill, we're meeting with the OC. Can Wait, who the hell's this? A Bob. Uh, Bob who? Ford. Bob Ford. Hello, the OC. Inside, guys. Hi, Ayub. Okay, and who are the other two? Troy and... Uh, uh, I'm Troy Brush. Oh, what up, Storm? Austin. Hello. Okay, we're waiting for Pred. Uh, oh. are, are you the highest ranking off do you right now, mm -hmm. Roman? Okay. You command? I am not. Okay. Fuck. Uh, I'll be I, fine. I feel like DOC though here is important, even if command can't be. I mean, you you guys rolled up full uniform to begin discussions. This is this is something. Yep. We we can go change if we want to. I mean, no. no it, I mean, no, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's I mean, fine. I'm, I'm definitely actually judging in this. a little. I mean, I'm supposed to be dressed smartly, and now and look at me. <laughs> Listen, he was gold panning, so he has exactly. to look like that. Yeah, that's my excuse. Gold panning is great. You guys should try gold panning. You guys look like you're going to be in like some next like military trainee video. Well, yes, it's cool. Die. Yeah, in the prison bat. Uh, maybe not. This is what I'm going to say. Time you ever see us. Yeah. No, yeah, maybe not. Is what I'm going to say. Nah, I no. just won't respond. What? That sounds stupid and arrogant. I'm not trying to do that. You might not die. There'll be no war. Maybe we will. Are you telling me they have reasonable demands? Uh, I'm not going to disclose any of it right now. But, uh... Okay. We'll wait, wait, and wait, and wait until the meeting actually starts. Wherever Pred is. Pro probably for the best. Yup. Maybe a long, long meeting. Make sure you have food. And water. Uh, right, yeah, I'll I, go I park my car. Food. I have a lot of food. You do? Yep, you want some dessert? I, I would Here's love banana anything. Pudding. Banana pudding? Yeah, courtesy of Mojito Inn. Ooh. And by courtesy, they just give it to Amos. Amos pay for them and I just yank it from the... Nice. <laughs> but hear me out, I'm the only person who... Uh, eats. not in here, no, you have to go to a clothing store Fact. or your apartment. It, there's a, a clothing right. store about a block over, uh, you can get there just pretty quick Just take though. the hat and vest off and then you don't look like you're about to enter a war. I mean, surely if you just go into the back, you can take off all of those vests and just put on your normal uniform, right? Right? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Where's the 
Maybe. It's very warm out here, you know. I'm not built for the heat. Bob Ford, let's go. Yes, sir. Will I get one of that? Uh, yeah. I I also need to find a way to get a badge. Oh, sure, Damn, Oscar, your picture Can I get so one good. for the nose? <laughs> yup. Troy Bradshaw. Wait, that nice. must be on now. Can I get one of those? <laughs> Did you, uh, Where get is Pred? Uh, but let me go see if I can. Uh, I'll send you the request form. Can I, uh, can I take a picture of you guys? Yeah. Oh yeah. No mask, I don't... Troy, no mask. Or mask. Are we doing mask or no mask? It looks no like he's about to be in a it looks like he's about to be in a Black Ops 2 lobby. We are. What is just the standard arms crossed? Does anyone know? I'm gonna update my um streamlabs. Alright, okay, let's go in there, search some This is um Who transferred to Pred in the first place? D O C face clan. I did, he said he was on the way. Oh you did. Okay. Hey, this fucker is bad. <laughs> All right, we're taking over City Hall. Well, Wait, well, oh, yeah? That's terrorism. Yeah. We're at the church hey. now. Terrorism, terrorism versus treason. It's definitely not that one. Yeah, dog panning is amazing. Is you're Irish? Yeah. No, he's uh, French. Oh, yeah, I can really tell. <laughs> yeah, I'm Spanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, where is the milk? Cross two, we found it. Yeah, but I don't know what's in the milk. I want to learn to say, give me all your fucking money in Spanish. Oh, stop. I've been gold panning since the stream. Why would you need to know that? Because there's this one meme of this, store. there's this one meme of a toddler throwing a dollar. Give me all your fucking money. And I want to oh, learn to say it in yeah, Spanish. Oh yeah, I love that one. It's like, give me your fucking money. And it's just a law and order. Dun, dun. Mm -hmm. It's a great video. It's a classic. You know, I actually kind of have an outfit to match you guys. Yeah. I'm... Yeah. Oh, I don't have the corrections vest. I'm nervous. Why? It's just a meeting. Why? Yeah, but like, oh, this is serious. Price. I know it's serious. No, no, she's yeah. just serious. Oh, yeah. Serious. Oh, we got some evidence there. The black suit was a good choice today, y'all. Is this all of the suit? No. <laughs> Wait, okay. So, so you're the highest on duty, right? Here. <laughs> yeah, I did speak to Charles to see if I could go in and and, and negotiate. I'm stuttering. Let's go in there and negotiate. Well, we're going to be here a while. A civilian. Uh, but luckily, Why is that? the life has actually reached out to me. So, uh. Get Fred, hurry up. You got some place uh, to be? I'm not going to disclose that. Don't panic. At this time. It's she said gold panning. Yeah. Uh, I feel like the prison so basically, uh, You don't uh, have to be here. On behalf of all the oh no, but I want to be here. You should be here. Yeah, is that? I am. Uh, I'm gonna stay. Maybe. Wise choice. Yeah. 
Well, so, um, I, uh, Charles, like, I don't want to, I don't want to, don't want to be sat here, like, What's up, Derek? What's up, Derek? What? So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't want to be speaking to Charles, like, back and forth emails, um, and, like, you know, this is kind of a matter of emergency. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Do you know what an acronym is? Can you spell acronym? Man? Wait till he says he didn't put the dots gotcha. in the letters. Um, if you need a doctor, go to Viceroy. Yeah, go to Viceroy. There's somebody there. Go, Oscar Bayman is my dog. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know where it is? I mean, I, I can give you an address. What breed He's is my favorite dog. And what, what, breed, what breed of dog is it? It's, it's down on Palomino Avenue, southwest, <laughs> by the beach. That's like a Cocker Spaniel or a Golden Retriever. Alright. Yep. I feel like Oscar would be, a, would be a Cocker Bye. Spaniel if he was a dog. Hmm. Hey Oscar, if you was mm -hmm. a dog, what breed of dog would you be? And why would you be a Cocker Spaniel? <laughs> oh. Objection. Yeah. Leading. I said if you were... <laughs> Objection. <laughs> what? I said if you were... Objection badgering the witness. <laughs> you... Yeah, I'm, I'm so confused with the guy doctor. I said if you were a breed of dog, what dog would you be and why would it be Cocker Spaniel? I... I wouldn't be a dog because I'm allergic. How do you resist be... yourself? What? Huh? What? <laughs> I don't think you can be Are allergic you to yourself. Me? Oh, well, you could. It's like no, eczema, like, what right? What type of dog would you be, though? Hmm? So if you have eczema, you're allergic to yourself. Okay, your let's skin. say. Okay, let's say if you weren't allergic. Mm hmm. Why would you be a cocker spaniel? I wouldn't. I I like the Labradors. <clears throat> Am I missing something here? <laughs> Do you need me to get them on all fours and bark for you? What's happening here? Do you know how Cocker Spaniels have like those mustaches? Cocks. Oh. <laughs> no, they don't. Yes, they do. Yeah, Cocker they, go, Spaniels they, go, have like, mustaches. they got little uh, twirly mustaches. Are you thinking like Schnauzer? Yeah, you're not thinking about the Cocker Spaniel, I think. Don't, don't, they same have... thing. No, they, they are not ears. the same thing, Storm. No, they're not. So they're, they've all got four legs of bark. It's the same thing. Oh really? I mean a chihuahua an oversized rat. For you know, like a pit bull. Oh yeah, pit apart from chihuahuas, chihuahuas aren't even a breed of dog. I'm pretty sure they're just a, a giant rat. rodent. Yeah. I mean cock cocker spaniels have the, the big ears that reach down to the floor if they uh, are annoying enough. It's a beagle. Yo, yeah, turn. Much the same thing. So, how, can you, <laughs> how can you sit there and say that about <laughs> Tom? What kind of shit is this? Yo, if Wild jumped badgering? into this, he'd have a field day. Objection, badgering. Objection, witness is testifying. Objection, Uno or uh, What's the status looking up in prison? <sighs> Where the fuck is Pred? I don't know. I'll call him. Yeah, honestly, I feel like you probably forgot. <laughs> Sloan, you might want to call him. You probably forgot. Call it. Yeah, I'll, 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 shall I call him? Or we <laughs> yeah, go, go for it. You, you got this. Someone idea. call the you fucking can, You sheriff. can badger the sheriff. I'm calling him Fred. Yeah, this is a matter of state emergency, and Fred's probably like twiddling his thumbs, flirting with a prostitute or something. Oh, no worries. All right, thanks. He's on his way again. That, that would roughly oh, be again. why. Yeah. <laughs> he's on his way again. Wait, does that mean he just keeps again. getting called away or just gets distracted and fucks off? Yes. Yep. All right then. <laughs> Give you the Leslie Nielsen answer. Yes. 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 Tap the table once for yes. Tap it twice for no. Are you guilty of this crime? Tap tap. <laughs> Yes, yes. Sent him away. No. I'll beat you with this yes. PVC piping that I stole from an inmate. <gasps> oh my <laughs> god! 
Please. Ouch. You saying you're just openly walking around with like contraband? Oh. Well, is it contraband outside of prison? Just a PVC oh, pipe for uh. If it's not in drugs. some kind of evidentiary containment space, I would say yes. We got him. I have it allegedly. You just admitted to it. Yeah, you just <laughs> admitted to Go back to and it. say allegedly right now. Random, random, random search, search. search. Yeah. This is not a breach of Fourth Amendment. <gasps> say no comment. No, he doesn't have one. He lied. Told you. Oh Lying under God. oath. <gasps> I wasn't under oath. How'd you know? You're an officer. You're always under oath. Raise your hand in the air. Hmm? I'm going to say you win. Objection. Dereliction of duty. Should I take the yeah. rabbit hole deeper or say I'm off duty? See, you're under oath. Is the he, called he, he would be more No, you should have put oath. You should have put oath. And so no, he'll be over. He, he would be over oath. He's over. On top of oath. <laughs> Is that thread out there? Got stuck in another meeting? Oh Classic. Is he like talking to Saren, probably? Yeah. Yo. Do we even have an office? Oh no, we have the mayor's office, don't we? Yeah, we can go to the mayor's yes, office. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Hopefully the little ones don't come in and take us hostage just like last time. That'd be really bad. <laughs> hey, Sheriff. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hello, I heard you lost. Sorry to hear that. Hey, Storm. Hey, Fred. Hello. Hey, guys. Um... Gentlemen. Okay, so the, the office? Yeah, uh, it's probably good. the best. Yeah, All to right, the mayor's right, office. Right. Don't worry, I'm not gonna kill you guys on my other EMS. Why would you oh. even say that? EMS is a mistake. Is that you? A search cross Sloan? Mistake. Sloan is to the point where I'm just annoyed with EMS right now. I take no responsibility right, what's, uh... for this man. Good. Alright, so what's going on? First thing to note, uh, we have been working with Storm in uh, hopefully bringing on a new type of state position as a liaison between the mayor's office and Bolingbrook. And the timing of this could not be more perfect for what events occurred last night. It's my understanding that the prison was overtaken uh, and um, Storm, I will allow you to take it from here. Okay, so um, obviously the lifers were aware of what I was trying to do with the mayor's office and they actually reached out to me uh, with demands um, on how, on what they want to get the prison back. So I will read it to you. <clears throat> to the PD, DOJ, and the mayor of Los Santos. We, the lifers of Boilingbrook Penitentiary, have fully seized control of the prison and are willing to negotiate the peaceful return of the prison back into the state hands. We understand that this is an unprecedented situation and with that we are looking for an unprecedented solution. Now we know we, you cannot guarantee grant all of us our freedom. We know that's out of the question. However, in exchange for us laying down our arms, relinquishing the prison back to the state and the DOC and avoiding an all-out firefight firefight that could last days on end we are seeking the following no charges will be placed on the inmates for our actions and also a one-time 12-hour furlough period will be granted to those involved at a designated date for one tsunami we will be granted a period in which to taste that which we always wanted freedom any inmates who commit crime during this period forfeit this opportunity and will be sent back to prison inmates will be required to report back 30 minutes before tsunami and will comply with a search done by the doc these are our demands failure to meet these demands will result in a firefight and chaos that i hope we both wish to avoid sincerely just what do you so guys just want to be outside for 12 hours uh, yeah so they basically won uh for 12 hours um sorry one second i'll call you back in an important meeting bye um so yeah they basically want freedom within without uh outside of the prison for 12 hours uh, obviously anybody that commits a crime will go back into boiling brook um and they want no charges they basically don't want to put be in, be put in adsec for uh, what they did and or receive treason charges. They just want freedom for twelve hours, and they will give the prison back to DOC. 
freedom for how long? For a, for one 12 hour period? Yes, for one tsunami. I mean, this isn't my decision. I mean, me, I would go in there and kill them all. That's what we're trying to avoid. Because uh, I'm going to put it quite frank, you guys do that in two months' time or less, they're going to have the firearms and the manpower to do this again. They can have if you, it if you guys decide to do this now, they're going to do this all the time and expect... Um, um, and expect not necessarily. Uh, I think that um, saying to them, yes, but having trackers, because uh, DSC can put trackers on lifers, uh, ha having them like almost have an ankle bracelet on for 12 hours, because um, obviously, you know, they can they can escape the state in the hours. We, we have no idea what they're going to do, but uh, having some sort of boundaries put in place to basically not allow them to do whatever they want. I feel that like would be a good solution, but I, I am worried that you guys going in there, you know, taking yeah, charge up, and gunning them all down is only going to prove their point that nobody listens to them. All they want is for somebody to listen to them. Now, obviously, I mean, this, is Senate. this is this is between the mayor and the Senate on what they want to do with this, but um. Let the mayor know that uh, I'm ready to load up, go in, and take that fucking prison back. We can't turn the city into fucking Arkham. That, that's my fear, honestly, is if we open the gates for 12 hours, that this could turn into just a shit show. Yeah. Yeah, I also... Yeah, I yeah. have that fear, too. I, I mean, I understand our desire to end this without bloodshed. I, I understand um, the desire for safety on both sides. I think um, it is unreasonable to expect that no punishment and in fact a reward would come from overthrowing the prison. Yeah, no, I agree. We give into their demands the city will turn into a goddamn bloodbath. And if we don't give into their demands, only the prison Seven becomes a blood map. Radio. Hello? Somebody just called me. I, I guess the, the question at this point is, what is the path of least resistance? Can't give in to terrorists. Yeah. The question is, what happened with the the Lost when they had their similar situation of trying to take over? The Lost is the sovereign states. The Senate said no, and they gave them the order to treat them. Yeah. Was there any sort of negotiation that was happening? Oh, no. The Senate just said, fuck you. Okay. So... Probably gonna do If you same. guys give in to the Senate's demands, they'll replace all of you within the app. You guys give in to the lifers' demands. I'm sorry, the Senate will have all of you gone with an hour from your position. As expected. Yeah. I think the most reasonable course of action, um, at least, again, I have no say. I have influence with the mayor. Um, Ayub, unfortunately, <laughs> nor do you. Um, as a deputy, you're, you're an extension, but you don't have final say. Yeah. Um, this is something that Mickey needs to be informed in and needs to make final decision and execute with the Senate. However, um, we are glad that they were willing to at least engage. I think, unfortunately, the timing and lack of reasonableness. Engage. I mean, the mayor just got reelected. I don't think he wants to be doing business with terrorists as his first right. back in office of the second term. Yes, and our, our hope was to establish a new line of communication to begin making things in Bolingbrook better. However, this is unreasonable. This is, like you said, terrorism. This is under threat. This is not. Can I uh, can I speak to the deputy mayors alone? Hey, firm. I'll speak with you later. 
All right, gotcha. We can talk right afterwards. I just need two minutes of their time. Mm -hmm. This will be real quick. Hey. Go out there. You, go out there. G go. Ford! Ford! Thank you, Ben Sky. Right. I got the solution. All right. All right. You Wait, guys send me in. All right, I'll do some CIA level shit. All right, I go in. I pretend to be an inmate. New transfer. My goal is one thing, to get them to fight amongst themselves. Once they start fighting amongst themselves, they won't be able to have a, they won't be able to have communications with us. And then they'll be war they'll kill each other and then we can just take the prison back. Well, I mean, what could go wrong? What could go wrong? What could go right? We don't know. But we need to get the prison back, and we can't make deals with terrorists. I agree. Sheriff, if you do this, it's not under the authority of the mayor's office. I know. under my own authority because I'm doing what's right I'll deploy in by parachute land on the rooftop take care of business just gonna go in there get them to war with themselves bam that's when we strike I have one request Can you wear a body cam? I don't think so. But I was going to go in there under the name Snake Pliskin. I'm going to wear leather pants, a tight, mm -hmm. sleeveless black shirt, and uh, have a beautiful mullet with an eye patch. Or... As a prison transfer wearing grab, leather pants? Or I have another idea. What's your idea? We kidnap one of the inmates. We take him out. We do Operation Face. We take his face, cut it off, cut my face off, and then I go in as that man. Or a bulky woman. <laughs> well, I mean, we have the FRB here. Face we off. have the technology for that. Do we have face-off technology? <laughs> yeah, we got that. Oh, hell yeah. You know what? Let's do that. Right, you guys got to get that that plan. Or you guys got to talk to the mayor. I've been bringing home tons of plans that we could go to take this prison back. Giving into their demands. They want to go outside. They can go outside in the fucking yard. They have chicken parmesan. They have chicken There's parmesan? There's more stuff to do. Yeah, they have chicken parmesan. I was there for three years doing nothing but eating chicken parm. It's not like just slop and gruel. They have... Hell no. Yeah. They got some good food. They got better meals than we do out here. Yes. The chicken farm. I shit you not. Chicken fucking farm. What was it? Chicken parmesan. Plan doesn't work. Snake Fliskin never failed. It's escape from Bolingbrook. State Penitentiary. Featuring Nicholas Cage. Oh, true, um, but, but I'm way more handsome and younger than Nicholas Cage. You, you, oh, better how, looking. how big a fan of Nicholas Cage are you? You've suggested two of his films. Well, the first one was a Kurt Russell one, Escape from L.A. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. gotcha. Not, not The Rock? No. Gotcha, okay. Or War Dog. Or uh, not War Dogs, the God of War. No, not God of War, the Lord of War. Lords of War. Which wouldn't fit. I see, I see. Okay. You, we gotta think we gotta think of something. The longer they're in control of that prison, the more people they're gonna recruit to their cause. And the and the fucking 
the Senate needs to actually know about this. That part. I don't even know the Senate. Does the Senate know? My name's Snake Pliskin. I'm here in Bolingbrook as a lifer. It's foolproof. Well, again, the most I can do is influence. I can discuss with the mayor, but again, if you decide to take action on your own, I can't stop you. Is there currently an army up there? Do they have people there now? It's my understanding they have taken um, all manner of armaments off of guards and are pretty well stocked. Yeah, plus they've got an issue with ramps and fucking everyone just ramping in, giving all the lifers Uzis and guns from the outside. There's also that problem that we need to discuss afterwards. Baker wall, the Trump method. We already, we already have a wall. It's, it's, it up. just needs to be taller, like like uh, be... like Top Golf. How? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll just turn it into a top golf course then. Yeah, we'll we'll put top golf fencing around it. All right, perfect. No one will get through that. Maybe put a dome over it, Springfield style. Yeah, there we go. We'll we'll turn it into a modern version of that Jim Carrey movie. True Show. We just uh, starve him to death. Can't starve them to death. They have chicken parmesan. They have years of food supplies. You can't do anything. They have a slushy no machine. Way. The prison, it's fully stocked with everything. I mean, prisons have surpluses of food that last years. Canned goods, all types of shit. They literally have a farm in there, Bench Guy, where they can grow vegetables. Do you know how big of a farm you need to feed at least 20 people? Pretty big fucking farm. Right. And they have that. Big farm. You, you take out one one member, then you've got... This would be this would be a federal issue. What would you recommend, Bench Guy? I mean, you've been brought up to speed on what's happened. We've, we've lost to the prison. So we just take our jets, load them up with some bombs, and we just bomb the prison. See, we'll that's what I said. It. Yeah, yeah, we, we just... I wouldn't. I'm. I'm. I'm for that one too. We just blow up the entire prison and rebuild it from the ground up. Well. Yes. Perfect. I mean, you can do your plan, but. I don't want to be inside when the. I got to get out before the bombs go off. I got to escape. Well, if you do your plan, then we wouldn't do the bombs. No, you would do both. You would just I would do the plan and then they would be bombed afterwards. But why would you escape. do If we're going to do the bombs, <laughs> why would you do the plan? Cuz you need I mean you need to do the plan. Information bench guy. For all we know, I mean yourself, they're getting supplies from the outside. So we got to find out who those supplies are coming. I think Snake is the only person who can find out. Uh I think we should just kill them. We could but just that is kill another him. option. And it is gonna be shift too soon. But there's I don't actually know. like it a hundred it, it is a fortified. It, it is very fortified. And if they're armed to the teeth, as they say they are, it would be. It's gonna be very hard to get through that gate. It'll be a yeah. fucking shooting gallery, and then trying to get a helicopter, they'll just blow that shit up too. Uh, I mean, do you think it's more fortified than the uh, Sandy Shores thing pla uh, place? Oh, hell yeah, it's way more fortified than Sandy Shores. And, and that shit was a bloodbath. Could poison their water supply, but damn it, half the people in this city might die. Well, what do you want to All do? Right. Do you want to do your plan or do you want to bomb them? Nah, we get the mayor's got to decide. You guys talk to the mayor about what's going on, and then get this whole thing sorted out. Just know that the PBSO, the PD, whatever you want to call us, is ready to roll, and Snake Pliskin's ready to infiltrate. Understood. 
we'll put together uh, an objective briefing for that plan. All right, perfect. All right, you uh, get that whole thing sorted. Hopefully the mayor comes around today. I think he intends to, but I'll send him an email now to ensure it. All right, perfect. All right, good call. All right, we'll get the fuck out of here. Wonderful. Thank you both. You gotta open the door. I know. Door is locked. I, you can... I, I, I know. All right, now I got to email Blau and <laughs> make sure he actually logs in. I'm gonna close this door. Let me in. Oh, one, one side storm. Mm. They're not giving into that. Those demands are fucking unreasonable. Extremely. There's no way. We're yeah. letting the lifers out we are, for tried my best. a full no, day. We are, we are breaching one way or the other. Yeah. I, I understand what they wanted to accomplish. They, I understand that they want freedom, but you don't get to make a, t a hostile takeover and then expect that that's going to be reasonable. You're not asking for reasonability. Reasonability is demolishing everybody inside that place that was a part of it. Yep. The unfortunate I mean, part when, of this... When Storm, when Storm said she had, like demands i thought they were actually going to be somewhat reasonable well and that's not to say that there's not room for negotiation but what um, is reasonable i don't think there is the question is do you make your demands so unreasonable as to intend to bring about a, blood, a bloodbath they're asking for a bloodbath they already got a bloodbath last night do you think this is an invitation to bring about more staff? Are they are they trying to instigate a fight right now? I mean, a fight is starting. Whatever happens, they they know that. We know that. DOC are planning now. Speed. We got to speak to Mickey. What does what would Mickey want? Mickey would want a firefight. Mickey would want a firefight. He would want to take that prison back by force. But I don't know that it's his decision alone either. I think the Senate needs to be informed, and we need to hear from them before any other actions are taken. If it means... Well, we need to hear from them today. Right. Today. So, I've sent him an email. Uh, now we're just waiting on his response. We can't contact the Senate, can we? It's just Mickey. Um, we can talk to Judge Crane, who can contact the Senate. Yeah. Of course he's not around. Do you have his email? Yep. Maybe shoot him an email. Say what? Hey, we need to talk to the Senate. Um... Yeah. Are you aware of what's going on in the prison? The Senate needs to be informed of a hostile takeover. Who, who's outside? Who is this?
I wanted to make a people Parmesan joke. <laughs> Kill one lifer, but that didn't happen. I think it's because this is not a That's what I'm saying. I just thought it was, I thought it was maybe now or something. Maybe after that. Is that going to run for the next one? To become a mayor? What about you, Mama? Should I pass it to be a mayor? No, right now. Not right now? Why? You busy because of Time to go meet Speedy. Is that a judge? Hello, Judgey. Is oh judge. no, I am the uh, assistant to Mayor Mickey. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Assistant to Mayor Mickey. Uh, yes, sir. You know what is my app, bro? I've been waiting for like five years now. What app? Construction. Not urban app. Well, you know, I I did present this app to you guys long time ago. It's called, you know, it's called Only Friends. Oh, I see. Uh, it's something that you had already submitted a business proposal on? Yes, sir. And it was approved? Yes, sir. Everything approved, but the app is not here, man. I'm still waiting to meet my friends on my OnlyFans. I mean, oh. OnlyFans, sorry. Oh, it's a little, little bit different intention there, huh? Yeah, yeah, well, you know, fans, friends, you know, same thing in a sense, right? Is it? Like, you know, yeah, it is. Like, if I'm a fan of this Mama Sera, right, or this Papa Sera, like, what, what would it what was the difference between a fan and a friend? You know, as you still care about them. Oh. Right? Parasocial. Oh. Right, but I guess the difference is maybe a fan wouldn't tell you if you're being a dirtbag, but a friend would tell you, right? Mm-hmm. Probably, probably, and and then a fan may have parasocial behaviors and fall in love with you and never really know you. Oh shit, you think like a, like a, what you call it, like a two-faced motherfucker? I'm thinking more like somebody who doesn't have the social skills enough to talk to somebody in real life. Anyway, that's well, neither here nor there. Well, exactly, exactly. Anyway, you guys have a great day. I just came to look for a judge. I didn't know where to look. Absolutely. I appreciate Hell yeah. You. Good meeting appreciate you. Appreciate you. Who was that guy? Oh, I guess his name is Speedy. Uh, shall we go back in the office? Oh. Jesus. Using your head, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm emailing Mickey. You're emailing Mickey. You're emailing Mickey. Who's not emailing Mickey? Me. I mean, he needs to be here. Yeah. I just, I just feel like I'm going in there and just shooting them down is going to cause more hurt than good. I get that they're terrorists and they committed treason, and I definitely agree that there should be some punishment, which is why I think they negotiate more. But uh, I don't really know where to go from here now. Because by the sounds of it, they just want to go in there and shoot them. Uh, unfortunately, I, I think right now is just out of our hands. Uh, I don't think that the program and what we want to accomplish is outside the scope of reasonability. I think it's um, let the dust settle from this and 
move on um, with the attempt that was made. Um, I, I almost feel like it would be maybe in the better interest to say we we passed along the demands and um, the reasonability wasn't there, and so the mayor's office wants to um, take this as, as an action step Pacific moving forward. And Eastern time. What was that, Ayub? What's the difference between Pacific and Eastern time? Three hours. Oh, okay, cool. That's their deadline. Yeah, he responded, said he'll be he'll be around uh, in a lot of hours time. No, it's like two and a half hours. Eleven what, a.m. I thought it said. Uh, wait, eleven thirty a.m. PST. Eleven thirty PST. PST. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to be here. I don't, oh, so it's it's half, straight off the half an hour after a storm, yeah. Yeah, oh, I, fuck yeah, I don't yes. think I'm be, yeah, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be here because of my train. I'll try. All right. Try my best. That's the deadline. Um, Storm, can you send me the uh, email me the the demands that they have? If, if you're not here, I can be a representative on your behalf. Yeah, sure. Uh, we can also possibly see about um, making that ticket better today. Because <laughs> I think this is a continuation of something that began and needs to be seen through. Uh huh. Yeah, I'll just let, let me just. Sorry, I'm just. I'm feeling very shitty sure. after that conversation. No, I, I understand. Yeah, Sheriff Pred is a very um, wild card kind of person. I understand his position and perspectives, though. I, I, I understand, and which is why this conversation was to negotiate, and then it just led to let's just shoot them. And no, like. Yeah, af after you left, they talked about bombing the prison, which um, I said, no way. <laughs> uh, they to kill more people? Right. Like, um, that's what we're trying to avoid? That's why I said anything you do will not be under the advisory um, scope of the mayor's office. Um, we, can't, we can't agree to that. And then I said, the mayor will be here. Um, no decisions will be made until he's here. Mm -hmm. I think that we need to do more negotiation. Because I would agree, this was a starting point. This was this was not supposed to be like list of demands not to be. Yeah, I know how the life like you know they ask for these big demands. They they ask for the utmost top thing, and then they'll work their way down. That's exactly I what mean, they want if, to do. If we could settle for, hey, you you now have a liaison officer that you can reach out to regularly, and also by the way, you know we're not against having the idea of you guys having some fun every once in a while. Um, would you accept, you know, time to, to go in, in groups to, I don't know, the arcade or, or trips to Uwu or whatever it may yeah, be? Yeah, like, like instead of, oh, let's give you one tsunami of freedom, why not make it where it's an ongoing thing? Right. Once For, a month or yeah. every couple of weeks yeah. or, yeah. I was thinking, like, so what I wanted to do was, like, one person or, like, one Playing group sides, Chad. once every, like, week, depending on the DOC numbers. Because yeah, then you're sense. getting your like you're getting your freedom. However, I'm gonna like I feel like we should definitely. I feel like I should say to them like, "What you did is bad. You know this. I know this. And you're going to be punished for what you did." However, instead of being criminally charged with treason, because you guys are already in prison for life, you know treason can be the death penalty. We settle for. Two days in AdSec. Like two full days in AdSec. Yeah. I mean there there will definitely have to be some repercussions, and I think that's the part that needs to be discussed, right? Is yeah, what so, is reasonable. Uh, yeah. I mean, like I said, the lifers, you know, I know how they work, I know how their minds work. They would have asked for the utmost outrageous thing to then negotiate down. So I think Giving them a liaison officer that they can talk to, giving them a program where they can 
go out and have freedom, you know, for the foreseeable future instead of a 12 hour period and some sort of punishment, like, I honestly think even seven days, even a week, a week in ADSEC, because they'll all be together. You know, the, the truth of it is though, it wasn't the lifers who started this. I know it was and, Mo Rickenbaum. And, and so that's the thing that I'm trying to remember and take into account as well is that yes, they went along with something. Yes, it's treasonous, but, but it's more accomplice to treason accessory to treason in the kit because there's, there will be people who weren't involved, right? There, there will be lifers who are not present, who are, who are sleeping or whatever. We can't assume everyone inside there is the, the propagator of the treason. And so we should not act and respond as if every life in there is worthless. I, I also am hesitant to do anything that would be quick to judge. I, I also, I almost feel like we need Justice Crane uh, present for next yeah. conversations as well. Because the, the fact of the matter is, these are people who are in prison. This is not some additional case. This is not additional time. This is now punishment within punishment. Mm. Oh, there you go. Hi. Hi. Yeah, we, we never left. You did. I know. I had to do a thing. I think, I think, um, you know, Mal should definitely be punished for what he did because ultimately he started this. Sorry. Um, but I also think that obviously the life should be finished, but I also feel like they should get something because, like, I don't want to reward them, but, uh, giving them that, like, hey, you know, we listened to what you want, have this liaison officer. Yeah. I still think this can work to our advantage. It's, it's just doing it the right way. I just don't want us to fall at the knees of PD and just, I, I am not comfortable with just letting PD go in there and gun them down. I, I don't think that's for PD to decide, right? I think, yeah. I think they're, this is outside their scope anyway as yeah. well, right? I think this yeah. really falls to the Senate to begin making some decisions. Um, yeah. I, I understand the eagerness and PD does provide support in the instance that, that DOC is overrun. However, they are not a primary oversight um, agency when it comes to prison. So this is this is uncharted territory. I think if nothing else, the what we can do moving forward is, again, if you know when the dust settles from this, because there are lifers who who, you know, I think Mill Mill's sentence is fifty their life with possibility of parole in 52 years. So he could eventually get out, but the lifers are there for life. And so if we change our perspective and make sure that we're trying to accommodate people who are genuinely not trying to seek the harm of the city mm -hmm. uh, or being active terrorists like Mel Rickenbacker, um, then, then perhaps this is the, the path forward that we do desire. Obviously this is like a, okay, you, you pulled out all the stops. Uh, we would, we'd only be able to do so much right now. However, we are interested in still maintaining open lines of communication and beginning to make reconciliatory moves with Bolingbroke in general. Cause again, this goes back to not just the lifers, right? This is for DOC as well. Yeah. But I think, I think approaching it from reconciliation is probably the most important piece that we can do. It's just going to have to be on the tail end of this current active situation, unfortunately. Yeah, I, so, I just, I just hope that I can be around later so I can, cause I'm very passionate about this and, you know, I can sit there and tell you so much, but ultimately, you know, I speak from the heart on what I want. And, you know, they committed treason, they're terrorists. Um, but I feel like even without Mel being there, this was gonna happen inevitably one day because they they get treated so poorly in there. And I like, 
I don't want to sit there and say down from the DOC because I know that I'll ruffle a few feathers. Yeah. But they get treated poorly. They they get treated inhumane. They are handcuffed for hundreds of months facing a wall. They you know, they have no real medical person within the prison. They have nobody to talk to. They have no rehabilitation program. All they have is each other. And, you know, what they did is fucking awful. Like, really is. And I'll never sit there and say that the the life is because they're not. They're far from it. You know, they're in they're in there for life. But they are still humans. Still have emotions. Right. But uh, I think going in there and gunning them down is only going to make matters worse. Yeah, PD can leave that prison and get on with their lives. But then those lifers have to sit there and remember everything that just happened. And they be angry at DOC. If DOC and PD go in there and gun them down, it's breaking any bridges that DOC has built up with the lifers. It, it, I, I, I know that this won't end here, you know, DOC will get stabbed, they will get shot, they will get tortured, bad things will happen to them until their lifers get listened to. This, this is, this is only the beginning. I think that's just it, right? This is the beginning. Maybe this is why this position will be more important than ever is to start yeah, I know, I rebuilding bridges that are about to be torn down. Yeah. Yeah, I agree 100%. Like, I completely understand where PD and DSC are from. And, you know, you can say don't negotiate with terrorists. I get that. But, like I said, you know, people leave and get on with their life. DOC can go off duty and get on with their life. Everywhere their, their life is looked, they're going to be reminded of Oh, remember when all, when all we wanted was people to listen to us and they just came in here and gunned us down? I think liaising from the perspective of saying, yes, we remember that, but don't forget the heels that that came on, which was the lives lost, the weapons that were stolen the the threat of force that was used to try and demand what you wanted the reasonableness was lost yeah i know and like yeah yeah. and i like if if they let me negotiate i'm gonna express that to the lifers i'm gonna be like this isn't the way you know to get what you want and i understand that you have tried but this is not okay you guys are now considered terrorists so either we need to come to an agreement that works for everybody or I mean they know what's gonna happen. So Well the most we can do right now is wait and see how this all unfolds, but I'm still on your side. I'm still an advocate. We're still gonna be pressing for repeal and I think there's a lot that needs to happen. It's stuff that's going to interest Mickey. I also will go ahead and tell you, knowing Mickey, what's going to interest him more today is probably siding with the PD. So get ready for that hailstorm. Yeah. Emotionally, what you may need to do, and and this is just kind of like to prepare yourself mentally and, and emotionally, separate yourself enough that you can take what happens today in stride and use it to fuel the fire of we can't let this happen again. If I leave that meeting and you know Mickey's sided with PD but I but he's approved me to be a liaison officer I'll be happy because once this is over I'm going to prison and I can be like I can talk to them because they're, they're going to be angry. The only thing is I'm waiting for Charles to speak to command. I need Charles to be like, yes. Because he sat there and approved it in this meeting and I'm still waiting for him to 
to speak to command and he's not where you know now this is this is an emergency right I've changed. This music is getting to me. Yeah, well, I'm going to go gold panning for a bit. Hopefully I can be All around. Right. I really, really hope so. But if not, then, you know, you know what to say. Absolutely. I'm here as an advocate. Enjoy your gold panning. I'm going to try and knock out what I can in the next 50 minutes. Duh. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you'll, yeah, you'll know if I'm here. And like I said, just do what you can. Absolutely. I just hope I can be. We'll see. Um, welcome Yay. back, Rose. If I thought the bunch of stuff wasn't enough, now I've got PD on my plate. Are you taking on all the budgets? Um, Until we hire more people, I said I'll look after PD in the meantime. Once we hire more people, I'll let them do it. I think we should hire an accountant. <laughs> what do we need an accountant? To oversee all the budgets so you guys can focus on the parts of the job that matter. Yeah. Wait, so, I mean, I thought this was our job. I mean, I don't mind. The have, have you read your job description? I mean, I've read my job description. I said that it's that. What's it called? Mickey wants us to also for budgets in addition. Yeah, that's technically outside your job description. Yeah, but it's what Mickey wants us to do. And I don't mind. I mean, if you really want an accountant. If you really want an accountant, then you can get an accountant. I know it was yeah. something he wanted to look into before. I think it'd be a good idea, especially now that we're trying to take on more payment responsibilities, to have somebody who's dedicated to it. Huh. Uh, by the way, this is the, the dumbest wording. Suggested. So dumb. Uh, basically, Rose, the update is we can't make any decisions. Um, Mickey has to make the final decision, but for fun RP purposes, it would be great to send Kyle in as um, Snake, whatever he called himself. Yeah. I mean, I'll be back off the storm. Ugh. Sounds good. We gotta take that. We gotta take back that prison. We gotta what? We gotta take back that prison. I mean, yeah, I would. I would put in a deadline for negotiations, but I feel like they're just gonna continue giving bullshit stuff. They will just keep making unreasonable demands, and I don't wanna go forward with them. I mean, truth is, it's outside our scope anyway. But if Mickey's going to be around, he can bring in the right Mickey powers regardless. Absolutely. Yeah. I need to go yeah, get Yeah, Mickey food. would agree. Mickey would absolutely agree with what everyone is saying. Oh, right absolutely. Now. There's there's no way that prison's not getting a full force assault. Yeah. But I think for the purposes of what we're trying to accomplish with Storm, it makes sense to try and talk about it diplomatically. To say that again. Yeah, I mean, we tried the diplomatic crew. Just... So if anyone questions us, hey, we tried negotiating, the negotiations were unreason uh, the months were unreasonable. Exactly. So now we. And we did it in a we public forum do... uh -huh. with plenty of witnesses. We tried to do it their way, now we're doing it our way. Send in Snake. Yeah. Send in. I mean, we'll see. 
bet you would like the snake out there, right? Absolutely he would. Which is yeah. why I asked about the body cam. That's something I know he'd want to watch. Yeah. All right, I'm going to run to Maldini's, get some food real quick. Um, you don't want to go gold panning? Is that something still on your radar? Uh, I'm going gold panning now. Yeah. And plus, I need to cool the pass. Gotcha. All right, man, I'll see you. I need to not keep this on singular loop. Exactly. Hey, you want oh, to it's not. Party Excuse you, asshole. You're excused. Oh man, I wish this. This is one of those places like. If Sloan had any kind of real power, I'd have just told Kyle to go do it. <laughs> because I know for Kyle that would make some really great roleplay. But I also don't want to rob, again, like my whole thing is like not robbing anybody of roleplay. So messaging Mickey and being, or messaging Blau and being like, hey, Mickey's needed because the prison was taken over is like about the extent of the roleplay that needed to occur. Yeah, that's that's the um I'm trying to figure out like I think I said it to even character a little bit ago like the DC background Or just walking and running places makes more sense Taking a train but there is no train here. I RP the train um, The way that like I think most people think about taking the train into the city when they're like going into the district. I spent a lot of time, like weirdly enough, IRL, I spent a lot of time in DC. Um, my brother, for those who don't know, my brother is a politician. Like in real life, some of this character is based on who my brother was when he was working for uh, a congressman. Um, now he was a, ch a chief of staff. Uh, and, and so this, like some of this RP is really based around what a chief of staff would do. And it's actually like, the, the combination of about like 15 jobs, um, but then all wrapped into this private consultancy. Hello. Hello. Yeah, he, he did it for a long time too. Yeah, so, so my brother and I have had many conversations through the years on his job. Um, I, I had an interest at one point. He actually tried to get me to come join a practice he was putting together, but I decided that honestly, like the amount of in, like real world challenges that there are, it just wasn't worth it. Yo, yo, Rada. Hey, how's it going? Are... Yo, yo. Do you work? Do I what? Do I work here? Um, I can't hear you. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you now. Do you work here? I do not. No, I'm. Do I'm... you need food? I do. I, anybody help you yet? No, not yet. I, I'll help you. 
No oh, great. Thank you so much. Hi there. Hello, welcome to Maldini. Yeah, I'm just gonna what go in and. Today? Um, can I do a uh, Maldini's yeah, combo? Fine. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Go ahead and swipe for me, please. Thank you. I appreciate you. Anyway, real life politics and video game politics are drastically different. All right, your food and drink are on tray one. Have a nice day. Awesome. Thank you so much. You too. You're welcome. are broken. Okay. Keep opening. Thanks. Yeah, I uh, I love those interactions too. Um, I uh, <laughs> I'm interested to see how some of this stuff pans out. Uh, I I like I love what she has to offer, and and Summer has been super super helpful, both in character and out of character. Um, I, I'm trying to cautiously approach what what Sloan either knows slash doesn't know. Um, through deductive reasoning that Bunny may have put herself at risk for in the last couple of our conversations. Because I think Bunny, the character of Bunny, really wants to see this city thrive, and that's really what Sloane wants too. Um, but I think Sloan knows Bunny's lying about something. He just doesn't know what. Did you catch in the interaction yesterday when Sloan asked what her husband's last name was? Yeah, there was a reason. Uh, and then today, one of the first things I did on stream and in game was go and look up Sexton Hardcastle uh, in the MDW and learned that he was a detective working under the street crimes unit. And it was revealed to Sloan in character by AU that if anyone was investigating Mickey, it would be the street crimes unit. I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Demi O is right. I can't wait for the RP around this. The question is, I, I don't know that I want to do it today. I think I want to let it like let it sit for a minute. No, please, please don't meta. 
so so for those who haven't watched all parts of all of my streams which i expect is probably the case sloan um sloan paid back the state and this started from one of the earlier conversations that he had with bunny um he paid back 760 some odd dollars 760 some odd thousand dollars so like over three quarters of a million dollars from a stipend that he got oh geez uh, from a stipend that he was given from the state because he does government work part of his budget request was for um, state funding to have a reliable means of transportation now the reason he doesn't use that transportation is because of an accident that he was in um, a few days after getting his car where he was t-boned by Cy Carter and then punched in the face by well and at the time he didn't know it was Cy Carter but eventually after after instigating um Cy Carter revealed that that's who he was um and so the way I'm RPing it is that a combination of things Sloan doesn't like to drive because he was in that accident and then also he's just used to walking around so he's kind of like he he the the reason he got a car in the first place was because Odessa told him he needed to get a car not because he wanted one um and so anyway um Bunny told him how to pay back the money and in that conversation she revealed that if like she'd let on too much that that's how you cover yourself in the instant something happens and and so sloan like at one point she goes in the case mickey's ever getting investigated and sloan asked why would he be investigated and she said oh well every every mayor is usually investigated in their second term and she covered it by saying emma was investigated for embezzlement which if you go and read the docket report, she was not, uh, she was not charged for because she put a retainer on for her ex-husband's business. And because all of the docket stuff is technically public record, Sloan has gone through and read a lot of the reports. So the next piece of information is the conversation yesterday where her story changed. And it was no longer investigating Mickey about anything monetary related. It was as we were doing this, this uh, research together about um the roles of the deputies and the roles of the mayor and trying to need to define that scope down a little bit more she used something she found in that that legislation piece after she found it to change the scope of what he may be investigated for which is gross negligence and uh or dereliction of duty and and so when it comes to gross negligence the point that sloan made was well he hired a lot of people to do the job i wouldn't call that negligence and then vice versa, dereliction was the, the only argument would be that he was gone for three weeks. Um, Mickey was gone for three weeks. And then in that case, he had equipped Serge Cross and uh, the deputies to do the job. And in that time, Sloan moved to the city. So, so you couldn't really argue that that was the case. But she harped on if there's an investigation again. And so in Sloan's mind, why is she saying so much about Mickey being investigated? For someone who has no reason to be investigated, you know, like Sloan, to Sloan, there's, there is no reason. He's done nothing wrong. Now, Sloan doesn't see the finances. He doesn't know anything that's going on because he's, he's separate from the state. There's like, there's no reason for any of this information to be known. Um, otherwise, um, for Bunny to be revealing this stuff through, and, and we can just call it Freudian slips, um, it's now made Sloan suspicious. And, and it's not that he distrusts Bunny. Um, well, Mickey's... So, great question, Rose. Um, Mickey hasn't done any weird stuff around Sloan Road. Right. Um, the weirdest thing Mickey did was he asked Sloan to make the passports. And and Sloan's response was, well, I don't, I don't have the ability to make passports, but I can call in a favor with the Department of Defense and have them made. Um, and... and the way that he uh, worded it was because Mr. Buddha is helping us with what we're doing at the FIB, I'm happy to call in this favor. Um, yes, he knows about the Abbey one. What's the ad one? Uh, 
was looking at chat. I should have gone through that light. Racing related, like, like he paid. Oh, uh, yeah. Where, where, um, he used the state announcements inappropriately, um, to shout out Yo Colt because Lando called in a favor. Um, I don't know that. So that's, that's the, the interesting question about like what quote soft meta Sloan can know. Because I wasn't in the city at the time, but state announcements are technically public knowledge. Uh, that's a good question, Ebart. Um, is it hard remembering what Sloan knows in character when I watch Blouse streams? Uh, no, and and I'll say the the reason it's not very hard is because there's a very strict line of of what would constitute mayoral stuff. Everything else is like completely unrelated. Um, so, so a good example would be like, the only reason Sloan knows that Mickey is a former bank robber is because Mickey often says, I used to rob banks. Um, so like, otherwise it's like, there's no reason for Sloan to have that knowledge. Um, he also knows from a, a docket case that Mickey shot two cops off duty. Um, and then is trying to figure out why that might have happened. Um, but that's all in his past, right? In Sloan's mind, that's all in his past. He knows nothing about the, the deeds and misgivings otherwise. What are these lights? These are the worst. But yeah, I, I like that's the like the the way we built this character was with the concept of soft meta. Um, these doors always get me. Um, which is like Blau doesn't really communicate well, so I watch his streams for anything that's specifically related to um, like um, what he would qualify as like a voice memo or voice briefing. Um, which is interesting, but yeah, everything else he doesn't know. He like, like Sloan doesn't know Lang. He doesn't know Dean, uh, other than he knows that he's seen his, he's seen their pictures and he knows just a small amount about them to have requested that information. Uh, well, actually let me rephrase what he knows about Lang and Dean is that they are heads of Cerberus, that they are helping in various areas with some of the stuff that we're trying to do. Um, and then everything else is like in-character knowledge. So Bunny talking about um, the connection that Mickey and Lang have and like the Vinewood Protection Act being in Lang's favor. Um, like he doesn't know that otherwise. There's no reason for him to know that. And then when, when Sloan was talking to Tim about it yesterday, the way Tim described it sounds very different than the way Bunny makes it sound, which is another reason why, and this is the reason why like Sloan said, like what well, sounds to me like they're just trying to prevent gang activity in this area. Why would that benefit in any individual one person? And, and then uh, Bunny was like, well, that's because like he owns a lot of the properties up there. Uh, and have you ever been to clean manor? And that's where like personal stuff getting in the way of, of like the type of RP that, uh, Sloan is focused on doesn't really make sense. And, and the example I'll give here is like Sloan's a politician. He's a businessman. Uh, he's, he's a defense contractor. He's really more focused on what he can do for the betterment of the city, but having a comment like, have you been to the clean manor and the connection between Lang and Mickey, that doesn't help me do my job. That sounds biased. And the whole premise of having a character that tries to remain unbiased is that it needs to be for the betterment of all. So trying to protect the area of Vinewood against gangs sounds like something that would be better for the city, does it not? Um, but 
if it's specifically for Mr. Lang, then who's to say? Um, and then her point, her counterpoint was, well, why not try and protect other areas like Mirror Park or the South Side or whatever? Uh, and and the, the only response to that is, that wasn't what was requested, right? The, the request was specifically for Vinewood because as of right now, it's not a heavily gang populated area. It's all very interesting, right? Like you can, you can see the sprays everywhere in the South side and all over mirror park and, and basically everywhere else in the city, except in Vinewood, what you have are the, uh, the scenes. Um, not yet. The legislation has not been pushed because we've been revising a few things. Um, trying to make sure that some of the verbiage is correct in these last pieces. I did push it to the, um, mayoral discordia, general discord, um, for review. The only person who reviewed it was Bunny. But all of the pieces, uh, let me go this way. So these are all of the pieces that we're currently ready to push. Um, they went ahead and raised wages to 200 per ticket. We're still trying to push for 300. It makes the most sense. This is the NVL squad. This is um, basically anybody working in a political capacity. This is the one that like Bunny really wanted to try and like have legislated to be anybody who was in a non-official or unofficial government capacity. It doesn't make sense to do that because it protects too many people. Um, I understood what she was saying about like, well, it, you're working for the parks department, even if you're not technically on the clock well that's that's true in a sense however you're not always operating in a government capacity probably arguably in her case she's operating in a personal capacity with her other businesses and ventures the majority of the time um the doctor argument was a better argument you're always a doctor even if you're not on duty however there are stipulations in place, and I only know this because my wife is a nurse. If you reveal that you're a doctor and uh, and, and people know that you're a doctor and you choose not to give aid uh, in an instance where somebody is like hurt or sick or whatever, you can be held responsible. Or alternatively, if you do provide aid uh, in an instance where somebody is hurt or injured as a doctor uh, and um, they die, <laughs> you can also be held responsible. So it's best to keep your mouth shut when you're off the clock. That's that's kind of like the, the response to that. Um, what we're specifically trying to do here is get coverage for two areas that were not previously covered. The mayor and deputy mayors qualify as government employees. The FIB is not currently covered under any of the existing charges. The secondary piece of it is there's no protection for Sloan. And so like the selfish side of this is well, he's working in an official capacity, even though it's not directly for the state, he's working indirectly for the state. And so, so qualifying independent consultants as part of these officials, um, working in an official capacity or an unofficial capacity for the state should qualify him for, um, basically protection. And the reason, the reason I'm trying to push for this is, is because terrorism doesn't really qualify um like the mike block instance when when he claimed terrorism uh technically was right in the sense that mike block was actually doing terrorism because he was operating on behalf of the mayor um which is legally or um politically motivated um but capturing kidnapping um i guess it would still be politically motivated uh the Cy carter one then is a better example <laughs> Cy carter didn't do anything politically motivated he just he just stepped down because he didn't know that it wasn't politically motivated. Ray's the only one who called him on it. And Ray was right. Uh, 
there there's technically nothing that that could be done um, because Sloan's not currently covered by any legislation for protection. Um, part of the reason I'm trying to push these together, uh, sorry, is the the Vinewood and the Wind Farm is I feel like any kind of protection acts would be viewed as like good beneficial to the the state in general now i know both of these technically work in the favor of uh, and this is only ooc i know both of these technically work in the favor of um cerberus and lang but sloan doesn't know that so for him it just like yeah it makes perfect sense that you would protect the wind farm land from any one company trying to come up and take it uh when what's happening right now is it's being owned and operated by the state and the state is drawing a benefit from it of course that makes sense and then trying to pay everybody else more who's a government employee. Oh man, my stream is super glitchy. There we go, that's better. You know, Siobhan asked Sloan uh, during their discussion a few days ago about whether or not he would represent any particular DOJ member. And his response was, no, it would be in my best interest not to represent a singular party. Um, I try to stay unbiased. That's another big questionable area i think for for judges uh and especially her and i only know this ooc i know she was the one who who approved piper's request um to look at the phone record or look at the bank records um in character sloan is suspicious of her because uh when he said he paid that money back she reacted very violently against it not oh yeah that makes sense uh, it wasn't your money. Of course you would pay it back. She was, oh my God, why would you do that? You're a saint. And she equated him to Jesus. Like it doesn't make, it doesn't make sense for somebody not to pay money back. That's not theirs. Like that's, that just, there's no reason not to, um, which is, which is like when, when I, when I told that to other people, they're like, oh yeah, of course you would do that. But for her to have made the kind of commentary she did was like, okay, that's a little suspicious. What's, why, why are you acting this way? I love serious RP. It's so fun. Is that Bucky? Bucky RPing with Ninus. Now let's go up here. Um, how do you go ahead? After storm, I need to figure out the Airx stuff. Ugh, that song was not very good. And now we run around to Tsunami because literally anything you do mechanically doesn't make sense 15 minutes before Storm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
violence. Push over trash cans. Yeah. Yeah, basically it's SBS hour. You know, Sloan hasn't uh, taken enough hits to go down yet. Like at all. Except, except on his first day in the city, uh, he was, he was kicked by somebody on a moped and he got, uh, he got, um, knocked out. <laughs> if that was like, <laughs> if that was the point at which like he was taken down and like perma, that would be really funny. <laughs> I do not yet have permit conditions, but yeah, I'm trying to figure out what they might be. And if I perma, if I perma Sloan, then I'll probably stop playing no pixel. I'll probably stop playing altogether. The only reason I'm in here is for this kind of arc and what it might lead to, which is part of the reason I'm not having perma conditions at this point. But honestly, the best permit condition might be he's a one life character. So as soon as he goes down, he dies. <laughs> but I think that would like any encounter with Mike Block has the potential to lead to that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You <Mark. laughs> But like a true one, I mean, like thinking about it in this kind of way makes sense, right? Like he shouldn't be in any kind of position that, that would take him down. However, I know the SBS in this server would likely lead to that. So I think, I think maybe if there were conditions, it would be based around someone intentionally trying to murder him, but not until I get the, uh, the charges of like, what a murder, a murdered politician is, which at this point is, let's see what I have in here. I'm actually changing this right now. An actual murder, minimum 50 years in prison and a $3 million fine as a minimum. Yeah, exactly. Sloan's permit condition. Any SBS that takes him down. Yeah, I know technically like murder is supposed to be something that's like kind of a hut charge and shouldn't be negotiated down. But we all saw kind of what happened with Jaeger when, when they negotiated down to seven years for the murder of a character. That's not okay. Uh, so specifically in the legislation that I'm putting through is like, there is a minimum 50 year sentence. It's aggressive. Like, I think it would be hilarious for them to give like a 125 year sentence. If, if, if like, if someone is permed in this kind of capacity, like if Sloan dies, here's a perfect example. If Sloan dies, then maybe Sloan's brother does come to the city, right? I think that's, that's all that makes sense. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't know what that would look like, but, but then the murder, the murder of somebody who, who was in this position, they, they do 125 years in prison and they have to pay $5 million. It would like, could you imagine if, um, <laughs> clone silly <laughs> clone makes sense um but yeah like right now the lore doesn't support him having a brother <laughs> yeah. 
there there is lore however for a character named jonah and and i haven't talked about jonah but jonah worked for one of the competitors of sloan's companies and actually so for those who know the the little bit of lore that sloan has a uh, an implant in the back of his neck called a synaptic uh, synap uh, enhanced synaptic link chip and it's some of the technology that he and this other guy co-developed together for the purpose of being able to like revolutionize healthcare. And um, so like only, there are the only two people who have it. And um, and so like the possibility would be like, Jonah comes to the city because he and Sloan, were, they, they were college roommates and they were really close friends. And like, uh, they actually have a very similar background. The only difference is that the, the lore on Jonah, and this is what I was saying earlier, like Sloan doesn't remember some of this stuff yet. Um, they actually work together on some like top secret stuff um, that I, I don't know how much more I want to reveal yet. The chip is hiding something. I'll put it that way. The chip is hiding some series of events that occurred, which is why Sloan is really good at some of the things he's good at. He just thinks it's like a natural inclination. But the fact of the matter is like he actually worked in this capacity for a few years and then it was overwritten with memories that he has about working for the governor of San Andreas. Um, so for him, they're just memories, but the reality is there's actually some events that have happened that he doesn't remember yet. And so I'm trying to figure out like a time at which it makes sense for those memories to come back. I've started to RP this out a little bit through like dreams. There are certain dreams where he remembers bits of information. Um, he remembers like the name Apollo, um, which is interestingly enough that like the business name that he's, he's developed is because it is associated with this really positive memory um, or this really positive word association that he doesn't know where it comes from, but he just knows that it it's like associated with good. And then he has this, this obverse word ghost that like is terrifying to him for some reason. And he doesn't know why ghost is terrifying, but he also knows he has like this, this recurring memory slash dream that he'll wake up from every once in a while where he's sitting in a dark room, um, where there are four figures, um, two of them directly in front of him and he can kind of see their faces and then two, two people further back. Um, that are completely just hidden by the shadows. Uh, and he's being beaten in a chair and it's, it's basically a black site. Um, and so, so I think the way this is going to pan out because McConnell who plays, um, uh, bench guy who now we've met in character, um, which we've kind of been looking for a reason to, but McConnell who plays bench guy and Booba and, and, um, um, I don't think I've met forcer yet, but I know Kiwo OOC um are trying to you know do the F fib stuff and sloan's helping uh, establish the fib or re-establish the fib through various legislation and programs and things that we're trying to get support from the senate on uh and and some of that is like equipment and i think one of the requests was a black site from um from bubo um i think it'd be really cool if we can establish a black site that's in like a storefront <laughs> or something uh i think that would be cool um, so on the outside, it looks like a storefront, but no one can ever go in cause it's always closed. And then, and then like only we have access to it or something. Um, I think that would be dope. Um, and then, uh, that would be like the unlock because it would be like a flashback to the event that happened, um, for Sloan to be back in a black site. Um, because it'd be the first time he's been in a black site since the actual event happened that made, made him lose his memory. But there's some deep lore there that like at this point there's no reason for it to come out but yeah anyway if he did die if he did perma and some of this story did kind of reveal itself like the follow-up character could be that jonah came to a, to avenge or or complete the work or whatever it was um because they very much have uh, similar personalities they, they were in in work for the same reasons What are these numbers? Radio stations. Anyway, we'll wait here till storm. 
uh, questions. This is a good time for chat engagement. What questions do y'all have? Things that I can say, things that I can't say. How funny it would be if, if Sloane's uh, brother's name was like Tyrone, Tyrone Kelly. Sloane and Tyrone. Because remember, he's in, the, he's in the foster system. I guess it wouldn't be Kelly. It could be literally anybody else. But foster siblings not having the same kind of goals, I guess, would be interesting. I do use a voice changer, by the way, to, to deepen Sloane's voice a lot. This is my natural voice. It's a lot higher, <laughs> surprisingly. Uh, but yeah, um, for the sake of having character depth, we drop it low. And now you guys have heard my squeaky voice. 30 year old squeaky voice. 34 year old squeaky voice. <laughs> that's good sammy I'm, I'm glad yeah i i hope it's a different kind of rp it's a, it's a lot more slow burn it's uh it's a lot less um engaging than like the the wild helicopter rides and and trying to do jobs and that kind of stuff but uh yeah it's, it's fun stuff, nonetheless, to, to kind of bring different perspective. I never expect, expect to get to, like, clean boy level of anything, but it'd be super cool if we can just enable really fun RP for other people. So, good question, Demi. How would Sloan react if he discovers the quote real and all the the real Mickey and all the embezzling stuff? Uh, I thought Sloan knew about it. No, so Sloan doesn't really know about it. Um, the the character of Sloan who was created was created with a lot more moral standard than than uh, the work I was doing OOC. Um, so OOC, obviously, I know about it because I helped him embezzle a large sum of money through Tartarus. Um, and and those, uh, actually, this is, I can show you all that as well. The, the Tartarus contracts and Tartarus budgets are also kind of, um, I'll say, they'll be hard to, to push. So same thing for them. 
like there's easily room to pay them more um this is a place that zay probably needs to get a little more specific on stuff because some of these things he does not need to be requesting month after month um like bullet club training may or may not need to be a, mo a monthly or, or weekly kind of training thing they certainly don't need this kind of equipment every month um the legal retainers could get them in trouble if they're not actually talking to lawyers or paying lawyers um this stuff is probably okay it's, it's kind of generic this is a fake line item to the the active duty certification is is a line item that's fake <laughs> the advanced driving certification also kind of fake but at the same time um oh did i just have oh, i got logged out got it um it, it was uh the goal of that one was to have um basically i thought that they needed to go to driving school <laughs> uh or a way in which to get them access to drift stuff um but they never did anything with it so he's just kind of like continuously charging the same thing monthly which is dangerous because when they come back and want to look at this cost sheet it should change from month to month and part of this is um just jet ski not really being um a hundred percent up to date on what he should be doing there were additional things that I added in here if they wanted to, which would be like requesting vehicles and that kind of stuff. I think that could be even more dangerous because if you don't actually have the vehicles to show for it, then it just looks like embezzlement. Um, I now understand OOC that he needs to somehow get another 10 million out of the state account, which is gonna be impossible. Um, there's no room to add in a $10 million line item or series of line items that can be justified. So, uh, it's going to be up to jet ski to figure out how he wants to do that. I am not helping him OOC, but no Sloan doesn't know about it. Um, to answer the question, um, and, and I think this is going to be a win thing, Demi more than an, 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 an if, um, when he figures out about it, he's going to have to do something about it. Um, unless there's only one circumstance that this would, this would not be the case. And Blau doesn't know it. Mickey doesn't know it. This goes back to the lore where if it's for the greater good, sometimes legal things or illegal things are necessary. So again, for the example of, of like stealing an EpiPen to save someone's life. Is a necessity, like a nece uh, let me re step back because I'm jumbling my words. It's a necessary quote evil for the sake of good. In this case, like, so Sloan's background is, is, you know, he stole the Abby pen to save his sister's life and then was charged for it. And he just accepted that that was a reality for her safety. If Blau or if Mickey came to Sloan and, and said, I've been embezzling but you need to know that the reason I'm doing it is because there is a super terrorist that told me that if I don't embezzle $20 million, he's going to blow up the city. Sloan would help. However, if what happens instead, and this is kind of the way the RP is going, um, if instead Sloan finds out that it looks like he's embezzling money, um, just for personal gain, um, as to avoid being an accessory to it, he would have to help with the investigation. So there are conditions on helping Mickey. I built that into the character, but they have to be discovered. Nobody leaked that to Blau. He's got to figure this out. He needs to have more conversations with, with Sloan. Uh, 
it would also mean Blau doing some slow burn RP, which he's not super great at. But I hope that there has been a show of good faith that Sloan is willing to work a little on some of this stuff. Oh, that reminds me. Yeah, I've, I've tried to like, <laughs> this is, this is the <laughs> me, Apollos, the streamer. I want to help Blau out. <laughs> um, Sloan, the character has some conditions that he has to play by. And I'll continue to help Blau out. Um, it was, it was unfortunate that he name dropped Kelly um with Lang for the for the passport things because that's that was like forced lore about like Sloan being someone who would engage in illegal activity um which is why like I hard went at, like I went in both um in discord and in game to say hey this is a one time thing I got you these as a favor because Mr Mr Buddha is helping out with the FIB like I had to like create that dividing line to say like I can't do this forever but then I also said at the same time if the if the business exists I could do this kind of stuff more easily so I might have shot myself in the foot I kind of needed to retcon that but whoops And honestly, those kinds of interactions shouldn't happen in the courthouse because there's too many ears. Uh, I forgot my Prio renews tomorrow. <laughs> Honestly, the amount of RP that we've gotten from it, it's totally worth it. To be able to get in, like, semi-reasonably... Uh, today's agenda, Sloan has a meeting with Nancy Drew at three o'clock, so in 50 minutes. I will confess it is with intention that Sloan is meeting Nancy. I feel like though, the way Kate RPs um, Nancy and Kate also being really brilliant. There are so many brilliant women in this server. Um, it'll be hard for like, she's she's so smart and, and like probably much more cautious. It'd be interesting to see what information she gives to Sloan, if anything. It's like actually usable.
Also, BRB chat. I'm gonna go grab some water. I've returned water in hand and conversation with spouse. stay in the black outfit because I think it's fitting. I need to have a conversation with Booba uh, about putting together a proposal for a stealth heli. Yo, are you good? Yep, that pine just fell. All right.
Was that Xavier? The other Xavier? Valentine? Oh, it's probably because I'm still in uh, entire screen mode. Better now? Hopefully. Whoops. I was not paying attention to that light. Worst part of Civ RP is waiting at lights. Following law. There's what I mean by like my car just occasionally will just die. There's like no reason for it. Hello, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Can I? What's going on here? Ew. Can't even get out. I'm like frozen. This is the worst. What happened? game is frozen. Problem is I can't even quit out. Like it's not recognizing my All right, let's hard quit out of 5M. Forced head pop here. And hope that the Q is not the worst. Oh, great.
<laughs> okay. What is happening? I, okay, here we go. I have n what? <laughs> what is happening? I can't get back up. Game be bugged. There we go. That was strange. <laughs> Randomly getting knocked down. That was the weirdest. about to meet with DW instead of Nancy. Sorry, y'all. Hello, Nancy, can you hear me? Hear me? Oh, I oh, hear myself. I hear myself. You hear me now? I can indeed. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I am very well. Uh, wondering if you still want to meet today. Uh, yes, we have some Cerberus business to get to, and then um, after that, I would be happy to meet with you. Perfect. I have a meeting with Mr. Dean Watson at three o'clock at the FIB building, but we'll be free after that as well. Okay, sounds good. Let's uh, keep in touch, okay? Sounds good. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Let's screw with copper real quick. She hung up on me. <laughs> Hello. How's it going? Guess this time. 
Can you hear me? I can hear you. I just assume it. Uh, supposing so. I mean, from our point of view, we did what we can. Indeed. I, um... I mean, spin this off in a very good way. Yes, we'll see how it yeah. unfolds. Well, <laughs> okay. If you dump, um, I just dump some EMS of okay for stupidity. You know what's interesting is I um, I messaged Copper this morning. Uh, uh -huh. She had she had twatted out about um, something about cops are good or cops are cool or something, and I said prove it. And uh -huh. we had a discourse back and forth about, she goes, you must not be in that involved and so on and so forth. And then, uh, they're at a raid. This is the kind of stuff that makes me really say, do you, do you really think, uh, cops are quote, cool at war mm -hmm. with the EMS? Oh, it's chaos. I fucking hate this. The SA, uh, what is it, SASPD or San Andreas? San Andreas State Street Police. Police. SASP? Yeah. I'm gonna, gonna wait, Mark, a, I'll be with you in a moment. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally every day that I'm on duty, I want to quit. So. Smile. Yeah. Smile. Mm -hmm. And it just. I'm trying my best to boost morale and not make EMS try and do dumb shit. Speaking of which, we're giving away gold pans morale. Neat. Yeah. So I'm gonna ask me for a hundred. Well, best of luck. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I have to I have to put together a couple of different proposals I think coming up. Um, so you'll probably see more coming through. Mm -hmm. Uh, any progress on hiring players? Because literally, I have nobody. I was around in AU today. <laughs> nothing. Uh, I have sent um, Mickey Kyle Avalay's information. Um, now it's just honestly getting him on. Um, I think there are a couple more that we needed to maybe make considerations for, but I don't know who they are, what their possibility of incoming is. But something needs to happen. Two deputy mayors is not going to make it work. Yeah, two deputy mayors, especially. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna try. When I see Alex, I'm gonna get Alex up to speed on PD budget. I feel like take it on. Because I, yeah, it, it's impossible for me to do every budget. Yeah, and it's unreasonable. It is entirely. I mean, I can do it for a little bit, but we, I'm gonna get Alex up to speed. But it shouldn't, that's, that's kind of what I meant by like, we should hire an accountant, someone whose responsibility it is to make all of the reviews and make sure like things aren't absolutely outrageous. And then they can just pass on the numbers. That's the kind of, I think the way it should be someone who's yeah. got that kind of visibility. I mean, having an accountant, having the deputy mayor's do it. Listen, I don't, okay. Here's the thing. It's not within my responsibilities. Do we need to hire out when there are deputy mayors who are willing able to do it that's that's the thing willing to do it i'm listen i'm really willing to do it not yeah, every but, single one right but mila got completely burnt out to the point that she retired as deputy mayor yeah that was on pd budget that's that's where i say let's let's just hire somebody who we're paying to to actually take care of it then they can't claim i've been burnt out you're literally hired to do this work I mean, it's easier said than done as well. Zebras can't. Zebras is literally the business in the state. I can't get an accountant to stay for more than three months. Yeah, but Cerberus, I think, is probably a, a major issue. Oh, Cerberus is, is basically... All right. They've got a lot of business. It's basically the equivalent of the state account for Cerberus. Right. And they have one accountant do it. And they quit. Like, they drop... I have no sympathy for that. Yeah. I'm just saying, one accountant to do everything, one word. Just like one deputy everything, one word. Yeah. 
Yeah. Sorry, I was changing my tie. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens in it. Yeah, I, I am uh, a big proponent of, again, hiring the right people to do the work. If it's state work that's getting done, then there's no reason it shouldn't be state funded. That's that's kind mm -hmm. of like, let the deputies continue to do the deputy work. If we need to hire external people who are going to do the job and do it well, let's, let's hire those people. I'm sure somebody who wants the responsibility of looking over state funds would be available. We just need to make sure that person is vetted well. Anyway, discussion for another time, perhaps. Yeah, let's let's focus on this prison, I guess. Perfect. I'm I actually am going into a meeting with um, the FIB in about twenty eight minutes, so this will be interesting. Yeah. Unrelated to the prison, but um, should probably be discussed nonetheless. Mhm. Mm yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm Parker. Gonna, one set. All right. I'm gonna Play. run so I can take care of a couple things before this then. All right, let's get a bit. Alright, man. Later. Uh, good question, Phobia. There, it's. I mean, it really is as simple as I was in his chat uh, when he was running for mayor, and uh, the first day kept a very detailed record of all of the things that he said he would do, and then um, I dropped it in the general chat channel. Uh, and tagged him and then um, uh, it was like maybe a few days later that like I continued doing the same thing they decided to create a, a, a specific channel for like Mickey's um, campaign team a bunch of people got invested and involved they were really interested in doing the same thing um, or similar things I worked with some really cool people in, in the, um, the discord um, and then, uh, honestly, what it just kind of came down to was, uh, you know, I have a, an interest and, and experience enough to actually like put some of the things that he wanted to do in place. Um, I drafted up the first version of the legislation and made it look really cool from an RP perspective. There was no reason for it to look the way that it did in, in reality. So we've kind of stopped doing that stuff for the sake of making it actually work in the server. But, um, it was cool stuff to show on stream. It, it like, I mean, the idea was like, it was helping him drive attention and revenue, um, as a streamer. And, uh, obviously he was elected mayor. And so I equate that to a lot of the work that we collectively as a, as a OOC team did together. Uh, and then, um, then he messaged me in the chat and was like, Hey, do you want to work, uh, in this kind of capacity? Um, and then I said, yes, of course, I think it'd be really great. Uh, and then we never really had the intention of it going this far as having like a character in no pixel. It was all going to be OOC stuff. But then um, people kept asking for like more views on the stuff that I was doing. And I wasn't going to just start like streaming to show people what I was working on. Like that would be so boring and no one would watch it. And then someone was like, you should get a character. And that started us down this path, both Blau and I for like trying to get approved i had previously applied for no pixel under like a very different character set like trying to do rp in a very different way um and those applications never got through and then when we put in this application it was like i don't know maybe maybe a day later that it got approved obviously he i'm sure he had to like um talk to everybody and and ensure that it was like oh yeah we're trying to do this from a slightly different perspective than the average show but um it has turned into some really cool RP um, for a server that otherwise has not seen this kind of stuff before. Great question, though. Now it's time to drive back home because the FIB building is literally next to the apartments. So the first version of the character that I wanted to do, Rose, was somebody who would have been more like a musician. And I've just kind of incorporated some of those things into this character, and you've seen some of it RP out with Odessa. Um, 
but like uh, the fact that I have a keyboard under my desk uh, and I have a way to hook it up and actually like play the sounds in game. Uh, and so I can, I can actually play the piano, um, in game if I wanted to, um, the first version of the character, if you've ever seen the movie, August rush was kind of going to be based on that, where like he heard music in, in the city and then was able to like compose these pieces out of the sounds. And so it was going to be based on like recording sound samples and then looping them and like turning them into full compositions. Uh, but like doing it live with people, um, and building RP around that. Um, I think the scope of that was probably pretty far outside of like the realm of reason. Um, I think I'm going the wrong way here. It doesn't matter. Um, and so they, they were like, no, thanks. Uh, choose something else, which is fine. Uh, and then the next version of it was kind of this character, but more focused on law, um, rather than politics. Um, but there was no tie to the mayor. It was just kind of like trying to come in and like being a courthouse hang around and trying to like find a way in. Um, and then like literally this, like having the political in skipped about 18 steps. And literally I was able to like just jump in with some of the original scope of that idea. Um, and I'm still a courthouse hang around, but for different reasons. Now it's not like because I have an interest in law, it's because, because I have an interest in making change and being someone who actually is like driving change. So the, uh, the resume that, that I built for Sloan, um, as like a, it's actually based off of one that I saw for Hillary Clinton of all, uh, of all people. It's kind of funny. Um, it's, uh, it's more based on, um, like what a true politician would be interested in and kind of focused on. And, uh, and I actually put that in my application so they could look at it. Uh, but like the way I, I, called Sloan a change agent um, is something that I still kind of hold to is like I want to drive change whether or not it's within the realm of possibility or not is kind of TBD but I like the idea of change agency I'm cutting through here <laughs> Here we go. I don't have keys to this building yet, so I can't go in. Well, I mean, I could, but I don't want to. Playing the character as somebody who... Um, does the right thing most of the time. Uh, let's look at while we're waiting for this meeting to happen. I'm sure it will. Um, that's where Booba parks though. <laughs> uh, let's look at this document. Okay, so here is the resume that I put together for Sloan. We'll zoom in. Oh my God, not like that. Maybe can we zoom in just a little? Just a little, nope, what happened? 
There we go. So, um, political activist, analyst, technologist, innovator, uh, strategist, operations, pro people, person, dog lover, coffee enthusiast, food snob, change champion. It was like trying to find a way to like incorporate all of these things all into one was very difficult, but, uh, here's kind of the way I did it. So, uh, I put experience working for the campaign. This is just kind of like justification for why I should be able to soft meta. Um, or like why that existed, at least in the first place. Uh, then the, the work that I did for the governor's office, uh, in a made up city in, uh, San Andreas. Um, then, uh, the R and D work I did with Marheed Lockton, um, which is kind of what, um, is based off of the Lockheed Martin stuff. And then what I want to do with my company and then like the tech side of things. And then, um, there's, there's my education, business analytics for my, for my masters and then, uh, international studies and, uh, minor in politics or political science, uh, both from the university of San Andreas. So I'm, I'm claiming to be very well educated though. In reality, I'm only moderately educated. I Google a lot of things. Um, yeah, I mean, for the most part, I mean, it's, it's like just again, trying to like build in all of these things into a bunch of different places. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Rose, all of the buzzwords. Nope, not what I meant to do. There we go. But yeah, it's like the, the whole premise of like what, what Sloan does is a little bit of everything, uh, and is pretty good at most of it. Or good enough to be dangerous. The one thing that I didn't do was focus too much on the law. And most of that is like, as a political person, you just kind of learn the legal stuff. There's Booba. Sloan, uh, the meeting might be delayed. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if you are aware of what's going on in the prison. Uh, yes. Um, very aware. We got a list of demands this morning. Right. Okay. Uh, well, I might be needed there. Okay. What, what is the full scope of what's going on? Have they decided not to try and negotiate further? Uh, I I think there's a meeting that is being set up, but no, we're planning on breaching. Oh, okay. All right. Well, never mind yeah. then. So it's gonna be it's gonna be something. Interesting. Okay. But I, I I'm not sure if this meeting is gonna happen in 15. I'm sure it's gonna end up being later. Cool. That's I fine. will. I'll be. I'll, I'll. I'll text right now and let them know or ask them if they want to delay it. But I need to go, I need to go. Actually, can you drive me down to LSIA? Yeah, absolutely. And I need to park my car down in the underhang. I'll just come back up here. Sounds good. I'll be right back.
trying to get out of here is the worst. Ugh. Ugh. Let me, uh, actually, oh, wait, I need to get back and I'll be right back one more time. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Just break out my back window, no big deal. We need to, we need to have better parking. Actually, do you know if would we be able to use the, the mayor's helicopter? The mayor is that something you have, have access to? Say again. We don't yet have have a helicopter. Oh, you don't? Oh, okay. Oh God. You good? Uh, yes. Maybe not. This is fine, right? I'm riding with an officer. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Yeah, I was, I was in an accident a few days ago uh, and am still recovering. Oh, no, no problem. You all right? Yeah, um, I had a run in with Cy Carter. Oh. Should I run red lights? Yeah, yeah just go. OK. Yeah, he uh, he T-boned me at like 300 miles an hour, roughly. And, uh, and then when he got up from being on the ground, he punched me in the face repeatedly. So I'm a little stressed about driving. All right. Well, uh, don't worry about it. You're going to be all right. Hey, thanks. That's really encouraging. We do need to get the Mayo helicopter though. Like soon. Yeah. And, and then the FIB one. Yep. Is this something I should ride along for or no? Uh, for the helicopter? Well, no, I'm just taking the helicopter to uh, the building. That oh, way, gotcha. when it were needed, it's there. Understood. I went the wrong way. I'll go this way. I'm still learning these roads. Yeah, it's all right. You'll get there. Oh, oh. oh God. I uh, can do it. You got to go back. Yeah, down Davis. Uh, other way. I am not a good driver. It's all right. I wasn't when I first started driving either. I ran over two cops and got two times attempted murder of a government employee. Oh, oh wow. Yep. Yeah, well, I'll be following all the rules on the way back. Which way? Left, right? Left, I'll go here. This car also goes way faster than I'm used to driving, so that's cool. Does it? It does. Yeah, I mean, I, I drive the speed limit. All right, go into that gate up there and then just go all the way back. Ah, yes, I see on my uh, GPS a uh, green airplane. I take it. That's where yep, we're going. Yep, that's it. I need to discuss with you uh, clearance stuff at some point. Yes, yeah, we, we can do that. All right, uh, okay. I'll see you back at the... Actually, you know what? Let's just... Uh, we might have to call the meeting off for now. I will, I'll will. i reach out to you when it's going to take place. Okay, sounds good. I'll be around. All right, see you, Mr. Kelly. Later. Oh, God. Yeah, slow driving is the worst. I hate driving in this game. It is terrible. Even though I drive controller, like... I have it mapped two different ways. I have it mapped for the right trigger to be my accelerator and then also um, just pushing forward. I 
feel weird about like, I think you gotta go at least 35. Hard to get exactly right. Nope. 31, there we go. I'll call that a win. Ah, the stress is off now. When I'm driving a reasonable speed limit, everything's fine. Sure, just drive across two lanes. If I was like at all good with playing PC, I would probably use PC uh, controls, but I suck at video gaming, period. I haven't even had an Xbox in like eight years. Also, the this controller thing, you have to remap it yourself. Uh, so you have to, like, choose what configuration or layout you want. Ow. Uh, and, um, so for, like, the purposes of RP, the majority of what I use having, like, mapped on the sticks is fine. Um, there are some things that don't make sense, though. Like, driving, I really probably need a very different configuration than the one I use. And you can actually map up to, like, four of them. Liv, did you have in chat at all? Oh, okay. We're just doing that, huh? What's happening? This is also one of those times, like, I wish I could turn down my controller sensitivity uh, for, like, steering versus, like, walking. It needs different sensitivities. Yeah, it, it probably would. I've got some some unique things mapped to my controller that are hotkeys that don't work with keyboard as easily, though. Like some some quick commands, basically, for um, like clearing things. And, and like I don't do any combat for the most part. So like I like being able to remove those combat things. Now, I have them mapped, but they're harder to use. Um, Except for when I accidentally bump the the uh, the right bumper and like kick somebody, I'm in the wrong area. Uh-oh, they got the jets out.
I feel better about my car now. I suppose the best bet, honestly, would just be able to, like, or I guess I should, um, reasonably just learn to play keyboard and mouse, but I don't, don't want to do it. <laughs> I, I also don't know how to do the like like I guess that's how <laughs> you gotta you gotta hold both at the same time to to move in a singular direction I literally just figured that out in the moment oh thanks Rose no one's watching for my amazing gameplay <laughs> My incredible god tier GTA gameplay that's based off of mostly me talking to random people and stirring the pot in very different ways, freaking people out. No, it's it's fine, Rose. You've you've been nothing but honest with me so far, and I appreciate it, and that's why I modded you. That's what I need. Honesty, accountability, reliability. I wish they had a better, like, navy version of this suit rather than black. I would prefer to be uh, walking around in navy. Black just looks so terribly official. Yes, that is exactly right. Now that you have the sword, it's your responsibility to bully me. I'll tell you the same thing I told Blau. I brought you into this world. I can take you out. <laughs> I actually am just changing my mind literally as they're talking. Let me see if there's other stuff. Suit wise.
both ways across the street. Plus one. Murphy wearing the white suit for anybody that was here for that. And then talking about being Miami Vice kind of stuff or cocaine dealer. That was the dumbest. Okay, let's see. Colors on the jacket. You do a gray suit, brown suit. See, that's the problem. Don't match up. Ah, there we go. Gray suit. That seems slightly less casual, but the tie doesn't work. Yes. I'm here for this. I think my pants are slightly different colored, but I'm not worried about it. Still wish there were navy pants. Shoes also look huge. They're like clown shoes. Everybody in the city is 5'10", but they wear a size 14. This is reasonable for giant feet. No more helmet? Uh, not for now. I know what day it is. Well, that's good. How are you feeling? Uh, some pain, but what can I do at this point, you know? Self-medicate? With what? <laughs> you tell me. Ah, uh, the city needs me. I am medicating, then that's a problem. Right. Yes, of course. So I grin and bear it. Until I can't. Then we'll see what happens. What's on the agenda, Mr. Kelly? Well, I was supposed to have a meeting with um, the FIB. Uh, which got pushed due to a prison riot. Uh, probably because of, let me guess, Mr. Rickenbacker, since he was sentenced to life in prison along with Gladys Berry, and I believe Jerry Atrix last night. I was there for that, that, uh, sentencing. Have you looked at the news this morning? Is it on LSPN? Yes, ma'am. Inmates take Bolingbroke. Yep. Within hours of Mel, Rickenbacker, Gladys Berry, and geriatrics being sentenced to life. Imprisonment within the walls of Bolingbroke Prison. Prisoners led a violent insurrection to control of the institution. Oh my god. They communicated with the mayor's office this morning that they had a list of demands for a peaceful resolution. We met with Sheriff Pred and the DOC, and the decision mm -hmm. was made from an executive level just to um, quell the insurrection. 
Okay, what do you mean by quell? Given to demand or? Oh no, a full-fledged police assault oh. force. Okay, got it, got it. That's that's okay. Is that happening today? Right now. Oh my god. Oh my god. Blood will be shed today. Because rather than negotiate, egos got in the way. Stir the pot, y'all. He'll be fine. Um. Did you try calling him? I don't disturb him during work. I don't bother people at all, or especially while they're working. Des, if this is as bad as people think it is, you should call him. I don't even know if he'll be participating. will be fine you know he's he's a busy person he's 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 a busy person it's fine of course he wouldn't pick up he's 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 a cop everything's fine everything's fine Adessa, watch the video Cornelius Snufflepuss. Oh my god. How did they get this? Fuck. Hola. Hello, are you? Hey. Have you ever seen Nalit? No, I've not. Mm -hmm. Oh shit, I forgot how to meet someone today. Well, 
Whoops. Whoops. It's in an hour. You want to be there? This little nano sensor shit. Uh, possibly. I have a couple meetings that got pushed back because of the prison stuff. Hmm. I think Pred's now hosted. Well, You're I mean, it's happening oh, right yeah. now. Oh, uh, I got a call from a lifer today. Yeah, a lifer called me, said that they are the new captain, and they have, they want to speak to you to ensure a safe transfer of the prison back to the state. So we got to meet with Mickey. Smile. It's too late <sighs> now. Yep. Oh well. Oh. Uh... Blood will be shed. Yep. It's unfortunate. Right. Right. Everything will be fine. Everything will be a okay. Excuse me. I RP is Protestant. I guess technically I am. I think for the sake of this, it makes sense. What's the, uh, what's the emote for, like, adjusting? Adjust. <laughs> Here we go. Repeat appropriately. Appropriately. Speak with words. Not. Yeah, I've seen you smoke before. What am I supposed to think? Hmm? Things could have been different. How so? Do you not know Mel? Of course not. You don't know what that old man is capable of. Nope. Just a harmless old man within hours of being in prison for life 
orchestrates this type of shit. Tell me how this could have been stopped. Please tell me. Enlighten me. I don't know that it could have been stopped, but I don't think it had to result this way. They reached out. They wanted to end peacefully, at least for a moment. What were their demands? They wanted to be heard. They wanted to taste freedom and they wanted to be not held in ad sec in response to what has happened. Unreasonable demands, certainly, but at least they were willing to negotiate. Those demands you think that the state would have given to them? Come on. Of course not. But what began as a conversation should not end in sheer bloodshed. They do realize that police are going to die today. I'm well aware. Well aware, Slow. All right, what do we want to do? cops could die today. I'm very aware. And all I can do is wait. I'm not going to have a breakdown. I'm not. This is the career he chose. This they chose. So be it. So be it. Stupid, why'd I get involved with a fucking cop? Could have been an accountant. Could have been a businessman. No, it had to be a fucking cop. Politician? <sighs> that can be just as bad as a cop. <laughs> What's up, Fate? Prison riot. Politician. <laughs> that would be absolutely hypocritical of me, considering I was one at one point. And I have what to go rest in a bit, which sucks for me. Uh, Photoshop is the worst sometimes. Yeah, Mill took over the prison. Right, I have to, um... 
I will compose myself. I have to rest. You email me if anything is slow. Yes, ma'am. I'll keep you informed. He'll be okay. Please. Yeah, he better. Sorry, y'all. I'm um, trying to get this in, up the Im imager. Also, by the way, because the French passport was busted, that's the one they got. <laughs>
Oh, dang it. Why didn't it work? I'm proud of you. Why? Did you see what you did? Oh, I mean, it didn't work for whatever reason. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, it's alright. Hey! How you doing? It's it. Hi. I mean, you should try, try bet and it's sounds alone. Say what? Try better next time, I guess. Try try better? Okay, I'll do that. I'll just I'll just do the same thing but better. I mean that's how you fix all problems, right? Yes, that's how I fix all problems. By doing better. Exactly. Proud of you. Thanks, I'll try again. I'm new. Don't judge me. I mean, yeah. Yeah, ShareX is your best friend to download on your phone. Thank you. Yeah, if you get ShareX on your phone, it's going to be your best friend. It will just be perfect. Perfect. I have yeah. acquired it. No worries. In a bit. Thanks. Okay, bye. Seems to have a bit more time. Um, I have to check on something, but I'll be back. Okay, I'll be here. So, did Blau just go live? Yes. <laughs> I'll go live. He said he would go live an hour ago. And he's not starting with this. Uh, Fate, just DM me what it's supposed to be like. I don't know why this is not working. Right, so what's what is what you can't just copy the link? Why does it not look like that? That's because it's an album, isn't it? Not the individual one. Sorry, y'all. I'm figuring this out. Uh, 
I don't know what, I really honestly don't know how this is working because this is the same format that I used to print the books. Get the books printed at least. Take your time. I'm just trying to stir the pot in a very political way. free now as well if you'd like to meet yeah whereabouts are you uh i'm at the courthouse okay um would you like to meet in one of the server's offices sure we can do that i'll head that way now. Right. all right i'll meet you in the lobby sounds good thank you all right bye 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 and sloan will run actually no he'll take his car Because I need to stop avoiding car RP. Car P, as it's called. Okay, sorry. I was uh, on my other screen. Okay, wait, how, what, like, what did you do to get that? That's the question. Is there just like some natural short link? Mr. Dolph, how are Hello. you? Hello. Hey, what's good, man? I'm good. How are you? I am very well. Good, good, good. Hey, I'm just calling you. I don't hope you don't mind calling you. So it's regarding the radio stuff. Yeah, um, Obviously, I'm, I'm artist in the city, and I got paid from the the recent um, submissions, and I thank you for that. Appreciate that. But I'm calling for clarification on producers. Are yes. producers still going to get the payment, or is that going to change? As long as it's been reported, they should. Yes. Okay, cool. Because I I forgot to report that the fact that I produced the songs on the last radio. So should I submit it within the next month? Uh, yeah. As long so anything that was within the July August time frame is fine to be reported uh, as as newly. I guess newly created. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anything that was backdated is still capped at 50, 50 K. So if it was, okay, before... cool. Yeah. But it was, it was August. It was like, whatever, whatever got okay. into the radio a week ago, it was that launch. So should I, should I fill in a new okay. document and send that over? Yeah, I would. Uh, and you can okay. send it to AU. Um, he's uh, yes. still sending those things to Mickey. Um, and otherwise should be good. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, man. I appreciate this, man. Your work's awesome. And you've been doing a great thing for the city. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate that, man. I'm, I'm here to serve. Thank you, man. Thank you. So, oh, sorry. One sec. One more thing yeah. on the document. Should I put in there like instead of artist? Should I put producer? Is that, is that how it works? Uh, that's a good clarification for recording purposes. Um, yeah. I mean, if if we ever needed to come back and audit anything, that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I will do that. Awesome. Perfect. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate okay. it. Take care. Have a good day. Have a good day. Peace. Yeah. Peace. Peace. Bye. Bye.
Hello, Ms. Drew. Hello, Sloan. How are you? I'm fine. Somehow I've found myself in the position of being a financier, and I don't want to be. <laughs> Welcome. Feel free to go to a clean getaway. Okay. Clean getaway. Wow, you change fast. I very quick. Is it because I'm in a suit? You felt like you needed to class yep. it up? I usually do this for meetings. Mickey made fun of me the other day because I was, uh, I came in on Sunday and I was dressed casually. I get shit if I sit down at one of these tables without wearing a suit. So, I mean, I work for Lang and Dean, so it's, uh, if we show up to a meeting and we're not dressed appropriately, we get told to go change. Ah, fair. I, I have only heard their names. I have never met, uh, either of them. They are fantastic people. Well, that's good to hear. Um, well, first of all, uh, good to officially meet you. I appreciate you well, being, uh, responsive to my random text message and phone calls. Absolutely. I've heard a lot about you. Oh, have you? Mm hmm. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Good things. Are you certain? I am certain. Okay. That's good. Uh, I, sometimes I have these conversations and I ask the same thing and people are like, I don't know. And I don't know why, but okay. Um, well, good. Um, well, I have I have no reason to lie, so. Okay, good. Uh, I have a couple things I want to talk about, but before we do that, I wanted to give you the floor to ask any questions or anything specifically that you may want to know more about me and the things that I'm working on. Um, I know you're close with Bunny. She and I have, have been back and forth quite a lot on some of her awesome ideas, uh, things that I think would really be valuable to the city. Um, but, uh, I, I also know that there are probably other areas that have not been discussed. So I wanted to open the floor for you, uh, to ask away. I don't actually think I have any questions. I'm just more curious about like how you came to the city and how you came to work for Mickey and like the work that you're doing for him. Cause I've heard oh, that's great. a lot about the work you're doing, but I don't know. Please explain. <laughs> I don't have any questions, but give me your entire backstory. Basically, yeah. Okay, well, those are three I feel questions. Like you just kind of, I feel like you kind of appeared here one day. And, and you've all of a proactive. sudden, yes. Yeah. yeah I you've had been a very... very proactive with stuff in the city, which is fantastic, which is what I like to see. And I've, like I said, I've heard good things, but I'm just like, where did you come from? What are you doing and why? <laughs> yeah, those, those three questions have scared people shitless. Uh, I am in the city specifically because, um, the mayor requested me to be in the city. Simply put, um, okay. the things we were working on remotely were only good to a fault, uh, which was one perspective of somebody who maybe didn't have the entire picture. Um, you saw some of the legislation or heard of some of the legislation that we drafted prior to my coming here. Um, the issue when we got the response back from the Senate, um, was that some of these things don't make sense. <laughs> I'm putting it mildly. Uh, and so in, in response to the next round of legislation I was drafting, my, my question was, how can we ensure that this is not going to be too single-sided or, or what's going to be reasonable to the city? And then um, through a couple of our conversations back and forth, he just asked if I'd be willing to come and, and help. Um, so that's that's kind of the first answer. So I moved here uh, in late July or mid to late July. I'm drawing a blank for exactly when. With the purpose of helping at least close out the end of his previous administration, help in whatever ways I could with his reelection. Um, but I established my business and my practice independently of this administration, because what I've come to find out is that things, and this has actually come from my conversation with, with Bunny, 
things in this city have a way of just kind of dying at the end of a mayor's term. Um, and that's unfortunate. Uh, and so what I thought was more reasonable and realistic was there was a gap for some kind of advisory, whether we call it a political advisor or something else, a uh, government advisor, this literally could be any term. Um, there was a need for somebody to come in here who could help carry forth whatever action items were being worked on from administration to administration. That's not to say that things may or may not be necessary within certain administrations. Obviously it's up to the mayor who's in office to determine whether or not they find something valuable. But, um, I think as long as we have kind of the same mindset, uh, which is for the betterment of the city, putting it broadly, then no mayor should ever not want to continue what the previous mayor did. Example being paying artists in the city. We quote legislated it. Uh, it was approved by the Senate, but it's not in law. It's, it's more a programmatic approach to using state funding to pay out people who deserve to be paid in the city. Well, if the next mayor decides that they don't want to do that, they don't have to pay it out. Um, because it's not law. Uh, however, uh, and I think this is kind of important to something Bunny started in her administration, there are programs that the Senate has approved that Mickey just didn't know about. Things like um, getting government funding to have a grant for your business. Um, things that just, I, I think, and, and I don't want to say it's it's like the ball being dropped so much as it is just the attention span, maybe, of, of Mickey. Uh, this is, uh, he would hate me if I said this. Uh, I get but, it, though. It's, it's not even just the attention span of the city. The city, yes. That's how it works. As, yeah. as, as it is. But the truth is, there are things that need to continue past a singular administration. So what I've tried to do in establishing myself is make myself as agnostic as possible. Um, I, I certainly owe the mayor a lot and as much as one feels like they could because he, you know, helped me move me to the city. But I also have made it very clear that, um, while I'm appreciative, I don't work for him. I work for the city. Um, uh, it's just this, it's the city that pays me. It's, uh, it's like, you know, it comes through the conduit of his budget, but when his term ends, I don't go with Mickey, right? I, I stay in this position of advising whoever's next. Um, and that's, that's something that I've had to make a distinction in that until moving to the city was going to probably die with his term. Uh, there may not have been a need for my kind of position outside of, of his term. However, I think now there is, uh, a, a improving and necessary use case for at least continuing the work that we're doing. So does that answer that question? Yeah, it does. So you're, pro you're helping the city provide continuity between administrations. Putting it simply, yes. Hmm. Outside of that, I have found myself in the position of also consulting with like the FIB. Um, not really technically under the, the advisory of the mayor's office, but uh, just because there are things from a governmental perspective that I can be an asset for, helping them create programs, budgets, and, and getting those things submitted through the, uh, the processes. Uh, I've been working closely with the DOJ to ensure that they're able to continue to operate in a reasonable capacity. Some of that is within the advisory position of the mayor. Some of that is not so much. Um, the point is there is a need for some kind of continual political position that's not elected every 60 days. Yes, agreed. I don't know why someone hasn't tried to do this before me. Because it sounds kind of miserable. Why? I just not every, not, I can't, it's like, how do I put this? It takes a very specific type of person to do what you do. And I'm glad that you exist. Let's just say that. Well, that's good. I, I hope other people are glad that I exist as well. Uh, it mm -hmm. seems that I have made more enemies than I care to uh, within my first month of being here. That's fucking Los Angeles for you. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, there was a third question. I don't know if I answered it. I can't remember. Okay. Uh, well, uh, oh, the why, the why am I here, I guess. Yeah. Uh, for this very reason. Exactly. I, uh, <laughs> I, I have, uh, I have heard of the exploits of Los Santos prior to my time coming here. And, uh, it, it is a city that needs help. Um, and I think you put it well, um, it takes a special person to, to try and help. Um, 
what help is reasonable and actionable are two very different things to what is expected uh, or maybe desired. Um, so trying to be fair and honest and reasonable is at the top of my mind as I'm building out some of these action plans and items. I think the easy, the easy wins are things that are just like, where, you know, where can the state put its funding, um, back into programs that are going to benefit the city. The hard stuff is the stuff that requires Senate approval and, um, you know, maybe construction. Um, there's a lot of requests on both sides. Um, but, uh, and, you know, I'm happy to advocate where I can regardless. Assuming you, you have the year of the Senate at this point. Actually, no. Really? I, I have no idea how to get in touch with the Senate. That's surprising. Considering yeah. all the legislation and stuff you've passed. Yeah. Uh, it's, you would be surprised that, that maybe it's just because I'm very good at my job. It doesn't require me to actually have that kind of power, um, just to do my job. Well, I feel like your job would be a lot easier if you did hear of the Senate. Probably. Um, and, and maybe that's something to explore further. Um, however, I'm not trying to rock the boat too early, if that makes sense. Hmm conversation maybe for outside the city yeah fair enough all righty well what did you want to discuss with me or do you have any questions actually no, no i am more interested in how we might partner together for a specific project that falls in line with my funding side of things um right. i have been sitting down pretty regularly with various folks in the city who um, have basically the same fundamental problem and that, that is coming from the civilian population of, we don't have enough stuff to do. Um, it's run sanitation or stand at the counter of a restaurant and then talk to my friends, but I don't have much to do outside of that. Um, I attended the event for Damien a couple weeks ago that I know you helped out with, thanks to Bunny. She said that was your doing. Um, I, I understand that there are other things that have occurred at the arena that, that you may have uh, insight to. Um, the scope of that I, I need some more clarification on. Um, but I would like to, whether it's uh, in partnership specifically with the mayor's office or through the parks and rec department, which I think may be more reasonable, um, start helping you to put on various events uh, and then also just getting the, getting the word out uh, that things are happening in the city. Um, that's kind of the first thing. Um, but before I, I tried to like take the lead on any of that stuff, I felt a conversation was necessary because I don't know what's happening currently. Okay. So we, we've had the arena for just actually Cerberus arena and we had paintball and that was pretty much it for a long time. So I would do large scale tournament style events for okay. the city. Cool. Uh, those were super fun, but it ended up getting incredibly and competitive and people started ah. uh, yelling quite a lot and getting very entitled and shitty. So I stopped doing those events because it wasn't fun for me to spend two weeks of my life mm -hmm. on a really, really cool event and just people, uh, scream at me at the end of the day. Sure. So I stopped putting on those events. Um, I begged for construction to get other things, go-karts, et cetera. And finally, we did actually get go-karts, which was fantastic. Great. So we have two go-kart tracks in there, opened up go-karts for the city. And so then we did go-karts and pick up paintball games uh, to actually great success. Um, and then the arcade opened. And the arcade kind of killed our business. Everybody wanted to go to the arcade instead. Um, and they not only got shooting games but they also got driving games so the arena died very sadly now in recent month i want to say in months um a construction team has actually taken up the arena as kind of a pet project and now we have new things again we have monster trucks and we have demolition derby and we have the music festival um set up and everything like that oh, along fun. with the stages and everything that we uh, like I rent through my company Orpheus which operates in the, obviously out of the arena under Cerberus so we I'm trying to bring large scale events back um, I'm going to be 
monster truck rally this week, I believe. I tried to do it a couple weeks ago, but the entire city was at war. Like every gang in the city literally was at war. Um, and then the concert happened, so I didn't want to do like up two massive back events. So sure. now we're going to, I think, do it later this week. We're going to do monster trucks. And then the week or two after, we're going to do Demolition Derby. And so those things, once the event happens to launch them, are going to be available to the public to just pop in and do um, as a drop-in activity. The only thing is I have staff to run those. Right. Um, we had a staff who, you know, moved on to other things because nobody was coming to the arena anymore because they were all going to the arcade. Yeah. So, you know, I need to restaff it, but fingers crossed once it opens back up, we're, we'll be functional again. But I'd, I'd love to do stuff, especially with Parks and Rec, the head of the Parks and Rec department um, back when it first opened. Um, I'd love to work with Parks and Rec to be able to do stuff like that. I've been consistently working with PD to have events in there. Uh, just last week, we had the SDSO do like part of a scavenger hunt in there. This Thursday, we have the SDSO coming in for America Day to do monster trucks. America Day. America Day. Yeah, they'll be the first people doing monster trucks. And I think on the Friday, all going well, is when I'm going to be doing um, the actual event for the public. Gotcha. Well, that's but, cool. Yeah, it is cool. So but there's a lot more stuff in there and like more stuff coming every day. But I just, you know, it's it's a tough thing to run because you need a lot of staff in there. And the only way people can operate it is to have staff. Right. I like the arcade. Do you need help um, from like a financial standpoint to get staff? Uh, I wouldn't say no to that. I mean, usually with what I do <laughs> is I end up paying, like I'm not going to say no to funding. I usually end up paying a commission on whatever games they run. Right. So dependent on if it's paintball or if it's, you know, uh, go-karts, they just make a percentage. But gotcha. the, yeah, the arena is not an automated system. So right. Requires it, uh, people. It does, which is great, um, but it requires trusted people because otherwise I hired a guy who was like, I'm trustworthy, I'm great. And he then texted me like two days later and said, can I get a bunch of homeless people in the arena, inject them with metamorphine and force them to... Um, play paintball and kill each other. Wait, what? So I fired him. Yeah. Yeah. Naturally. Did you bring yeah. charges against this person? No, because he didn't do it. He just asked if he could. Yeah, it's still criminal. <laughs> it's criminal that he asked? Yeah, that, that kind of planning absolutely is criminal. Yeah, well, it's okay he he i think he went and committed terrorism after so he got charged with stuff anyways he's fine okay he's fair. fair i i am coming to the conclusion that i don't think people in this city quite realize the full scope of what is and isn't illegal no probably not especially because the laws are this and the police don't even get um charged for their like sheriff kyle pred for example literally murdered a woman and then Ocean dumped an EMS. And You're the second person to tell me this. Yeah. Hannah Baker. Because everybody, yeah, Hannah Baker, she was in a wheelchair. She was the dispatch, like she was on his side in the grand scheme of things. Everybody knows he did it. He knows he did it. Like people saw it. He ocean, he literally ocean dumped and was found not guilty. So, or maybe he was found guilty. I don't know. It. He, PD gets away with so much shit that, like, why should we know what is right and wrong when the PD can't even abide by those same rules? Yeah, that's that's something I want to address. Um, I'm not entirely sure how to go about it, but it's actually at the top of my action items because there's no accountability. I mean, the current chief of police has, he's been expunged at this point, but he went to prison for torturing someone. I've also heard tales of, of the other arm uh, with Sheriff Toretti doing some questionable things. Yeah, waterboarded a woman. Oh, that's not all I heard. <laughs> so it's good oh. to know. Uh-huh. Like, do you know how many members of the PD have drug problems? Yeah, Lieutenant Gunner in my first meeting with him said that he 
quote, had a drug problem. And he goes, actually, correction, have a drug problem. I just got promoted. Yeah. First time meeting him, introduced myself as advisor to the mayor. Yeah. No issue with it. So I guess forgive the civilian or criminal side of the city for not knowing what's right and wrong when those are the officers in charge of keeping us safe and upholding the law. Yeah, I've I've heard out of the mouths of multiple civilians who say they feel safer in the presence of gang members than they do uh, in the care of the PD. A hundred percent. That is so backwards. I, I am one of those people. Like, I've had cops lie to my face. I've had cops lie on subpoenas. I've had cops... Uh, Put me on 24-hour holds for no reason because they disagreed with something a lawyer said i've had like I, i've had the police treat me like absolute garbage but uh you know the gangs of the city will actually protect you this is what i mean by accountability mm -hmm. i'm not entirely sure how to address it um our first piece of legislation was pretty fiercely shot down so it's something I'm mulling over before I move forward. Mm -hmm. Just know that it's going to, I mean, you are, but it's going to be an uphill battle. I, Every I, step of the way, I, I wish you luck. Yes, thank you. I, I said to Bunny yesterday, uh, at some version of this, that uh, a friend to none is an enemy to all. And, and that's kind of how I feel in my position is, you know, I try, I try to make as many connections as I can stay positive, bring about what change I can, but it honestly doesn't matter. Everyone just wants to find somebody to hate. Yep. I'm a pretty, I'd say I'm a pretty well-liked person in the city. Cause I don't really cause too much trouble. I don't like putting my nose in other people's business, but there's still people in the city who fucking hate me quote too much hmm. <laughs> I love I love that um, little addition there quote I mean sometimes much. I just need to know what's going on but still like yeah. I, I I'm not in a gang I don't get into gang politics or anything like that I try not to upset people but I mean at the end of the day there's always be somebody that fucking hates you for no reason and it's like right why dude <laughs> all right fine whatever so you just accept it and move on. Hey, everybody loves villain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, um, things that I have to figure out for next steps. I mean, there there are certain pieces of legislation that I'm moving forward with in this next round. Um, and I'm I, I maybe should not hold back on submitting five or six pieces at any one given time, but honestly, it seems to be the way that it just kind of all works out because there are bulk changes that need to happen. Um, but this next round includes uh, some really interesting stuff that should be more protection savvy. I think the following round after this, though, is how we come back around to accountability. That's got to be top of mind. Yeah, anyway. I wonder what you plan on doing with that. That was, that was a vague statement. Plan on doing with what? Accountability? Mm hmm Like how you plan on actually attacking that? Well, today it was by instigating Trooper Copper. Huh? Oh. How? What? Uh, Trooper Copper posted a, a twat about how cops are cool, and I said, prove it. Uh, which led to an interesting back and forth via text message. Um, she goes, you must not be very involved. I, I would beg to differ. I would say I'm much more involved than probably they realize. Do you know that Copper is Dean's wife? I do know that. Hmm. It's a fun little tidbit. Yeah, she, she was very quick to drop that, quote, tidbit uh, in my first meeting with her. Ah. Uh, my question back to you is, is that supposed to scare me? 
No, it's just in the meetings that you're um, getting, you've mentioned wanting to have meetings with Cerberus and stuff. I just like connections in the city. So being able to connect two people, I think is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have begun to make the very incestuous connections of most people in this city. Everybody's connected somehow. In not great ways. <laughs> How do you mean? Well, my use of the term incestuous should probably imply something. Well, somehow everybody's related in some weird way. Yeah, it was it was from the mouth of copper. She said everybody in the PD is related. Yep, true. That's gross. Yeah, at one point, I was the adopted grandmother of the entirety of the police force. This is why my spouse is not in the city. <laughs> I was I was dating someone who was previously married, and they had adopted so many people who adopted so many people. And so then I became like step to everybody. And then him and I broke up, and then only one has remained, which is fine. I'll take one. Dude, I had an interesting conversation with Pixie Plum yesterday. Um, do people in this city just have a like a like a crap ton of mommy and daddy issues? Oh, for sure they do. Yeah, no, for sure they do. Um, I, I haven't. I don't know where it comes from. I'll be completely honest. Moving to this city, I didn't understand why everybody adopts everybody. Some people just call me grandma, still, and I'm like. Yeah, all right. It's a term of endearment. I'll take it. Is it? I get. You're nice to me, so I'm I like. I mean, I all guess. Right, I sure. guess if you take it that way. Yeah. How old are you? Thirty. Thirty. And they call yeah. you grandma. How old are these people? Uh, like twenty-seven. You you gotta just suspend disbelief for a bit. It's just, that's just how the city works. This city is. Something. Yeah, it really is. It is absolutely <laughs> using something. using logic here doesn't <laughs> generally make sense. Yeah, it makes sense if you don't think about it. Yeah, uh huh. I mean, I've also met people in the city who are 122 years old, so naturally. Yeah. Or have been 84 for six years. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yes. Well. Um, anything I can do to help. <laughs> Remember, there's also rings you put on your finger that make you not want to eat, so. Yeah, hopefully we're getting two of those to go away. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Mickey is adamant to reduce the ones that can uh, make your food and uh, your desire to eat and drink go away. And what's interesting to me is how the people who who um, run food stores in this city uh, blame each other for the problems of the food economics and neglect that there are literally rings you can just apparently chew on and be fine all day. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I agree. And, and, it should, and one of the fault. one of the food store owners is to blame for it and neglecting that very fact. Uh, wait, which food store owner? Maybe, maybe not directly oh, involved. No, no, but... no, no, no. You, you're yeah, yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. The connection is there, but. Correct. I, th I think even he's upset about it. Yes, but those discussions mm -hmm. need to occur because we should not have people just going around feeling fine for 12 hours at a time. Agree. I, yeah. uh to stay away from those rings anyways i i don't i just think it's such a bizarre yeah, don't tell me to suspend my belief about that that's no honestly... i i i wouldn't i don't it don't make sense no i had a, a great conversation with bunny yesterday that i think would be much more valuable which is like see your physician regularly to make sure that your health is good yeah her and i spoke about that and you know what i agree i would I think regular physicals would be fantastic. And, you know, maybe if you keep up with your physicals, you'll feel better for a longer period of time. Yeah. Or or mm -hmm. are, are quick to recover from injuries because you're up to date on your 
shots and medication. Absolutely. You know, simple things that are real. I feel like you and I are going to get along just fine, Sloan. I hope so. Yeah, I think we're on the same page about a lot of stuff. Great. Uh, because yes. of the introduction of the rings, I started selling cancer-free cigarettes at my store. Wait, what? Yep. I roll cigarettes that don't have any cancer in them. They just don't have cancer. Nope. No carcinogens of any type? No. Nope. What are they made of? Like purified tobacco? Yep. Is it even really tobacco then? Yep. Like chemically altered in some other way? Does it does it like not give you cancer it's but magic. makes your feet fall off later? No, it's just magic. Literally no secret. side effects. It's just Nope. All it's of just, the benefits mm, of smoking regularly. All the benefits, none of the effects. Yep. Does it does it make your voice screwed up? Will I sound nope. like Gladys later? Nope. You're gonna sound just like yourself. You're gonna feel great. You're gonna be de stressed, feeling fine. But no cancer. Maybe I need to pick up a new hobby then. Just smoking. And sounds like a good idea. Maybe I can start with like Nicorette and like work my way up. I feel like you just reverse to it. I feel like with all the conversations about the city you're going to be having, you deserve cigarettes. Well, what's interesting is uh, even though I have arguably the most stressful conversations in the city, I never am stressed ever. Do you drive the speed limit? I do, yes. That's why. <laughs> I actually, if I can help it, I don't drive. I walk most places. You're so fascinating to me. Why? I just, um, I don't know. You're just very fascinating. I spend a lot of time in the district, uh, and, you know, you either take a train or you walk. The city's not oh. that big. I can walk from my apartment to town hall in, I don't know, eight minutes. That seems like a worthy walk. Do you run for fun? Just to like feel good? Uh, not for fun, but I find myself running while I'm having conversations with people because I don't like to stand idly by. Hmm. Are you vegan? Am I vegan? Yeah. No, I love a good steak. Oh. I don't drink though. I, that was my next question. I bet you don't drink. I don't. Well, that's that's not entirely true. I, I don't drink anything other than like kind of casually. I'll have a glass of wine with a good steak every now and again, but I don't like have bourbon at home. I just, it, it's not a way that I de-stress. You go to bed at a reasonable hour and wake up at 6 a.m. <laughs> Define reasonable. 10, 30, 10, 30 11 10. o'clock? Yeah. Yes, uh, up between five and six every day. Yeah. All right. I'm figuring you out now. What are you figuring out? I'm just figuring out the kind of person you are. It's not a bad thing. I'm just figuring out the kind of person you are. Like the type of person who has responsibilities outside the city. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very real thing. Uh, one moment. The mayor is calling me. No problem. Hello, Mr. S. This is your time. I need the fastest drafting of legislation possible in conjunction with mayor Cr uh, or with judge crane i need this five minutes ago okay what is it what do you need parole for the prison okay. anything down on paper i literally need this in five minutes we we can we can we can edit the deep later we can adjust it we can work with this i need something on paper mr kelly now you got it i'll have it in three minutes Three minutes, go. Yes, sir. Sloan. Yes, ma'am. Do you play squash? Do I what? Do you play squash? No, that seems like a terrible idea. Do you like mountain biking? I do not like mountain biking. Do you play water polo? God, do you think I went to Harvard? Yeah. I did not go to Harvard. I went to University of San Andreas. Uh, one one moment. I need three minutes to draft legislation very quickly. Sure. The mayor gave me three minutes. I hope you get paid well. It's debatable.
All right, y'all. Advanced role program act. How do we spell uh, Bowling Brook? Sorry, y'all. I wasn't wasn't showing. <laughs> uh, drop this in Blau Jobs' stream.
Apologies, Nancy. You're good. That was unexpected. Did you do the thing? <laughs> Did I do the thing? Did yeah, you do the thing? I am I am just that good. Good. Yeah, version one of a parole program for lifers is now um submitted to the mayor's office. This will absolutely need to be redrafted, but seems like he's trying to negotiate for re, uh, re-surrender of the prison back to the state. Wait, currently he's doing that? Yeah, have you kept up with what's going on? Uh, yeah, I spoke to a couple of the lifers. As far as I know, everybody's dead. <laughs> All yep. the DOC are dead. Yep. Uh, the lifers control the prison. Uh-huh. And I, something was happening this morning based on the tweets that I saw and the lifers I spoke to, but I don't actually know what's going on. Yeah. Um, before the mayor woke up, we got in touch with the lifers through mm-hmm. Storm Payton, who um, mm-hmm. we're trying to get set up as a liaison. Um, and they sent over a list of demands that were, frankly, mm-hmm. unreasonable. Um, but it showed their willingness to negotiate. And then before the mayor was able to wake up and discuss this further, it seems the PD decided to assault Bolingbrook. Wait, what? Yes. They they were all strapped in um, SWAT gear, decked out to the nines. I was supposed to have oh, a meeting. For fuck's yeah. sake. Blood will run the streets, unfortunately, today. The worst part is if you see the tweets from some of the lifers, they're saying we would love to negotiate. The inmates are still willing to negotiate and come to an agreement with the mayor's office. Bloodshed does not need to be the end of this, my friends. That's in your hands. They've said this a few times. And... That would be because Sheriff Pred decided to do something on his own. I told him in a meeting this morning that the mayor's office did not agree with his idea of trying to infiltrate the prison. If he did that, it would be on his own accord. That's incredibly frustrating because I actually have a Terribly. feeling that if you and Mickey sat down and discussed with the lifers who are that they are trying to be reasonable, you know, something it is, could have yeah, come from it. But. It is not the lifers who are doing this. The no. lifers are caught in between temps who are now apparently quote lifers. It's not the same thing. Okay. Anyway, he has a version of what he needs, I think. Apologies, that was that was um, unprofessional but necessary. No, it's fine. I have people in there that I, I care about. They're friends, and so it's it's tough to um, it's tough to hear the cops being uh, reckless when it comes to something like this because it's obviously a very big deal. And knowing you and knowing Mickey, I actually have a feeling there could have been a construction a constructive conversation, but uh, the cops are doing their own shit. That would roughly be why I instigated with Trooper Copper this morning. That makes that makes sense, yeah. I said prove it, and her response was uh, antagonistic. Yeah, that sounds... That sounds like PD. They actually just retired someone who performed an assassination attempt on Bunny while she was the mayor. Yeah, that seems also totally reasonable. Mm-hmm. Just rehire somebody who tried to kill somebody. Yep. I mean, treason suddenly works for the government. That makes... I'm suspending my belief here. Well, he never got charged with treason, so never charged him in fact at all fantastic <laughs> accountability yes drew accountability yep uh it is it is going to be an extremely heavy task it will be so glad i don't have any part in it oh you do now Oh, for fuck's sake, slow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, I, I won't make you be involved. Um, but I do appreciate these conversations because they're enlightening for, um, 
areas of the city that I'm ignorant in. Yeah. Is yeah, it, talking is, to people, talking to people one-on-one -on -one is definitely a good way to get information that is going to assist Well, you. and in small groups. I, I think like yep. the town halls are fine, but they end up being crap shows because everybody wants to just hear their complaints heard or turn it into some kind of event to be Joke. seen. Yep. But when I sit down with somebody or, or a few people at a specific place and they're, they're spitballing ideas off of each other and talking about some of their areas of struggle, like... I don't, I don't know why we're not hearing people more. I'd love you to sit down with some of the gangs or clubs in the city and have these conversations with them. I would love to do that if I had somebody to introduce me. Hello. Hi. <laughs> is, that a, I, is, that, is that an offer? Yeah, I can probably do that. Okay. Then okay. then now you're involved. You just, okay. you said I'm not involved and then you, you involved yourself. Well, I mean, I, I can do the introductions and see if anybody is um, willing to have those conversations with you. Yeah, I had an interesting one with somebody from SOS that was um, unproductive. Yep, that sounds about right. I mean, the thing is, they, they're always going to want something and they don't know the what they can get, basically. Oh, my assistant's calling. Hold on. Sure. Hello. I do. I need uh, coffee and breakfast, please. Tell them to bring me something. Oh, and also something for the person I'm having a meeting with, please. Um, he also needs coffee. What do you need? Some breakfast? I'm just, lunch? Yeah, lunch sounds good. Yeah, we'll have we'll have two lunches. I'll have a coffee and then um, obviously a. You should know what I want, Rod. I don't. I I don't want Shrugway. Come on. Get it together, Rod. Yeah, Rod, get it together. Um, su surprise me. I'm in the I'm in the clean getaway office in the Surfers Business Center. Yes, that's fine. How much are they? What? What? That's disgusting. Okay, that's awful. All right, chop chop with the food and drinks. Alrighty, bye. It's a, it's a, have you met Rob Long? No, I have not. Why does okay, everyone he's... have a name in this city that just sounds outlandish? <laughs> well, well, still, um, I'm not actually an asshole to people, by the way. From that phone call, it might seem that way. This Prove is it. a very, this is a very special case, and you'll understand as you see him and the person he's bringing that every every who meets him is an asshole to this person. And you, you, like I said, you will understand why. Okay. I trust you. I promise. I promise this guy actually deserves it. Okay. Fair. Um, you know the laptop cost in the city went from seven and a half to $8,000 up to $12,000 overnight. What do people use laptops for? Um, you know, porn mostly. Is that right? Or you can check your, um, your, Tow repression for when you're driving your tow truck or your your dodo deliveries. That's how you do dodo jobs. Okay. Um. Yeah. Sometimes you can buy like uh, vehicle parts on there for your upgrades and stuff. You can't do that on your phone. You're like. No, it has to be a browser on your laptop. Seems like there's a browser in the works on our phones. Oh, you'd think. You would think. You would think. You would think, but... You would be wrong. You would, in fact, be wrong. Yep. Okay. Well, uh, I don't have a need for a laptop. I do everything on uh, my phone for the most part, or paper. Fair enough. It's just very expensive. Laptops? Yeah. I mean, I are mean, they like, good laptops, at least? I mean, are we... They only last, like, a week. The battery runs out so fast, and you can't even get a charger for them. You have to replace a laptop every time the battery goes out? Yeah. That seems unreasonable. It is. You take it down to the recycling center and then scrap it and a new one. I'm suspending belief. 
But my phone, I never have to plug in, which is great. Never. Never have to plug in oh, a phone. Never plug in my phone, but my laptop dies after a week. No batteries. I mean, naturally. Mm -hmm. I, I did see apparently there was some kind of nuclear radiation or something that came from the atmosphere that made materials all of a sudden go bad unless you had some kind of unique pouch. Yes, correct. And I do, in fact, have a unique pouch. How how are materials suddenly affected by this? But, you know, like, I still have hair. It's crazy, huh? I'm suspending belief. Mm-hmm. I've been, I was gold panning yesterday. Oh, and yeah. I was finding, I was finding Rolex and sunglasses and PSPs in my gold pan. The PSPs worked? Uh, yeah. I'm going to sell them at the pawn shop later. Not Mickey. <laughs> that call can wait. I, I answer very few of my phone these days. Mickey's been on the phone for 20 minutes and asked for something that took me six minutes to draft. You That's not my like... fault, right? Like, if he... No, no. Okay. Well, I got it to Wait. you in six minutes. I said three minutes. That It took me longer than three minutes. Did you text him and say it's done? I did. I texted him and sent him an email. Then you've gone above and beyond. Yeah, I'm thorough at what I do. I appreciate that. A lot of people are. <laughs> I have noticed. I'm a big list keeper. Like, everything that I need to do in a day, everybody that I need to phone, everybody I need to follow up with that owes the company money that makes sense yeah i i have a calendar open uh a calendar app uh on my phone that i can always drop meetings into when they're supposed to be scheduled etc this meeting was on my calendar for an hour uh before we met but uh as things happen and occur you know whatever i be expected. i have i have two calendars i have one for in-city meetings and i have one for out-of-city meetings Yes, that part. As do and I. And it is just so difficult. That doesn't seem like our mayor has the same kind of structure. No. No, he doesn't. Do you ever use code red on Mickey? No, I don't know what that is. Oh, you just text all caps code red uh, for something that's not a code red, and then they call you right away. I don't know that that would work for Mickey. You can try. I, the, I texted him one time or messaged him one time and I said, you absolutely need to read this email. It's of vital importance. And he read the last line. Sometimes Lang texts me code red all caps just because he wants to talk to me on the phone. So this, this comes from Lang then? Oh yes, 100%. But I started using it on other people and it's a really good way to get people's attention. All right. I, I don't know anything that I would be working on would warrant a code red. Like, I'm not that important. Oh, I code redded my friend the other day. I wasn't answering her phone, and I just wanted something. That's fair. So just pick whatever is important to you, and then code red whoever the fuck. Uh, that would be against my moral code, but I understand why it's necessary. Well, if I ever code red, you just know that it's a code red. I don't believe you now. You have to, because what if it is a code red? Then you guys, you better use something other than code red. This is actually an emergency. My system is fine. Here. My assistants are here. Yeah, I hear Come people in. behind us. Rod, get off the laptop. Hello. Hello. What's up? How's it going? Hello, Kelly. Pretty this good, is my good. assistant, Rod Long. Yeah, what's up, man? Hi. Um, why are you wearing a mask? It's just... It's just how it is, you know? It seems inappropriate for a business meeting. What? This is your boss. Don't talk, don't talk to Sloan like that. Where did Xavier go? I don't know. There's food right, right there. And then it's too um, far away, Rod. I can't reach it. You put a, it on the that's ground. That's an inappropriate outfit you're wearing, sir. Oh, wait. Is there a closet here? No. 
I saw you earlier coming out of the apartments. No. Yes, there's a closet in the back room of them. Yeah, that created. Then here. You're there's some food to... for you too. You're gonna need to pick it up and put it closer to Mr. Kelly. What are you doing? It's fine, Nancy. I can stand. I can, no, I, I got no. it. No. Oh my God, Rod, you're embarrassing me. There you go. Sloan Kelly, um, this is Xavier you, Valentine. The number one business blood. No. It, did Do you, you want no? a chilled espresso or a ERP a Chino? We'll take the chilled espresso, please. Okay, what about you, man? Do you want the ERP a Chino or the chilled espresso? Uh, As espresso I gaze across the city skyline. What was that? The espresso sounds just... good. Okay. I, I see opportunity where's the closet what kind of more. opportunity i see landscape i see potential that is all you said nothing at all. Sav, come back. Take a seat. You can look fancy too. Okay. You're not allowed to sit. Oh, all right. Wait, I'm not? No. What about Sav? I asked him to sit. Oh, okay. Now, Sloan, now that Xavier Valentine, number one businessman worldwide, is here, do you have any questions for him? What is your business? You name it, it's mine. You didn't answer the question. You name the business? That's the business that I own. Any business? Any business you want to name. Cerberus. Boom, own it. You own it? Nancy, is that true? Thanks to your help. It's not. Okay, so this man is a pathological liar? Mostly. What do you own, sir? <laughs> if I answer this city, does that sound arrogant? Yes. Mm, no. Uh, I I will answer humbly, Mr. Valentine. I, I own nothing. Sure. I, uh... Um, no, no. Don't lie to me now. Come on. No, gen genuinely, I don't own a business. I am a freelance advisor for the mayor. Well, I'm the future mayor. Well, then eventually I'll work for you. That's right. I just announced I'm running. Perfect. Next election, I will be running for mayor. Do you have a Love criminal record? It's a big one, but uh, don't worry about that. You've got 60 days to clean it. If I clean it now. Because you know what they say, money talks. I got lots of it. Congratulations. And once I'm the mayor of the city, I will be rich again. How? Taxes. Well, that doesn't get paid to the mayor. The mayor has a flat salary. They're paid as a government wage. It's only $1,500 an hour. It's dramatically less than you make basically anywhere else. We'll see about that. Now, I'm looking for an investor. In what? Your run for mayor? In me. Well, if you announced your mayorship and are looking for an investor and I am an agnostic party, you're barking up the wrong tree. I'm asking $500,000. Return of $750,000. He's banned from, you know, because he has a gambling addiction. That is true. Yeah. Don't listen to that guy. He's, you know, supposed to be at Parsons, but, you know, we bring him out every now and then for like a field trip. It's okay. It's okay. Shh. 
Mr. Valentine, if you really do have any intention in running for mayor, I am not the person to discuss money with. Okay, give me your phone number. What? Is that it? Get it? That's it. Oh shit! Sorry. sorry I know. Sorry. Is that a threat? Now, yes. No, that's not a threat. I will be contacting you for my mayorship. Whenever you're ready, sir. Thank you. Thank you for your time. For Valentine 2024. Well, it would still be 2022. I don't think it will. Yeah. Is, is he waiting two years to run? It's 60 days. He said next term. Yeah. Is he getting it? I think he's... Yeah. Does this guy, like, think much? Who? Before Zav or Rod? Zav. No. He just kind of speaks without thinking. Yeah. You know, if I had the intentions of being a puppet mayor, it's the kind of guy you'd probably want to find to run. I mean, Copper, wait, Copper is married to Dean, right? Yes. Yo, That's Holly. Dean wins the next election. This is perfect. <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm just very sarcastic. She she's great to RP with. Okay, Rod, your meeting's tomorrow? Yeah. Okay, and you're pitching? Yeah, apparently, yeah. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. I'm very excited for you. Yeah. It'll be a big, big money maker. It will be if, uh, if it, I hope, maybe. Hey, Rose. Know. We'll see. Do you, do you want me to get Tony to be message. there? Yeah. Probably won't because he's a late night boy. Just tell him it's, and he'll totally wake up. It's probably not true. It's, it's not at all. I'm glad that you're self-aware. Yeah. It's fine. Okay. Do you need anything? Because yeah. I'm um, good. You talking to me? Yes. Uh, any advice? Sloan, any advice for Rod here? In regard to anything in specific? His life. Yeah, I guess so. Keep your nose clean. I do that. Then you're good. That's it. That's it. That doesn't mean like literally keep your nose clean. It's a turn of phrase. Oh. What? Don't. Don't do. Oh. You're just missed, right? What? Okay, hold on. It responds to this text. Rod. Leave. Oh, okay, yeah, of course, of course. Nancy, let me do anything. All right. Good meeting you, Rod. Yeah, nice to meet you. I don't pay him. <laughs> he just, just works for you, huh? Yep. <laughs> for nothing? Is that the mommy issues? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you were able to do that successfully, then more power to you, I suppose. Yeah, he brings me food. He answers my phone calls sometimes, passes along messages. Why are they? It's fine. Um, I think one time my phone record got subpoenaed for something and there was like 300 phone calls in a six hour span and the oh cops started crying because they had to go through all of them and then all of my text messages as well <laughs> best so. of luck yeah I, yeah I just need somebody to answer my phone for me sometimes I, I tend to be a phone guy from time to time yeah this is actually, I mean how many phone calls have I got we've been here only like too, which is surprising, honestly. Hey. I keep hearing doors opening. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, I'm sure it's fine. Um, where were we? Someone just ran in. Oh, 
Why are you on the table? Because I can't get out of my chair without being on the table. Interesting. Okay. You all came issue. Suspending belief. <laughs> That's my new favorite joke. Interesting. He smoked a joint in the back room. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Change, change clothes, smoke a quick joint. Come back, get to work. Normal stuff. You know. Is there anything else that you wanted to cover? <laughs> I honestly don't know where we were, if I'm being... I don't know where we were. If I'm being frank. Oh, I thought you were slim. Wow. Please just don't call me like grandma or grandpa or something. No, that's, that's I'm not into that. You're you were you literally just gave like the world's worst dad joke to me and said you're not into calling people grandma or grandpa. Those things are absolutely related. Okay, first of all, it was a really good joke. How dare you? Secondly, no, they're not. <laughs> first of all, it was not a good joke. Yes, it was. It was a and very poor. Oh my god. Are you Leslie Nielsen incarnate? Today, apparently, I am. I, I made a reference to Leslie Nielsen earlier and no one got it. And I, I, I just Wait, like. Really? I was honestly stonewalled for a second because I was wondering who in this city hasn't seen Airplane? That's actually devastating. Or, or Naked Gun. Great movies. But then I realized that probably a majority of the city are not in their. 30s uh yes correct a lot of them are like early 20s and it's shocking wow what is I this do. city there's your mommy and daddy issues oh 100 percent uh before i was called abruptly to legislate you said i hope you're paid well right you did say that i did are I you? I am paid well enough. Okay. For getting legislation written in three minutes, I, I should hope you're paid well enough. I, I talked to Bunny about this a little bit. I don't really care about money, um, which is surprising in the city. I, apparently, I scared the crap out of Judge Fitzpatrick. Maybe not scared the crap, but uh, she was absolutely blown away when I told her that I returned more than $750,000. I think it was like $764,000 to the state account for an unused vehicle stipend um, because I don't have a need for money. <laughs> and and she equated me to being a saint and called me Jesus. And for a Catholic woman, I thought that was extremely inappropriate. Why, why are you suddenly quiet? I, I just collecting myself. Um, you might be the only person in the city who doesn't care about money. I, I mean, I don't understand why there is such a drastic need for money to survive. Because everything is so fucking expensive. It costs $12,000 for a laptop. But why do you need a laptop? That's what I don't understand. Porn. I don't need a laptop. I can get that on my phone if I cared about it. I told you I'm married, so it doesn't really matter. Well, fair enough. But I mean, people watch porn. Come on. I I don't. But all right. A pe a pizza is a thousand dollars. Yeah, but my wealth I can I can gather my welfare welfare check. I so I I will I'll tell you the first three weeks that I was in the city until I could get the the budget approved, uh, and and judge sign off. I I only lived off of welfare and I never was below $5,000 in my bank account. So 
civilians need to be use their laptop for dodo and towing. Think, think they can afford twelve thousand dollars once a week plus a radio for work, three three and a half thousand dollars plus a thousand dollars for pizza plus thousand dollars for gas off of. Are they not getting paid for the work that they do everything? for dodo and? Not a ton. I mean, you know it, it doesn't recuperate costs. You know how much I got on my stimulus check yesterday? How much? Twenty-six dollars. But aren't you employed by places that that pay you? Oh, a hundred percent. Right. That's why you get nothing in your in your stimulus. Is that how that works? That is exactly how that works. That's how the economy is shaped. Is when you're employed by various types of employers, you don't get as much as somebody who is employed by, say, a freelance contracting agency. Oh, for fuck's sake! I'm employed by like forty different places. Well, there's your problem. But not all of me. Only one of them pays me. Most of this is just keys. Yeah, I, I make less than $100,000 a week, which I understand is um, considerably less than what someone can make running Dodo a few times and uh, standing behind a counter at Iwu Cafe. I wouldn't know, unfortunately. I mean, I've talked to enough civilians at this point to know that the the math equates if it's if it's two hundred dollars per paycheck or per receipt and you're standing there and you get twenty four receipts per hour that doesn't take a lot of math to figure out that someone's going to make more than me if they're standing at a counter the same amount of time that I'm in the city we're just doing different things sounds kind of miserable though just standing behind a counter I mean if that's what you're choosing to do though if that's what your your employment is. I'm always on the clock though. I'm a salaried employee, right? I, uh, yeah. I, I am always in meetings. This qualifies as work to me, right? We're having a business meeting. Um, Same. Yeah, as, as I'm meeting people in the street, it's, it's various types of lobbying or even just research. It qualifies as part of my job. Yeah, I mean, I get 300 phone calls a day asking for help with Cerberus stuff, so I, I'm, I'm with you. Your your tone has changed since the beginning of our meeting. What's what's going on? I haven't noticed that. How has it changed? I feel like all of a sudden you're afraid to say something. No. Okay. I just don't really have much to say. It was the this conversation stun locking? Not really. I just don't know like where. I I guess I don't know where the conversation is going at this point. I don't know. You asked about how well I was compensated. Yeah, because I hope you're getting compensated well for the amount of work that you do. My, my point is compensation doesn't really matter. I'm a what I would probably qualify as a public servant. Yeah, Though fair not, not in a public agency. As long as that's uh, like, as long as that makes you happy, you obviously are very, very good at what you do. I also want people to know their worth. It's like funny. I want her to know her worth and make sure that she's getting compensated fairly for the amount of effort and work that she puts in at the hospital. I would hope the same for you, that you would be getting compensated fairly by the city for the amount of work that you're doing. Yeah, I, I would agree I, with that. I, I know you say that you don't have a use for money or whatever, but I feel like with the amount of work that you're putting in, you deserve to have money from that and treat yourself to nice things when you want them, not have to worry about money. I suppose. I don't know. I had the same conversation with Bunny uh, about value of services. This is a similar conversation. I, <laughs> you guys are uncannily similar. Do you know that? Uh, yeah, that's probably why we're friends. Okay. Yeah, we, we had an interesting conversation about uh, specifically her role as the administrator of the hospital and how because it's not a, a role you can clock into, it's one that you have to value your service at and and 
she was talking about how as an administrator she put in a budget request for what she feels like she should be paid and the doctor's responses or the board's response was well that's more than we make and i was like okay well that's that's not a that's not an issue with how much she's requesting that's an issue with how much doctors make seems to me that's like that's what i said too yeah like to, to me that sounds like the doctors should be making more maybe they should have that discussion with the mayor's office I've not heard from a single doctor since being here. Bonnie's the one who's been the conduit between them and I. Which seems odd because the amount of work, truly, that the doctors put into the city with the amount of people that are getting hurt on a basis, they should be making probably more than most people in the city. You would think. For some reason, cops and doctors, EMS, they make pennies compared to other people. They do. And this is, this is where the the conversation with bunny i think is really important is there has been at least to my understanding a major shift in the economic status quo maybe for lack of better phrasing um to the point that there is no middle class anymore there there is no. this elite class that has apparently millions of dollars to spend at all times and then there are people who are struggling to get by yes I was asked not to touch economics. Weird. Yeah, this this meeting was originally, you know, we were supposed to meet with with Eve is because I had originally drafted the scope of legislation that was going to help regulate business economy. And then it got oh. shut down. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, I. I would have been very interested in that, but uh, I guess I kind of understood. And wow, got shut Her down. tone has shifted. She's she's speaking um, more. Actually, it's lower. I think part of it too, which is odd to me, with the the amount that the PD makes, is they can their guns, their equipment, costs like twelve bucks for a class two weapon. Yeah, I've seen those numbers uh, in working with the FIB. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And so the cops get paid less, but then they don't even have enough money to have a life outside of work. Like if, if they want to, you know, buy a house or a, a personal vehicle, there's no way that any of them can afford that because they're putting all of their money and time and everything into being- So we stopped having fun and she started being Kate. Yeah, I, I am actually drafting the first piece of what we'll call um, government pay reform. Uh, the first people who it's going to affect are going to be the DOJ and the lawyers and clerks, um, but it also kind of makes headway and overhead for um, basically any government employee by raising the cap. Um, and that piece is actually done. It just needs to be submitted at this point. And then it would be up to um, whoever in the Senate to basically come back and say, oh, well, we're going to approve doctors to make X amount of money. I think that the issue that there's been in the past has been, and I, this is only information I've become privy to, again, since being here. Um, the issue that there's been in the past, though, has been that they've tried to, like, keep the mayor as, like, the highest paid person in the city from a government employee standpoint which I understand, and yet there's still a cap that was never really reevaluated when the economy shifted under Bunny's administration, the way I understand it from Bunny. Odd. Yeah. And so, you, I mean, you're saying that, what, Mickey's making like four bucks an hour or something like that? It's like it's like $1,500 an hour, which is less than you make if you're just collecting receipts at Ulu. Or going and running the garbage trucks around the city. Or you go hunt for 30 minutes. Yeah, exactly. Which doesn't make sense to me. Like, I I believe a mayor position should be making a lot more than that. I agree. I, again, same with the doctors and the police officers. People who are actually keeping the city functioning. Yeah, I, I agree completely. So so my, my request was to... Not, we couldn't quite request to double it, but it's, I think we're going to try and move it to 2,500. And then it's going to scale and tear down. But basically it was like, when I looked at the numbers of what the average person's making, that's a government worker. I don't know how people who aren't PD survive. 
like how do you mean clerks make eight hundred dollars oh, oh, an hour that's it that's it maybe back when a tank of gas was a hundred bucks right but i mean that's an hour of work for less than one tank of gas you are correct that's crazy exactly i think all of them must have a second or an even third job at that point well, they would have to i mean someone like cast silverton you know she runs her own business but to, to feel like you're logged in all of the time or signed in as, as a clerk and then to barely make ends meet like how miserable would that be absolutely so i'm i'm hoping to change that for them as fast as possible uh and then for the everybody else is kind of like unfortunately it's kind of going to be secondary to what we're trying to do at the government heights level but I think this will kind of like give us headway for um, everyone else. And I know what Bunny wants to do with the doctors is going to be a little more expansive. Uh, and she's actually kind of already got an approval for it with the program she's running for the FTO side of things. Um, it's more like, what can we do to make sure that their, their salaried wage is commensurate with what the economy is charging to live? Which just honestly is ghastly. It's, it's ridiculous now. Anyway, I guess that's where that conversation was going. Okay. Interesting. So what did you want to do with the arena again? Have you seen it? With the arena? Hmm. You're mentioning arena. Yeah. Stuff. So the specific request, oddly enough, was for paintball. Uh, oh, <laughs> we have that. Yes. Um, civilians just want more stuff to do. Um, and this is coming from a massive series of conversations in the first few weeks that I was here where people, again, this is kind of exactly in line with what we were just talking about. They feel like all they can do is sit behind the counter at a restaurant or at a restaurant. Um, some people abuse it though and stand outside the restaurant and collect paychecks, which I think is inappropriate as well. But um, the fact of the matter is people want to be able to do something outside of work like there should be work-life balance in the city as much as there is you know when you take the train home um i think the the concept of paintball is a good one um i understand trying to turn them into um competitions maybe more stressed than, than it's worth yeah um but at the same time I'm, I'm wondering what you know what can we do in the mayor's office uh and, and again i'm kind of speaking consultatively here, what can I help recommend to the mayor's office to ensure that, that like civilians are a being heard. That's, that's a big part of what I'm doing, hearing out people who just honestly feel like they've been tools for a long time. Um, and then B at the same time, I think this is, this is the part that's kind of, we need to work on with the, um, Parks and Rec and with you is, is like what makes reasonable sense for kinds of events that, that could be held and then how do we communicate them out that they're happening? The other piece of this is as I've been having these conversations, um, it sounds like a lot of people just don't know things are happening. Um, and, and I know there are events that happen there because I've been to a few, <laughs> um, or at least, at least one, uh, the Damien concert, but people didn't know that was happening. Um, well, and I have, to, go ahead. Yeah. To be, to be fair Stop to the talking. arena. No, no, no. It's fine. Uh, they did a shit job of promoting it. Uh, one moment. My lawyer's calling. Hello, Tim. Hi, Tim. Okay. Okay. I'll email you if we do. All right. Uh, be safe. Travel well. Okay. Yeah, be safe, All right, Tim. we'll miss ya. Oh, Sloan, Sloan says goodbye. Have you met Sloan Kelly, Tim? Yeah, I think you two would get along. Yeah, we're having a meeting right now about city stuff. Yeah, we're talking about the arena. Yeah. Are you heading out right now? All right, I might call you in a bit, okay? All right, bye. Uh, yeah, so the arena. Damien, their team did not do a great job of promoting that event. 
the gotcha. first time it was even mentioned was less than 24 hours before the event with the wrong time zone oh. uh, on the poster. In fact, no time zone on the poster. Oh, um, great. So that's not how I tend to operate when I do events. Sure. Uh, the other thing is we have an event app, right? And uh, this calendar app, I should say, that I'm looking uh -huh. at right now. And I would, one of the things that I have been pushing for, because I actually pitched an event app months ago. It was then meant to be looped into the LSBN app. And then that never happened. And then this happened instead. I would love to be able to just, you know, tap on a day and see all of the events that are happening on that day, regardless of if I have decided to join that event or not. Because at this point, the only time you can see events that are upcoming is on Twitter. Interesting. And you need to be there to see it, have it be advertised by people, and then physically join the, the event. And right. so I can't just browse and be like, gosh, I don't want to go on Twitter, but hey, it's Tuesday. What's happening in the city today? There's, there's nothing because I haven't joined any events. But I'd love there to be like a list of, oh, these are all of the things happening in our great city. What was the so, response to your suggestion? Well, that has not been, a, that hasn't gone through to anybody. I had a full events app pitched uh, because we have, I have Orpheus, the events management company that does all the stages and rentals and everything. Mm -hmm. And basically it was, there's no need for a full app for that. Loop it into LSBN. Um, and so it was meant to be in the LSBN app. It was supposed to be news, the music, and then a third tab for events. And that proposal went through. I don't know whatever happened with it. And then soon after the calendar app came to be, Okay. but, uh, it's not, it's not very functional. Right. And also like, were you in the city yesterday? Uh, what was yesterday? Monday. Yes. Did you, were you around when Marlo was doing the giveaway on? No, I was not. Or a couple, a couple, I can't remember if it was yesterday, but. Oh, with all the numbers. Oh my God. Was that what that was? I had my M key. Nancy, can you hear me? Hello? Fantastic. Say something. Nope. All right. Hello? Now I got you. I've been talking this whole time saying some really good shit. Oh man. Yeah. Run, run okay. it back. Run it back. Um, what was the last thing you heard? Honestly, I don't know because it dropped out. <laughs> it's okay. Run the whole uh, thing it back. Was, it was basically just, there's a lot of really good events happening in this as a former event planner. I know that, but I also know how difficult it is to, oh, yeah. um, right. calendar stuff. Yeah. I, I know how difficult it is to advertise stuff. So something that would be really fun. Like I'm glad parks and rec is operational and stuff. Something I'd like to do, mayor's office, maybe Parks and Rec, is like a government subset of, hey, we're having open go-karts for the next hour or something. And um, oh, paid for, cool. yeah, it's paid for by the city. We keep track of how many came in and then we get paid for it afterwards. Something like that. Or, hey, we're having an yeah. event. Um, here's, uh, here's an amount of money for like a prize pool or something like that. Um, subsidized by the government. Yeah. I don't think any of that's unreasonable. All right. Because, like, then 
the arena gets paid, the cost of the go-karts and stuff gets covered, I'd have to, like, I'd be able to pay out the employee who runs the event, whether it be, you know, me or one of the employees that has actually stuck around through the arena kind of shutting down for a while. They'd be able to make their commission, which would be great. And then not only bring business back to the arena, but just give civs something to do they don't have to pay for. Yeah. I think that's that's the part, right? Is we, we're sitting in an economy right now where civilians that do have to pay for stuff are not in a position to do it, and therefore they just don't. Um, mm -hmm. the VIP ticket to Damien's concert being 15 grand was like, great. But then also when you went up there, like the experience was like not worth the 15 grand if I'm putting it mildly. So, uh, so if, uh, agreed. And I'm actually kind of upset about that. Yeah. But, but if, if you have a civilian who's, who's excited to, to go see this, this concert and, and you have saved up, um, uh, and you go and pay 15 grand and yeah, you get some merch. That's cool. But, but then you can't hear the music really all that well, or, you know, it's not worth the food cost or nobody's up there, which ended up being the case by the time he came on. Um, it was like, okay, well, what, you know, what kind of value is that to me as a civilian? What, what am I saying? Um, like what's being communicated. And again, that's, that's certainly not, I, I don't even want to call it the fault of, of Wu Chang either. I just want to say like for the civilian population, what can we be doing to, to ease some of that burden off of them? Um, so certainly state sponsored events is part of it. Um, I'm also, I actually need to at some point circle back with Ruby miles. Um, we're trying to move funding beyond just music artists and into like graphic arts and, and digital arts. Um, we're trying to support LSBN and, uh, Marlowe's entertainment business to be able to do like movies. Um, there are so many other artistic outlets that just haven't been maybe utilized um, or funded. Um, so what we want to try and do is find a means of, of getting them what they need, whether that's just through grants or, or various requests through the mayor's office, um, and then creating events around them. So again, being able to effectively communicate, hey, there's this event that's happening is great. I think uh, from my understanding, it sounds like a lot of what went on during Pride from before I was here was pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. There was a lot of communication around that. There's a lot of excitement around that. And then as soon as it was over, um, things are just kind of been dead. Uh, and and that I don't know that that necessarily has to be the case. Um, I think there are plenty of ways which we can celebrate I don't know anything, right? Um, other cultures, um, people like, like if you've met Babis, the stuff he's doing for- Oh yeah, Babis is great. I love Babis. And he's always talking about like his, his Greek culture and background and heritage. And, and uh, so like being able to like bounce those ideas with, with Babis and Ruby in the same space, being like, why don't we do some kind of like artistic thing that's built around greek culture like we could do like a, a celebration of greek culture then then like that would give people a reason to come and like figure things out uh and like be present to be like oh hey well here's here's what the inspiration was these conversations that have happened around Bavis's work that he's doing at the dig site some of his background uh that, that you know he's bringing to the city things that he wants to do for the city namely he wants to build a museum which would be fantastic um, yeah, he wants me to be the curator of that museum. Oh, very cool. I did not know that. Hmm. Yeah. Um, but then, then having like something to do, that's not just like one idea. Like, I think, I think there's a, a major problem with things happening in isolation. Um, there's not a lot of partnership that happens. Um, everyone has a great idea. I love everyone's great ideas, but we shouldn't be limited by the fact that your great idea is your great idea. Why can't it be your great idea is partnered with another great idea and therefore we do this thing together? Perfect example, storefronts. Storefronts are now required to have a specialization. Correct? Yes. Well, that's going to take a lot of business away from people who are previously selling things that maybe they shouldn't have sold, right? Mm -hmm. Why not find a business that you think you can partner with that's in the specialization that you feel like you're losing business in create a partnership, do some joint marketing. I don't know, try and, and, and build some relationships, co-relationships between those two businesses. Um, so that like 
people know that the other business exists, that, that your business exists, that if, you know, the things that they may be missing from your store are now going to be available in another store. Like those are, those are the things that like people just assume that like, there's always this negative perspective of what the city's trying to quote, do to them rather than getting creative about things that they can do to enhance the city. Um, I, this is where like me as a pub public servant or public type of servant, ask the question, well, what are you doing to make the city better? Or do you think the city's here to serve you? Thoughts would love your thoughts. I have so many. Okay, go. Storefronts are such a fucking mess as it is. Yes. That would make it so much more difficult. Okay. I've been working behind the scenes with even turbo on storefronts, trying to make regulations, trying to see how those regulations can be enforced, trying to figure out specializations that aren't too restrictive, but restrictive enough that it's not every going buck wild selling everything under the sun, right. uh, everything like that. And while in practice and in theory, or in theory, I completely agree with what you're saying because I was one of the advocates in those meetings being like, we shouldn't make it so restrictive because there's absolute reasons why people would want all these items outside of their category because it makes sense for their store. However, it, it was restricted because it doesn't make sense in the grand scheme of things, if that makes <laughs> It's very difficult to convey this in the city. Yes, it but, is. But yes, I yes. understand completely. But so, you know, I was, a, like I said, a big advocate for if it makes sense for the shop, we need to be a little less restrictive. Sure. Um, and so the balance that we finally found was incredibly difficult and it took many, many, many long meetings, but we did find a balance. We think we hope. And while I do agree with what you're saying in theory, I don't believe it would work in practice and it would further complicate everything that has just been set up to try to make storefronts run as easily and smoothly as possible. Why is that? Oh, it's very difficult to convey. I mean, th think about it, right? You, How many businesses do you have? You've got quite a few storefronts, if I understand correctly. I have two storefronts that are okay. under the same, like, parent company. The the card store and the soap shop. I've visited Correct. them. Yes. Thank you. And, and Bunny has her store, which is the B stuff. I am uh, her business partner in that, yes. Okay. Um, hence, hence my phrasing, quite a few. <laughs> You, yeah, I, you, I forgot, you have I a vested yeah you have a vested interest in storefront businesses. I do. But then there are the businesses that do more general purpose things, right? The uh, we'll say band aids and uh, other items. <laughs> <Vest. Right. laughs> sure. Et, yep. et cetera. And so specializations being more restrictive. Being able to say, hey, well, we know you can't get that from here anymore. I'll give you a perfect example. This is like the stuff that that uh, happens down at, at the Korean Plaza, right? You've got Flop Shop and you've got Amazon and and I, I've just been there and been down there enough to have kind of started to see what what's happening down there. If there are businesses in your area that have specializations that your business no longer fits, and I'm not saying sell your products through them, I'm saying you can direct customers to them and vice versa. Hey, we, we don't do this anymore, but this person does. And they're two stores down. That's what I mean by partnership. It's, it's just collaboration more than it is anything else. Oh, I mean, that's, that's basically what's going to be happening. And like, should be, not every, that's not how yeah. everybody thinks about it though. Well, yeah, but we, as far as the regulations go, we can't really change that aspect of it. Um, right. I mean, I, I know for a fact that, um, people, all the time like hey i need cigarettes and there was a there was a coffee shop down in little soul who couldn't they were cigarettes they found out i was selling cigarettes they stopped and would refer everybody to me um i do the gotcha. same thing with people's various coffee shops or hey you know i don't sell something like uh that's gonna make your chest feel stronger but i, I point you down the street to somebody else make so i mean it that... feels stronger yes uh <laughs> there are definitely people that do that Right. you might might not be seeing it perhaps 
Well, that's that's not really necessarily the point. The point is like just further encouraging that kind of partnership rather than when people get upset that they can't do something anymore, right? Because I've I've been called into those right. meetings of like I'm losing this part of my business and having to redirect and be like, no, you're not. You're specializing in something. Partner with somebody. <laughs> Let them yeah, point them to your shop and vice versa. That part has been difficult, especially because people don't know what they're losing yet or having to redirect. So um, once the new regulations come in, because they're still being finalized, I think that it might be easier to do that. But it's just... Question mark? Yeah, it's tricky because, again, people are always going to feel like something is being taken from them that's right. just unfortunately how the city operates people are inherently selfish right and that's, entitled that's roughly so, what i'm referring to is right yeah Why, the city is not 100%. here to serve you no but uh you know people act like that's this. that's the entitlement people believe right. that it is so once they have something or had something and it gets taken from them or they have to adapt and change it often gets it, uh, interpreted as a personal attack yeah, when it's that's, not. It's that's... for making it a better, you know, more balanced. <laughs> Maybe we equate that to emotional intelligence. Oh, perhaps. Perhaps. Yeah, I, I agree with a lot of what you're saying. It's just, uh, I've been in this city for about a year and a half, and you learn a lot about the people in it and the cycles that people go through in that time. And the way that they interpret things or take yeah. things when they change. You know, these are why I, I need the opinions of people like you and Bunny, right? I'm very wide-eyed, new to the city, the economics of the city. I need the reality checks. Yep. And I welcome Yeah, that's it. the thing. And I like your stance on a lot of things. And I, you have a, uh, at this point, a very realistic, but still idealistic way of looking at this. And unfortunately I used to also have that view of things uh, until I realized that there are certain things that just will never be able to be changed because uh, of the, how the city operates, how the people in the city operate and how they think. And you can try your best, but at the end of the day, it's just, um, you know, sometimes I have to just let things go that I would very much like to not. Sure. So I'm sure you'll start seeing that change in your slowly. Yeah, I, I can't wait to be completely crushed by the city. It's going to be fantastic. Oh, yeah. It, it happens at you slowly. Happens at you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not to you, at you. Nope. It happens at you. Yeah, I, uh, talking to Pixie yesterday was um, very sad, but uh, I understand that perspective. I, I think the, the most interesting part of this, and, and this is where idealism versus realism really come into play. The most I can ever do is make a suggestion, right? I, I am in no way in any kind of control. This is something that I've had to remind people of consistently as an advisor. I am not part of mayor's or the the mayor's mickey's um administration right i yes i advise him on things yes i work on these things for him but i don't directly work for him and and so this this actually comes from an old sales adage um you can never control someone into buying something you can influence them into making a decision um this actually comes specifically from the partnership world I have influence, not control. And so I've kind of had to have that attitude towards basically everything in this city. Um, if I don't try to influence, then it's that kind of mentality you have not because you ask not. Um, and, and I think a lot of times some people just don't ask because they are so defeated by the idea that if I ask, it's going to be no. Um, my response to that is, so the worst case scenario is you get a no. Um, I'm the same kind of way. Yeah, best, best case, case scenario is, is you, you get a yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, I say that shit all the time. Right. So so that's that's kind of like a where where I want to like 
yes, there are some idealistic views that I have. Sure. Um, some of those are not mine, but the mayors uh, that, that are passed through me. Um, so I'm having to parse through what is realistic versus idealistic. I think the way we saw that work was it would be ideal if we had missiles and an APC for the PD. We got missiles. They said no to the APC. Well, that was a big dream, right? And as, as I understand it, it's your your parent company. It's Cerberus that's developing those. Um, that's a really big deal. Um, new commerce for this whole city, possibly. Um, there, as I understand it from Ayub, Cerberus put in a business request that, that would be able to supply other things for the PD. That's great. They should have more access to technology and resources. Fantastic. Um, I think the, again, this kind of comes down to, you know, what, what is reasonable and actionable. And this is kind of where like my final thoughts on this are, um, there are, there is a realm of reasonableness and there is also a realm of actionableness, actionability. I don't know what the right phrasing is there. Um, what I have direct influence over tends to be the ideas that are state funded. What can we do through the state that just requires money? Um, that's where ideas like events come in. That's where ideas around um, giving sponsorship, um, whatever it may be, come up with the idea of, of, you know, we just need a way to get people to want to do more art, <laughs> uh, people to leave their life of crime to create music. That was the whole purpose of the Royalties Act. Um, then there's the, I would love for the whole fundamental piece of the city to change. And that's where I have to be like, that's great. I don't have any influence in that. And this goes back to the earlier part of our conversation. I don't know the senators. Um, I know Mickey. I know people who have some influence in that realm. And so I can make my suggestions. I can make my requests. Um, but that's as far as it goes. What I can do in the interim is help people who don't know to how, like exactly how to have those conversations formulate some of those ideas in a more coherent way, put things on paper. Maybe I'm doing it for them. Maybe I'm just kind of leading them down the path to do it for themselves. Um, but ultimately that is a service in which I can provide to the people of the city who otherwise, especially in the civilian population, have just felt defeated and overlooked. Yeah. I yield my well, time. Well, it was very well um, articulated. Nothing if not articulate. I've noticed. <laughs> I appreciate that because not a lot of... Oh, I wouldn't say not a lot of people in the city are. It's, uh, it's always a pleasure to run into somebody who is incredibly articulate. I deal with a lot of... Uh, uh, deal with a lot of criminals for work. <laughs> okay. And uh, this conversation is very different than the ones that I I have on a daily basis. Does this conversation feel more like out of the city work? Mm, not necessarily, because yes. <laughs> I no, not necessarily. Okay, I do good. a lot of of business in this city, and so this is like right up my alley. It's totally fine. But I just mean like Perfect. you know, I'll run around in, in suits to chain gang or something like that. And uh, saying, being told, hey, just drop the, drop the wingsuit in my mailbox with a pink dildo on top. It's a little bit different than the conversation we're currently having. Yes, I can imagine so. Yes, exactly. So moving, moving forward. Yes. Uh, how would you expect that we could work on something like the arena thing with the mayor's office? I think probably a good starting point is just working with Charlie, right? Kind of, I mean, I already do. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think it's just like, let's, let's find a way to come up with some ideas, right? I'm bringing this to you because I know this is something that you do, um, and, and are responsible for, um, oversight at least. Um, I am not an events creative person. <laughs> I, I have to delegate this to somebody. I know you totally and Charlie good. probably are. And so this is, this is me being delegatory. Uh, You're just trying to connect connect dots here. Exactly. Um, the yeah, request was made of me. Uh, I told them that I would work on it. This is me working on it. All right. Well, I'll take care of it. So consider it done. Perfect. And then you can make whatever request through Charlie because she already has the approval to get budget for whatever is needed. Basically. Yes, correct. Um, I am already, I'm already in the 
Parks and Rec uh, organizational team, I suppose. Or the, um, I, my job title is Super Vendor because oh. I can get them pretty much anything they want. Stages, Super microphones, vendor. fireworks, flares, wine, anything that they might need for an event. I have access to all of it. So well, That's good to know. Mm -hmm. Nancy is an asset. Yes, I, I would... I would agree with that. Perfect. You and Bunny, man, y'all are like the powerhouse of this city. Did you know that we're opening a hotel together? <laughs> no, I didn't. Yeah, we recently acquired the Richmond Hotel. And we're in the process of getting construction done on that so we can open that uh, uh, together. What will the hotel provide? Uh, rooms and storage for people in the city. Much like the Diamond Casino Hotel or there's uh, rest or the Roosters. It's just going to be a, another hotel for people who don't want to live at the apartments, don't yet have a home or one of the upgraded apartments. And live there, wake up there, have all their storage there, stuff like that. All right. That sounds cool. Yeah. It's going to be great. We have a big event space out back, so we're going to host events, concerts, pool parties, everything like that at the space as well. It's like the biggest hotel property in the city. That's dope. I, I do have a question. This is this is a difficult question. With with you and Bunny being involved in as much as you're involved in, does anyone ever question the amount of things you're involved in? Uh, yes. How do you handle it? I mean, they might question the number of things. Do you mean the number of things that Bunny and I are involved in together, or our own? Yes. I'll give you the Leslie Nielsen answer. <laughs> uh, I get questions about my involvement with companies, all especially cops. Like, if I get pulled over for a traffic stop thing, they immediately go like, holy shit, why are you empl employed at all of these places? Right. Um, if I actually look at the places I'm employed, um, some of it is keys, some of it is just under job title Cerberus because those are companies that we own and I need access to right some of them are my companies um, um it, yeah there's obviously a, a lot to it um I'd say the majority of it is Cerberus makes sense so, big uh, conglomerate got a lot going on yeah exactly you said it yourself, I'm an asset. So I have people that hire me onto their businesses because I can assist them with things or can provide advice and stuff like that. So having me hired on is an easy way to pay me for like consulting stuff or um, just like I'm trusted by a lot of people and for good reason. Gotcha. Yeah, I, the, that was a, a weird way of asking a question specifically re more related to a conversation with Bunny that I had about... Um, the way she's perceived in the city. And I, and I think she she gets a lot of unjust flack because Agreed. of maybe her involvement in a lot of things and scandals that didn't actually go anywhere. Uh, yeah. And she got, she still gets shit on for stuff that happened during her mayoral term that should have never been an issue in like to start with. I've noticed that. I, I have been, and I'm, I'm telling you this because I feel like I can, uh, and I've told her this as well. I, I get people telling me all the time to be careful with my association with Bunny. Do I have any reason not to trust her? No, you don't. I didn't think so. No, and the weird, he, okay, the weird thing about that is so many people have decided to target hate and uh, aggression towards Bunny, and they've never met her. Yeah, like or completely associated unwarranted. With her. Yeah. Correct. And I mean, like, they, so many people were saying Bunny was never around when she was mayor. She, I was her campaign manager. She was around every single day, except for like a, a couple days, but she was around in both time zones, like both storms rather. She was working diligently behind the scenes, getting people stuff. Cops were making up lies about her. Civilians were making up lies about her. People were plotting garbage about her all the time. Like, none of it was true. Um, she had an incredibly bad reputation as a mayor for 
in in my opinion, and I understand that I'm biased as a friend of hers, but for no reason. Because like sure. we're just just making shit up constantly. Part of it was she beat Rami in the election. Okay. And so there was some like not great blood there, which I think is healed, but like you know, there was a lot of the campaigning against her was lied. Um, whereas like she there was a lot of slander from different parties so as soon as people saw one person make that call um, or that tweet or that joke everybody would pile up on it even it's who didn't have a problem with her it was kind of the trendy thing to do mm. known as the Cerberus puppet even though Cerberus they gave her some funding but she actually went against a lot of their wishes for campaigning um, and then they, they weren't really like kind to her too much because they were doing other work stuff i think they had like maybe one meeting with her during campaigning but that's pretty much it like i'd say he is uh more not controlled by cerberus but in in comparison to bunny he has a lot more ties with Cer than bunny ever did but bunny was always is the cerberus puppet um again even though she wasn't yeah that seems very unfair and and is literally backed by Ron Oil. And funny was getting shit on for being a big corpo. I'm like who's been fucking Ron Oil? <laughs> yeah. So That's... yeah, she during the campaign, afterwards, during her mayorship, even after the mayorship to this day, she still gets shit on by people for no reason because they turned it into like a meme, a joke, a, a gotcha that was based in I'd say 99% untruths. Maybe there was a glimmer of like, you know, she stood up for herself and I don't even know how to phrase it. She stood up for herself a lot and did what she believed in. And I think people took that as her being harsh, but I think she, I, people who know her know that it was her standing up for what she believed in and what she thought was for the betterment of the city. Sure. And she like backed down or made um uh i don't know what the word is she didn't stray from her morals let's say that yeah that that's kind of what i've gathered from my conversations with her as well um part of the reason that i'm very quick to want to work with her um and disappointed that some of the response in the administration has been what it is towards her because i think it's unfair um but at the same time, if, and this is where my politician hat goes on, so stick with me. <laughs> if I need to play both sides so she can uh, be an asset and a resource um, from the political side and, and kind of at the same time keep that on the down low with people who maybe don't appreciate her the way she needs to be appreciated, that's where I'm willing to do that. Because the truth is, she's helped me more in this city than arguably anybody else. Yeah, so. she um, she cares about this city so much. Like the only thing she ever wanted was to be mayor. And when she was not the mayor anymore, it was truly devastating for her because she cares so deeply about the citizens of this city and she what's best for them so that when it didn't, when she wasn't able to continue the people of the city, she was just like actually heartbroken understandably so yeah, she she and i had a very long conversation um the other day that seemed to be very emotionally taxing in a very similar type of manner yes that just sucks um, it it does suck like even halfway through mickey's term people were still shit talking on twatter and she was just like trying to be the hospital administrator You know, I got blown up with an RPG during the campaign. For what? Yeah. Mickey having a blimp. I was sitting next to him because the Rami campaign on and tagged all over a billboard of her above the city vault. Actually, all the billboards that we put up for her around the city. That was mayor. Uh, they had gone in with a vote for Rami spray and absolutely covered it. So you couldn't see her, her name. And so we flew a blimp up to be able to wash it off and somebody RPG'd us out. Of 
Okay, first of all, people are just casually walking around with rocket-propelled grenade launchers? Hello, welcome to Los Santos. Oh, and then the police didn't investigate who did it. Oh God, Nancy. And then And then Rami happened to show up on scene afterwards and said, oh my gosh, what's going on? I'm here to get my paycheck. And I was screaming for them to GSR test him and they didn't. This city. Yep. Well, I'm thankful for people like the two of you, if nothing else. Yeah, we try. Putting it humbly. Yeah, we try. <laughs> we do. We do our best. We do our best. But I think a lot of people in the city also do their best with the um, within the confines of what they're actually able to do. You know, well, that's that's where you know I think I think there are some city limitations for what can be done versus what would desire to be done. I don't know. I think I think my biggest thing, kind of walking out of this meeting, is going to be how do I a continue to enable the both of you to. Do what you do well, right? Um, that's that's kind of the first thing. The second thing is I've got to find a way. And I don't know exactly how. I just I to get an RPG. No, God, I don't. I'm oh, I'm a pacifist. Right. Um. Oh, I remember what we were talking about. You were asking me about squash and. Yeah, did you play squash? No, I don't play squash. Do you? Do you check in on the stock market in the paper when you wake up? No, that goes back to my finances conversation, which right. <laughs> won't reopen. Um, no, what what other questions do you have down that line of questions? No, that, that was it. That was it. What were you saying about something you need to do? No. Accountability for the PD. Right. Yes. Back I just that. I just don't know how to approach that without pissing a lot of people off. Yep. I mean, I've been seeing more and more like trials, which has been good. But then you just see the cops back on duty the next day. So. Well, part, part of that goes down to like, are, are people who are being, and this is what the, what, where that question came from earlier. Do people realize what's illegal and do they know that they have grounds to sue or report? And then I guess the so, flip side of that is, is anything gonna be done? I'd say yes, they do, but it takes so long for a case to get put on the docket sometimes that it's just not worth it. Uh, Why is it not worth it? Want, because it, some people simply don't want the stress of it, to be honest. I know that there were situations where I could have sued over certain things and probably won, but I simply did not want to deal with the stress in or out of the city, to be honest. Uh, and sometimes trials can take like eight months to get put on the docket and be set to trial. And at that point, it's like, it's just not anymore. There's that defeatism. Everybody's yeah. got it. Yeah, 100%. Because after you've been in the city for a year and a half, you, you start understanding what's worth it and what's not. Maybe that's the starting point. Everyone is so defeated that they're not even willing to do what's right. Yep. Sometimes I would just rather take the charge and move on than dealing with court, to be honest. I have a lot to think about. You do indeed. Thank you, Nancy. I really appreciate this meeting. This was. I appreciate this too. This has been really insightful. Yeah, it was val valuable but beyond probably what uh, I realized initially. So I, I really do appreciate it. Absolutely. I'm happy to meet again in the future if you need, you want to, or. Oh, heck questions. yeah. Um, I'm going to call you a friend from here on out. Sounds good, Sloan. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> if you do want the intro to gangs, um, I'm happy to set that up too. 
yeah i i definitely need to i need to figure out what the common ground would be morally i don't agree with a lot of what gangs do in the city and maybe this is a conversation i need to have with bunny first probably um but yeah i need to figure that all of that out as well yeah also mickey is um obviously on pretty good terms with a lot of them so i'm sure he'd be able to introduce you as well yeah the thing about mickey is his attention span it he would have been so done like 36 seconds into this conversation we've talked for what an hour and a half something like that almost two hours mm -hmm. yeah i don't i don't think i can get his attention for more than like 40 seconds okay fair enough <laughs> Well, it's, it's honestly, it's just me knowing the person that I work for. Um, it's, I, I am an asset to him so far as if he needs something, I can get it accomplished, but he's less an asset to me. Uh, I, my, my assets are more the people that, um, can actually other, otherwise get things accomplished. There's a lot of them in the city, so I'm sure you'll. Speaking of bunny. Oh, is she calling? Just got a text message. Yeah. She was calling me during that meeting as well. <laughs> She should have come. a lot of phone this calls. This would have been a great conversation to have her here for. True. I have so okay, many phone calls so to catch up on. Let's let's have a meeting with Bunny. Uh oh, I see hey, what's why happening. Are on here. The, why are you on the table? There's I'm, one. I'm not on the table, Nancy. That's weird, huh? Pretty weird. Pretty weird, dude. Pretty weird, dude. Uh let's let's set up a meeting with uh Bunny. Um Zay. Anyway, let's yeah, set up a meeting with ours. Bunny to discuss um, other action items. All right. Sounds good. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to be up here for a little bit answering phone calls, but it was a pleasure to actually meet and sit down with you, Sloan. Yeah, same. I really appreciate this. Again, thank you so much, Nancy. No problem. You have a good day, Sloan. You too. Bye. Let me out. <laughs> Please let me out. Hello, it's Ruby. Hi, Ruby. It's Sloan. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I am fine. I just stepped out of a almost two hour long meeting. Holy shit. <laughs> Everything good? Yeah. Uh, there are just conversations that need to be had in the city that sometimes take a long time. True. Anyway, I'm available now if you are. I uh, am. Uh, give me a couple minutes. I'm sure thinking about some food and then okay. I'll <laughs> I'll come meet you wherever you want me to meet. Uh let's meet at Town Hall. I'm going to head back there shortly. Okay. Give me awesome. a couple minutes and and I'll be there. You got it. Looking forward to it. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thinking about some food. My wife is so pissed. <laughs> I've been on for so long. After this Ruby meeting, I'm done. Damn. Damn. Ugh. I'm gonna get better about my sound effects when I like run into stuff. Really? Camera angles. Where am I? What's my orientation? This way. I take it DW is offline, right? So we're probably not having our... Sloan! Yes, sir. Hi. Um, Hi. We met with um, Bunny. Okay. Um, uh, she, she, I didn't even need to tell her. She basically said, Hi, I'm too busy, so I'm going to help you guys find a director. Okay. I didn't, 
I didn't even need to tell her. She said, this is too much. She will help us get it off of the ground. And then say, and she will also help us like with like advertising for a director. Okay. And then she said, once she hires them, once we get them hired, she's going to be just an unpaid donor. She like legally owns the business. It's like part of it. She owns it, but like she doesn't get paid from at all. Gotcha. Okay. Uh -huh. And she also said, I need to like do businesses surrounding the Lona Santos thing. You can just submit it the way that it is. Perfect. And it works. Awesome. So literally, know. we have to do nothing. That's fantastic. Except hire a new director. I'm here for it, man. That's great. Hey. Yeah. Um, Doctor, I want Kyle. If he yes, gets hired, Kyle. I want. Absolutely. I want. Yeah, Kyle. Kyle's great. We, I want him hired like ASAP because yeah. literally, I'm doing. This is, I'm, I've been awake since eight, really. Yeah, I uh, I have one more meeting and I'm getting text messages uh, that I need to um, take the train home as soon as possible. Oh. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, wow. A local just took out a streetlight mm -hmm. casually. Okay. Um, I need you to do me a favor. All right. I'm going to send you a business proposal. Um, this is, this is like Ukraine. Basically, I need you to send it to one of the administrators of the city and see what they think. Okay. Because this is something that I find questionable. Crane finds very questionable. And we just want it confirmed by an administrator. Hey, we can't have this because this is literally something that would get everybody who sees us tonight to the holiday. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to just send it to you. Do you do that one thing for me? Because I'm fucking sure. down today. Have you seen Alex at all? I have not seen Alex at all. I saw her tweet earlier, I think, but that was it. Or twat. I saw her tweet uh, earlier. Is Mickey at Town Hall? I don't fucking know. He Mickey there's, does what Mickey does. There's a helicopter here. Eh, I mean, he... Last I saw, he drove off. Oh, it, it looks extremely damaged. I'm going to guess maybe not. Yeah. Gentlemen. Hey, how's it going? Uh, I know anyway. he's being held hostage. Anyways, oh, appreciate it. I'm on the phone with him right now. Oh, is, is he, he still, still stuck in little soul? Are you still stuck in little soul? Yes, I'm still stuck in little I need to pick up. Help. <laughs> Tell Bill to pick me up, please. Uh, He wants you to go pick him up, Bill. Is he at smoke Tell him I might smoke in the water. I'm in a very vulnerable spot. He's at smoke in the water. Okay, well. Hey, listen, I'm, I'm a little soul without a car. I could die at any moment. One more time, Bill. Tell him to wait there because Happy is going to meet him there. That's wait there. Happy's store. Happy is meeting And there. he has a meeting with uh, Happy. And you have a meeting with um, Happy. Yes, I need to meet with Happy, but I need to get. Maybe when Song will give him a happy ending. Too. I'm Who knows? A little soul. He's going to be Ew. there. Okay. Jesus. Um, <laughs> the right, the shit that I emoji about got approved. Yeah. Okay. Hush hush. Apparently it was just nothing. We spoke about nothing. Smile. Oh, oh, whoops. Yeah, it's one of those. Gotcha. Too late. Yeah. All right. I mean, not as in bad for us. Bad as in Land Buddha will probably want to send it. I mean, it's fine. The only person I talked to about it was uh, from there. Oh. I mean, it should all be good. Um, yes. Anyway, I'll review this. Oh, man. Yeah. Kyle. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think Kyle hired. Yes. Um, and I'm going to get him. I don't want to put him straight in the deep end with PD. So I'm going to start him with Lennox Santos, then push him towards PD. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Appreciate uh, you. Wait, you guys email by any chance? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, send that to me. I'll, I'll talk to him as well. You got it. Alrighty. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Later. A little bit slow. Bye. Yo, Fate, you still around? You good if I send your email to Abe? Quote email. I was just messaging you that. Perfect. Mm. 
Welcome to the team, apparently. Uh, okay. For 17 minutes almost, it seems. Make it look like I'm actually doing something. My desk is starting to squeak. Are you here for the jump show? No. I oh. wish. Or She's we, here or for we me, though. Cause... No, but I mean, wouldn't that be awesome if you, like, jumped over the door as fireworks I went would off? totally love to do that. Huh. I'm gonna talk to the mayor's office. <laughs> I got Denied. excited for a minute. I fucking love jumping my bike. Interesting. That would be awesome, though. We do, like, a... Like a bike rally and everything. We have everyone come down. We get those dollar store beads, and then we oh, have people yeah. doing this over the over that the would clock be tower. Sick. Have some bands playing here. Yeah, I mean you can always, uh, I think, rent one of the uh, ramps, can't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. That'd I launched. They had set up at the airport once. I launched it so hard and flew so high. It was great. I did like. 360s like five times in the air. Nice. Or, 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 or you know, we get the mayor's helicopter there, have it hovering, hmm. and go over that for extra one. Dude, that would be sick. Fireworks actually, going actually, off. they did. It was around. It was around um, circle ramp. So it was the circle one, and they had mm -hmm. the they had a chopper flying in the middle, and then there was cars that were trying to do the loop, but they oh didn't God. quite get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's a little too dangerous. But, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh well, sorry to fun. sorry to get excited when I saw your bike rolling up. <laughs> I, I figured there's a show coming. I wish. I really yeah, do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. Hey Sloan, you want a show? <laughs> Hi Sloan. No. Hey Ruby. Oh, damn it. Um, is he towing the helicopter? No, like whatever. What? <laughs> Is it broken? 
Uh, yeah, I, I can't, I can't uh, tow these types of vehicles. Lovely. Yeah, this is the mayoral helicopter that appears to be stuck. Yeah, I was. Uh, I guess someone tagged it for tow. This is the second time I've come to it, but uh, I great. Give it a shot this time. It's, yeah, still doesn't uh, doesn't fit, you know. Yeah, I'd, I'm not exactly sure how it would fit on the back of your truck. Yeah, I've done boats and uh, buses before, but you know this thing is just a little bit different, you know. Yeah, she built different. Yeah. All right. Well, well, there's not much I can do about it, but I thought I'd give it a shot anyway. Best of luck, man. I wish I wish you all the best. All right. See. You. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. She broke. Why would you fuck that up? What? <laughs> Why would you do that? Why would I do what? Away. I didn't. He can't tow it. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, he literally can't tow that type of vehicle. Huh. Oh, that's fucked up. I've had them towed plenty of times before. Helicopters? Yeah. Interesting. I don't know where it I would get... fit. The truck's not big enough. Yeah, well, I get Mickey You'd at least once a week. I mean, you ever see a big uh, tugboat on the back of a Oh helicopter? my god. You no, I haven't. They were doing that? Yeah, they, they towed the tugboat to the gas station to fill it up. Wow. <laughs> that's impressive. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So we need a bike show. I'd love to be in it. That'd be awesome. We're gonna have all the bikes up along here, down the sidewalks, down the roads. Have a ramp over the clock tower. Thanks, Slum. 1.21 gigawatts. Oh my god. Uh, that seems extremely dangerous that. and probably not something that the mayor's office should be supporting. But hey, knowing Mickey, I'm sure he'd approve it. Well, I mean, he lends his helicopter on the front lawn where it kicks dirt just, into Just people casually. Doing, exactly. Yeah, kicks, kicks their faces while they're doing yoga. So. Well, if you want to have that, uh, that bike jump, I'm sure Cerberus Industries would be more than happy to sell you some fireworks for it. Oh, I'm sure they would. Better call Nancy. <laughs> Nancy was the uh, who gave me fireworks last time that I needed for an event. So it wasn't for a jump; it was for the Pride Art Festival. Inmates take Bolingbrook. Huh. Yeah, hopefully that's all over now. Well, Ruby, you wanna you wanna chat real quick? Sure. Cool. I don't have an office, by the way. I just kind of like generally meet in this vicinity. <laughs> all right, all right. As long as it's not like top secret, people are allowed to hear stuff, then this is a good space to meet. If you don't have a lawn chair, you can take the couch. Oh no, I I have both. Okay, great. That's my pockets are being stupid. Okay. All right. Glad we could make this happen. My, uh, yeah. my week has been insane already and I expect it to continue to escalate. Boy. I'm assuming it has something to do with the lifers because I saw Mickey blot out about lifers calling him or something. Yeah, I had to draft the fastest legislation I've ever drafted about a parole program that may or may not actually happen, but I think oh, it was geez. a negotiating tool to get them to calm down. And that was in the middle of my two hour meeting, no less. Oh my God. Right. Yeah. That's my week so far. Oh boy. <laughs> anyway, let's talk arts. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So who, 
have you talked to anybody when it comes to the whole picture frame idea? Nope, not at all. Okay. Um, because Babis uh, reached out and talked to uh, a dice god about it, and he said it's too much work. <laughs> okay. Yeah. A, a dice god. Yeah, a dice. Okay, mm -hmm. fair enough. That's, that's so, fine. Uh, one might expect this, these kinds of responses. I, I think probably then more realistically what we need to move forward with is just what kind of funding we can do to move within the measures already established. So like mm -hmm. shows at VLC and that kind of support. Mm -hmm. um, but that makes sense. I, I right. expected that some of the things that we want to accomplish are probably not reasonable. Um, mm -hmm. but I have the, you have not because you asked not attitude. And so True. that's, that's where I come from with most of these things. Well, the, the thing is, is like, I don't know how Babis kind of explained him. If it was kind of explained as you put the picture up on the wall and you can remove it and you can kind of do all that kind of stuff, that would be sure ideal. But you know, why can't we have something that's kind of like the green tag stuff? It might look sure. like a picture, but it's not kind of thing. Right. Um, I mean, it's if I could, if I could have framed it something like that, then maybe it that would possibly. I have no idea. Um, so I have no clue. Yeah, I mean, if Abbas has connections to, um, let's let's call him what he really is, a city planner. <laughs> Uh, then, then, well, no, uh, he's the reason why we call him Dice God is because he's been doing Dice God roll thingy, like a where it's like a death roll. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, so he's been. He told me to call him Dice God, so I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna call him a city planner. <laughs> it it makes more sense for what we're discussing. Yep. <laughs> uh. But yeah, I, I mean, it's it's kind of one of those things that, that maybe maybe there's just no no plausibility inside the scope for anywhere in the near term. And if that's mm -hmm. if that's it, right? My my whole mentality is, I would rather not wait around for new things in the city if there's already a way for us to start supporting people who should be supported. Right. So that's right. that's where it's like, okay, this is a great idealistic idea. If no one no one has the time and energy or ability to support it at the time, that's great what is and actually just in that last meeting i came from basically said the same thing right I, I want to be an enabler as much as i can of the types of things in the city that are reasonable and actionable so mm -hmm. if what is reasonable and actionable is let's put some kind of event on to support like we talked about before cultural thing um i think uh, the perfect example that i've been using is babis is greek and he touts his greek culture often mm -hmm. um so maybe our first our first celebration is of Greeks, like Greek culture or something like that. And then like let okay. people bring new, new thoughts forward. Um, and then letting there be like art shows specifically around whatever theme that we want to come up with, we can mm -hmm. from a month to month or even like every couple of weeks, um, do some kind of showcase, um, at VLC or wherever, um, so that people can come around and show the art. Um, from a funding perspective, it would just be like, okay, we want to find a way in which we can pay the artists. Um, this is probably something that needs to get in approval from city planners or Senate um, because it's new before we actually go mm -hmm. ahead and move forward. But the like similar kind of structure, right? Where we want to pay people for the art that they're putting on display and then uh, the, the artists themselves. Uh, and then, um, I guess the, the event component itself would be something that we could either work with the parks and rec department or whoever, maybe just with VLC in general, um, right. to, to support like some kind of large scale event where we say, okay, well, this is the time we're going to come and celebrate everybody. It's, you know, during a specific tsunami at, at you know, at four o'clock Eastern, for instance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then, uh, on, on the 28th, I don't know. I'm just giving random dates. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know. But then, yeah, like we, we for a week or two, right, try and mm -hmm. drive attention. That's the thing that I think is drastically underutilized in this city is is like attention driving behaviors. Um, people mm -hmm. twat stuff out, which is fine, but it gets lost immediately by just people being random and, and exactly. the worst. Well, so like, like our last event, like we had 
um i feel like we the only reason why we had as many people as we did come it was because we had musical artists uh, as well sure. so i feel like if we just threw on an art event it was just strictly art i feel like the city will not care just yeah. flat out like, i mean it then i mean i think that's that's fine right we can we can have musical artists performing as well i, I think turning it into some kind of like gala event would be awesome mm -hmm. right like that's kind of my dream is like there's a monthly gala that that comes out you get dressed up and and right um you come in and you're what you're doing is you're showing support of the artists um yes we'll have music present but this isn't really about the musicians the musicians are there certainly and we want to support them but this is about the other art that you haven't necessarily seen in the city um and what we're actually doing then can be celebratory of again whatever we want to and and like the the idea of like cultural celebration is one idea, right? If there are, mm -hmm. if there are other people who are doing really great things in the city, then we should celebrate what's happening here. Um, and we don't have 100%. to wait for something that that's like national or international. We can just right, find right. an opportunity to say there's, there's people are doing cool stuff and we want to celebrate their cool stuff by, by coming up with, with art ideas. So that's, that's kind of the, the broad strokes, visual, that I have mm -hmm. huh, saying visual, right, Talk right, art, right. That's funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just I didn't mean to make a pun, but I did. No, nope, um, no, nope. it was perfect. It was perfect. It was, uh, but that's that's kind of like just the the early idea. And and again, this is and, and the meeting I just came from. The whole idea is enabling people in the city to do the stuff that they love, certainly, but then also providing mm -hmm. outlets for people in the city to do something more than run sanitation or going hunting and fishing and all of those kinds of things it should be again a celebratory event where everybody who's in the city can come and and hang out and um, right that's that's kind of what i what i'm thinking about at this point mm -hmm. and, and i think that's not something that requires construction it doesn't require anything other than approval from the mayor to say yeah we'll give out some funding and and we already yeah. have the ability to request grants for that kind of stuff okay Okay. Well, I mean, that's a good thing uh, to go with. I guess the only problem I would see with when it comes to doing events at VLC is, you know, like I personally do not have this uh, to change out the artwork within on the walls, right? Yeah, we would need um, some partner someone someone with, else. Yeah, someone within my company need that, um, okay. but they don't have the best train ticket and sometimes they kind of want to put their own stuff in there and, and <laughs> okay. so you know slightly biased i guess to sure train. so i'm just like i don't really know you know honestly how the government can really touch that if that makes sense because um, somebody owns that facility yeah i mean it, obviously it's just going to be probably through partnership conversation right i think mm -hmm. um who who owns VLC? I don't know that I know that. Uh, uh, I think it's Rami. Okay, I, yeah, I've, I've heard Rami's name. Uh, I think Rami and Mickey actually know each other pretty well too. So so maybe this oh. is a place in which we could have a sit down with Rami to say, here's an idea that we'd love to support VLC. Mm -hmm. Um, here's how we think it's going to happen. It requires some better enablement, um, than probably what's available. What can we do, um? To get these kinds of things moving i mean if it if it's mm -hmm. just sheerly logistics i'm sure that's something that he can work out at the end mm -hmm. of the day right it's it's like what are we doing to further um sew back more into the people of los santos that's that's my main prerogative right okay so um i'm like i'm fine with doing uh events and stuff like that and using the funding from the government to do that uh it just it'll just take a lot of planning kind of yeah and, and that's where i say we we can probably uh partner with someone like charlie who uh, heads up the parks department she's a mm -hmm. great planner right and that's actually what they're specifically focused on um and we can actually run budget through them um this is more okay. just like an idea that we already have that's kind of in place um we already have the mechanisms in place. We already have the logistics in place. It's more at this point, just, I think, pulling all the pieces together so that it's like one cohesive idea. Um, 
I need to talk to her in general about some things. Um, I don't know what our earliest time frame for trying to do something like this would be. Um, Mm. But I am at least starting some of these conversations now that the re-election is over, that we can actually put some some things into practice. That's that's kind of... We had to wait until yesterday, basically. Oh, yeah. I get that. Also, congratulations, by the way. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, not that I had anything to do with it. Yeah, I, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad he was reelected for the sake of being able to ease back into what, what we had already begun. True. But um, I'm trying to think of... You know, now, here's the thing. When you say, like, bi we kind of events and stuff like that's good sounding on paper, but art takes a long time. And, you know, not everybody, you know, devote sure. all their time to it. Right. You know, so it honestly we try doing like every other week kind of thing. But I don't know if the artists supply that many, if that sure. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Then, then maybe it's more reasonable to do it monthly or quarterly. Again, the, mm-hmm. the idea is like, you know, what broad strokes makes the most sense for us to thematically come around right your original idea about a theme um are there specific events coming up that we can celebrate um you know like right. we're getting ready to go into fall i, I don't want to mm-hmm. be a basic person right, <laughs> right. like pumpkin, fall leaves you know, know, yeah stuff, whatever yeah. but no but but like something that can be more thematic to again whatever's happening in the city i don't know that there are any mm-hmm. specific events that are going on but i just i, I still love the idea of like celebrating people's histories um, cause right. there's so much rich history here that, that like, mm-hmm. maybe that's an, the first thing we invite is just a conversation with us to say, what would you like to see? Like, what, what do you think we should be celebrating? And then, mm-hmm. and then take that and then like put that out as like a call to action then for the artist and then start planning the date that we would think it would be that's six weeks out or a month out or whatever it may be. Um, right. I think that like logistically is probably what needs to happen. Um, Mm -hmm. Just again, like you said, the reasonableness of of being able to create art in the appropriate time span. Uh, And then at the same time, again, we're, we're still kind of a little bit ahead of the game because we need to figure out what, what the Senate might approve for paying artists. Um, So that's the next piece that I actually have to work on um, a program for is artist payments that are related to what they're displaying in the city and how that might be displayed. Right. Because I'm like, for me, like, I have graffiti work, I have livery work, and I've had, you know, pocket items that I've made and and Mm -hmm. designs and stuff like that. Not every artist is like that. I mean, there are people who do portraits and stuff. And there are um, some people that don't even get a payment because they make art to make art. And then they just want to show it in the guy. Um so it kind of varies and i don't know how you would do payment uh, when it comes to one the event and two just for regular payment kind of thing i guess uh the event piece would be one side of it which is basically just the the parks and rec asking for budget to rent out a space and all of the things they need to basically throw a gala um the the artistic payment side would be more interesting around like we're choosing however many artists that we want to display in the VLC for this event. Um, Mm -hmm. We have a list of names in advance of who we're going to pay and basically just tracking it like we would any other type of budgetary request, whatever the flat rate is that we want to come up with for basically the acquisition to um, put the art on display. And so that would be the first part. And then I guess maybe the second part to be considered would be, do we want to provide books? Um, And I think that could be a good like additional like take home um, from that kind of event, right? You you can come support these artists even further by making a purchase of of the books. The state wants to sponsor them on one side, but then on the other hand, this is maybe this is your take home item. You can, you know, keep it in in your apartment or whatever, and then come look at it when you want to think back on this night. I don't know. Those are, again, just spitballing ideas. I think there's plenty of ways that we can do it. Uh, as far as, like, paying the individuals, though, it would just be, like, simply tracking their IDs. Uh, right. It, it would all I have mean, to that's kinda... come through some one individual, though. Yeah. 
Now, with my past event that we did, we had to make it kind of into like a contest because okay. uh, we didn't have the budget to pay pretty much every. Like we we ended up giving everyone um, 12k plus a book. Sure. Um, even if you didn't place. Uh, for the people who did place, I think the highest was a hundred k, and then we knocked it down in halves. I think um, for second and third, I think. So um, it was like fifty, and then twenty five. I think. So I gotcha. how the payments went, but yeah, I, I mean, I think so. The the artist royalties payment is uh, seventy five grand. Uh, for every new song that they put out um okay. now the the royalty it's it's two twofold it's 25 grand as an acquisition cost and then they have the actual like royalty component which is another 50 the reason being there's no way to track like how royalties actually would work in the city like number of plays. right right um so we tried to come up with some like flat number i think this is kind of how we would want to do the same thing i don't know what what that would exactly look like in reality but i mean i think kind of like starting at that same request mm. just saying like we want to pay every artist 75 grand um for the art that they're putting together um that's going to be on display during this you know this event that we're throwing this is a specific way that we can get them to um be incentivized uh to right. do the art that they're doing part of me thinks that maybe it could be even requested higher because this is not royalties this is this is acquisition for display right like I, this is probably right. something we need to research uh, you know like what's how many artists is it going to be and it's a one-time thing we're doing every quarter or however it's, often it can only be 12 because vlc right. only has 12 uh, so frames. okay there we go so 12 12 artists i think it i think it's 12 it's either 12 or 13 but i'm sure I mean, even still, I mean, that's that's a much smaller number than mm -hmm. the number of artists that can get paid any single month Yeah, uh, from a musical standpoint. Um, so I think I think um, maybe even requesting something like 100 grand or 150 grand because it's you, you may only do this once. Right. You're not going to necessarily have the every month and not every artist is going to be chosen. That's that's kind of right. the other part is like we're we're we want to support all the artists. We do have limitations by what's actually available in the city. Um, and, uh, I guess that's what you could do is if you if we do have so many artists that want to get onto this program, you can do it every other week. But and have, then just rotate through. Yeah, just rotate them because you know and do this prompt this week or whatever, but they can do the next one. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think like logistically, is that a nightmare to try and like schedule Probably. something out? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, I, I still am kind of of the mindset. Let's do it monthly, at least to, to see how it starts. Mm -hmm. And then same kind of thing is true, right? Maybe maybe you didn't put anything this month, but we know what the theme is for the next month. And then you can go mm -hmm. ahead and get a jump start on it. If we could plan out thematically what we wanted to do for a couple months in advance, then maybe that gives more people even even more time. As long right. as we know who we think is probably going to be a submitter um, or doing their submissions. Okay. Yeah. I mean, um, this is this is still a very big logistical nightmare, but oh yeah, but, guaranteed. But at least, uh, 100%. Uh, at least it's it's kind of the beginnings of something. Yeah, because when I came into the city, like I saw like all the musical uh, you know companies out there, and I saw that there was a visual one, so. It was like, well, I'll be the first one kind of thing. So I think of like, I know this might be, this is going to sound like egotistical and shit like that, but it's really not. Like when I think of like Wu Chang or Mandem or whatever for their record companies and stuff, I think of Artist Studio in that similar sure. aspect. As you should. Like, because it's the only other company, but it's, I mean, VLC could have been that, but they don't be artists when they put art on the wall, you know? Right. So, so it's just like, like, like I said, when I first came into the city, they were, it was just memes on the wall, but now yeah. it's, we've Actual kind art. of changed that habit. Thank yeah. God. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. When I, and I think this is where like partnerships make a lot of sense, right? So artist studio on one side, VLC, who may have the conduit for us to um, run this through, 
the state budget that's actually paying, mm-hmm. you know, through Artist Studio, um, and then like you being able to manage the artists, right? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's, that's one side. And then like Rami's business, on the other hand, the VLC is able to get their little bit of something, which is you know for the event component. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where like the two pieces of logistics really come down to it. There's the people management side, and then there's the um, operational component of like what it actually takes to put a show on. Yeah, to put it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think I think this is like the good a good start um, for us to kind of start putting some some pen to paper. Because I'm um, like, Artist Studio now has a storefront, but okay. I still yet to you know get that exactly set up. Sure. Um, I did see that there was like new regulations, if you will, for yeah. for that, and I haven't uh, reached to anybody about it. Um, I'm not really sure even what I can do at this point for selling product. Um, at, yeah. at this moment. That's that's going to be an interesting one, right? Like what what the purpose of the storefront is compared to like a retail location in the mm-hmm. first place. Uh, this it may be very different. I think the the majority of what they're trying to regulate is retail, um, which I know right. not all storefronts are. Right? Sometimes, like I work for Abandon and Friends as a consultant, we don't mm-hmm. sell anything. Right? There's right. no retail component to what we do. It's a meeting space. Right. Right. So declaring what we what like specialization we're in is like we're a consulting business. We don't need to declare a specialization. Exactly. And, and, and like, um, for my company, like there is a, one of the specializations is like art or merchandise of like toys and stuff like that, which uh, some of the artists in artistry back when the were still around did make toys and plushies and stuff like that. But I don't know kind of if that would be even the thing that we are allowed to do since we're technically art so yeah. not like a toy company so i don't know yeah that'll that'll be an interesting and i don't even think the guidelines are fully complete yet they're still in that um maybe the reevaluation. Stage. yeah i mean yeah. they're like i met with mr miller um and odessa to kind of discuss a little bit more about it it sounds like they're just kind of constantly evolving as they're figuring things out because there's not one one set of regulation that makes the most sense for everybody. Right. It would be nice if that was to, to, to work like that, but yeah. Right. So, I don't know. Um, I'm wondering if, if we end up, like, let's say making a pocket item that looks like you know an artwork mm-hmm. i'm i'm not even sure first who would buy one and two um if the artist would do that because they probably wouldn't be getting a, enough money for it if that makes sense like it, they wouldn't be able to make a living off of it let's put it that way yeah that's that's kind of where the thought process of like being able to partner with pastels or, or you know one of these book making companies you're technically mm-hmm. getting a third party product in that space then artist studio is partnered with pastels because Perfect. um basically pastels when they first came into the city um they originally were what i what my company it, they were doing design work and all that kind of stuff but then became a printing company and after talking to the owner she was like, yeah, we're just going to dissolve our, you know, brand or uh, design aspect. And then if we ever need anything, uh, mm-hmm. we'll just reach out to you. Yeah, so that's, that sounds like a good partnership. Is that Mila? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I love yep. Mila. She's great. Yeah. She's awesome. So she, she basically said we'll pastel uh, discounts basically at past rates. So mm-hmm. artist studio can make a book at past Eights, which gotcha. is the cheapest probably in the city and then um then they can send over work that um the, the artists in the company can then take but that's like part of the, see like part of the thing is, is like the way i set um artist studio was if somebody in the city needed like an artwork 
they could come to one source, which would be Artist Studio, and then request from anybody. Now, like, let's say they came up to me and they wanted a logo. Well, I don't have to do a logo. Um, and there's other people in Artist Studio that are better at logo design than I am. Knowing that fact, I would then go into our Discordia and there's a section where it's open work. Mm -hmm. So we would put down the customer information and stuff and then anybody would pick it up. Gotcha. The problem with that is we don't have an consistent work because uh, okay. there's a lot of people who like, you know, thinking about a $5 website out there or you know, just having fans of their work here in the city, you know, that can do it absolutely pro bono. So that's, sure. that's the problem. And that will always be the struggle, I think, of any artist within this city. Yeah. Um, so I'm like trying to do my best, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Yeah. But, you know. Well, and, and I think there may be some ground to talk about you know, like non-commissioned works or, or what types of things could be done that mm -hmm. are supplemented from the state, right? Just to be able to pay artists to be able to create, um, even in the context of not necessarily holding an event, right? Um, you, I, I'm even thinking like, again, the books, the books idea is like a great idea, right? So like a, uh -huh. an artist spotlight. So I'm, I'm going to spend however many months it might take to just create art. And, right. and at the end of it all, I'll have a 10 page book with all of the art, like a tabletop book kind of thing, you know, like a, yep. something like that, that, that can be a keepsake. And then yep, because like a the, collectible book. It, exactly. Um, and then like, because the state is focused on being able to provide this as something to the artists, um, maybe the state does like a, um, a one-time commissioning kind of thing to get those kinds of art books out there. And then obviously it's like, you know, you, you can sell that as much as you want to on the back mm -hmm. end, or, uh, the other possibility is this is going to be something because the state sponsored it. This is just a giveaway. Now, now we're celebrating a specific artist, uh, and we do mm -hmm. an artist spotlight for instance. Okay. Um, I don't know. I, I really, I think the sky really is the limit here. It's, it's more yeah. like how creative can we get? uh, in, in what we want to do. Um, and, mm -hmm. and I would say like, let, let's just, let's start asking for stuff. I'm, I'm never against asking and then just seeing <laughs> what comes back. Uh, cause for at the sure. end of the day, uh, there's like, there's so much state funding to be had. Most people just don't know what to do to request it. Um, ah. and so that's where I say like, like, like we have so like, there are so many ideas. Throwing galas is a great way to engage the community as, as a whole. That's why I'm very pro community engagement. Um, but also at the same time, it's, it's like they, there will be limitations that we can support an individual, you know, um, when, when there's only 12 spots or 13 spots, uh, and right. there may be more artists who want to do something, um, or display more than one piece. Um, so if we did artist spotlights every once in a while, that kind of thing. Uh, and maybe that's another way we go, right? Is just like, we're going to do an artist spotlight for the month of whatever. Um, we have a partnership with VLC to make sure that mm -hmm. we have a space to put them on display. The The state is funding this artist this month. If you want to be funded for your art in coming months, you can submit a request. I don't know. I mean, like literally yeah, cause, that is Because basically, um, so like that, that uh, the artist that uh, has keys basically, and it works out VLC underneath uh, underneath me. Her, uh, their name is Alec Verkin, and they okay. um, kind of a like what exactly what you're saying is kind of like what they do is they For have themselves. their own kind of. Um, <laughs> so okay. yeah, um, for. A, a month or so they would put their own stuff up which is fine i'm fine with any kind of art art on the wall comparatively to memes so they had their stuff up but then what they started to do um was one of their friends uh ended up a personal bank account um, or something like that and they ended up uh self-funding uh putting art on the wall and doing like a, like a 
sponsored kind of like this is the artist of the week kind of thing so at one point yeah so so they had it like that now back when i was uh working with alec we were trying to get the figure out the picture frames because the picture frames in vlc are they might not look like a square, but they feel like a square, if that makes sense. <laughs> sure. So, so we had to basically reverse engineer, uh, so then it wouldn't uh, look like it's stretched up on the gotcha. canvas. So once we figured out all that, then uh, Alec put my stuff in there for like a week or two, and then they ended up paying me uh, per day for artwork. That was on the wall and i don't know exactly how they do it when it comes to that whole thing um and how they're trying to figure out payments and the stuff but you know this is all self-fund their own pockets but they right. get most of their money direct from you know appraising gems at vlc so right and that's that's where i think like state funded artist mm -hmm. support makes more sense than having them try and do something like that. Um, when, oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. When we already have the grounds to begin exactly. to do that kind of stuff. Um, plus it means things can be more rotational. And I think more importantly, if we can remove bias. Yeah, I agree with that because um, it would be better to basically ask people kind of in my opinion, ask to be added and if they do want to be added what would you like to put on there you know what i mean right for for me when they asked i was kind of just trying to also test out the whole fixing of the issues sure. um but uh i was also trying to show as much variety of my art as possible um it would have been nice to have a book back then so to basically sell but then the problem with that is there really isn't a place to sell that book at that location, if sure. that makes sense. Yeah. So like I can sell it at artist studio, which is going to be, you know, next to the vault, but there's nowhere to display art right. there. You know yeah. what I mean? So that's, that's the biggest problem. I think, um, that I'll be, you know, facing is yeah, I'm an art studio and I own, you know, they, there's artists underneath me, but we can't just anything, you know, what, I envisioned it back when um, storefronts weren't even a thing and, and everything. Um, I was hoping one day to get kind of like a small gallery just so then everyone within Artist Studio could have just one frame that they could put and, you know, show off whatever they want to showcase. So then if they ever had a client, they can go, hey, come with me, I'll show you, you know, my art and they could just show it on, see it on the wall. That's a whole nother logistic thing that I don't yeah. think will ever happen. Yeah. That's, that's where like starting to move into the, the realm of what kind of construction needs to get done, you know, always happy to ask, but, but when, yep. when quote dice God, <laughs> says, yep, yep, yep. No, uh, you yeah. know, city, city yeah, yeah. Say no. yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think there, there are ways we can kind of work around some of it in the near term. We can get creative. Um, you know, no. Cassandra Silverton uh, at her shop has a catalog that she just kind of keeps in the um, uh, in the tray at um, at her shop. So maybe okay. like keeping keeping you know one quantity one of each one of the things that are on display, so people can like browse uh, and then mm -hmm. you know drop it back in the tray when they're done. I don't know. There's right. there there are ways in which I'm sure we can we can figure it out. But right, right. Because I'm fine with um, selling collectible books at artist studio and stuff like that. And, and with like, if the artists themselves wanted to make something like a pocket item that was relatable, you know, or whatnot, then they could sure. sell that there. And then like 80% of the profit from that particular sold item would go back to the artist. That's what I really wanted to do was yeah if an artist made a pocket item or something, it would go directly back to the artist. So if you put in the work, then you get the reward and the benefit of it. You know what I mean? Makes sense. So, but I don't know. <laughs> <At this point. laughs> yeah, the 
struggles of the city we live in, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's true. Cool. Um, uh, all right. Now, you had questions about tattoos more possibly? Ah, yes, tattoos. So I am working on possible approval for some new technology in the city. And one of the ideas I had was, you know how we have these somehow magical rings that make like like having radio signal better? Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. <laughs> completely logical for a city. Oh um completely logical, yeah. Well some of some of the technology that uh, that the company I used to work for developed is uh basically a, a form of magnetic magnetic resonance ink uh for oh, lack okay. of better phrasing your body can be an extension of a radio so to be able to like get a tattoo as if it's almost like a surgical procedure okay uh, and then uh extending radio signal would be like one idea but I don't know what the likelihood of that happening is. Again, this is one of those, like, you have not because you asked not. And I asked and they were like, eh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. But but I think it was, a, it was an idea that kind of came around when we were discussing what are alternatives to rings? What makes the most sense? Well, technology mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense. Um, surgical things make a lot of sense for, oh, yeah. I want to feel better. Maybe go see a doctor rather than trying to get a ring. I'm hungry. Right. Okay, go to a restaurant. And talk to a work. right. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm trying not to be overly sarcastic. No, 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 uh, I get that. <laughs> but but yeah, I like trying to find ways in which like uh, not to take quote business away from other people, but like mm-hmm. makes the most logical sense for what we wanted yeah. to do. So um, that was one idea. Um, I don't know what the plausibility of of that is. Obviously, then it it comes down to like the artist to be creative in what art they're creating but like you know you've got a sleeve um let's say Mm -hmm. you use your radio with your right hand your body being an extension of the antenna i see i see it's cool in theory yes it's very cool in theory yeah i don't know how plausible it'll be um mainly because when i was talking to that guy uh (laughs) That construction guy, it was so nice of uh-huh. everything. Um, he is the point when it comes to tattoos that he does not want to move forward with them. Oh, really? Um, he basically wants um, everything kind of sp- displayed out and just kind of given. So then it just is copy paste kind of thing. Gotcha. Um, which is great, uh, but that makes it very difficult for me and any other artist. Sure. Um, Limitations. Sin- yeah. Um, so here's the thing. When it comes to tattoos, it's five times harder to read the books, if you will, and write the books or (laughs) yeah it's it's five times more than a livery for a car oh okay i gotcha yeah so if you're thinking about it that way and you have an arm and you have a leg and all the other you know it's it's a logistical nightmare and so that's why he's just like no (laughs) you know kind of (laughs) fair uh so Go, I have been goes back to reasonable and actionable. Like, I, yep, like there's only yep. so much strain and stress that, that we can put on the city. Like there are ideas. And again, I think like just squelching exactly. some of them is now, fine. Now, is it still possible? Yes. Um, is the pit still around? Yes. Um, it's just the reason why custom ones have brown is because of this issue. And I have been trying my hardest, um, all the time honestly on figuring out the books of, of all this and how to make it still a thing in this city at this point i don't know i feel like i'm the only one left that cares about it gotcha. which absolutely sucks yeah. um but i know this is like my last and probably only chance of getting artist related job 
other than livery making in the city. And when it comes to livery making, it, that's a, a, you know, complex in and of itself. You know, right. a tattoo is a little bit easier to design when it comes to just normal artists um, kind of doing it comparatively to a car. Right. But, you know, and not everybody wants to design something for a car. Not everybody wants to design a tattoo either. Sure. You know, it's a, that's the other, you know, problem when it comes to artist studio is like, I'm trying to help out artists in every way that I can and try to expand as much as I can. It's just, I'm just, there's a lot of limitations for me at yeah. this point. Um, so the one thing that I do have, which is the tattoos, I'm trying my hardest. Um, I've reached, you know, I've been talking with the owner Pez Speedwagon um, about the, the tattoo station. Um, like I said, I talked to that worker and everything. It's just, it's, I, I'm at this point, I'm, I'm reaching out to other cities for help, uh, okay. you know, yeah. just so, and, and like, I know a couple people who are construction workers in other cities or were construction people, you know, in other cities. So they are trying to figure out the books as well. So hopefully there's something there, but at this point it's, I, I honestly don't really know where it's at. Sure. That makes sense. So, I, I mean, I would love that, that implementation of, you know, a radio kind of tattoo or, you know, even like a, a tattoo, uh, you know, like different tattoos that would, you know, even wash off or something after a certain point of time, sure. um, you know, that might make you feel better or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, an endorphin rush for a period of time exactly you know like that would be really cool and it you offer something different um other than magical rings right. you know that, that make perfect sense mm -hmm. so it, it, it might be a thing i just don't know um yeah, that's fair but it it would have to be after just getting tattoos into the city would be a yeah. thing and, and that's that's kind of my thought right is, is like at this point it's it's more short term you know i've I've always had this idea dream big or think big start small act uh -huh. fast and so it's like oh, I, you know, I, have, I have these great ideas but uh and, and actually the meeting i came from before this uh it was like hey you're you're an idealist and i'm like yes but i'm an, an idealist who is willing to at least ask the question because it seems like a lot of times people don't ask the question or right. they don't ask the right question um and so that's that's where i'm trying to like not just be focused on what I can do or what would be beneficial to me, but what is beneficial to the city broadly or whatever. And I think that's kind of like the uniqueness of the position that I'm working in is um, mm -hmm. it's, it's very broadly focused on, we'll just call it like city enhancement. Um, right. So that's, that's what I want to continue to do in whatever way possible. I know again, what's reasonable, what's actionable. Uh, exactly. Be, being realistic about it. Um, but yeah, I still dream big, right? I want to dream big. I always mm -hmm. want to dream big um, because at the end of the day, it's it's the big dreams that when they finally do come to fruition, oh, you know, the whole 100%. city changes. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, that's uh, why Babis is so inspirational, honestly, because he literally just came here from Greece and uh, was trying to find, you know, a dig site and to see if there's anything here on the island and now has like a little mini dig site and everything and yeah, absolutely. you know it, it it's becoming a thing so you know right. it, it's great to have that and and everything and see where that's going and, and it's very inspirational and stuff so you know it's possible you know anything's possible right Absolutely. Until it says no. Yeah, and, until they say no. <laughs> and then again, at the, the worst case scenario is they say no. Like then, then you're exactly. nowhere worse than you were, except that you can move on to the next idea. Right. I would rather have somebody say, yeah, no, because then, then I can put my energy in the next thing. Right. Like, so like with, when it came like to the picture frame thing, I didn't talk to anybody about that. Um, it, like I said, I think it was just Pabbas just you know, gunning a question. Sure. But I'm like, I'm wondering if we could make it more like the graffiti kind of stuff, but 
that's a question I haven't been able to ask, and I honestly don't know exactly who to reach out to about that. Um, yeah, me either. <laughs> might, you might know more than I do when it comes I, to that, I guess. I wish. I, I don't. That was that was another question that was asked in the last the last <laughs> meeting was like, how well do you know the senators? And I said, I don't. <laughs> I don't know oh, any geez. of the senators. Yeah, no, I, I work very closely under the mayor, this specific mayor, and that's about the extent mm. of, of what I've got, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah, I don't really... I've talked to some of them, uh, but I don't really ever talk to them. It's just like... Mm -hmm. I, I'm kind of like at the position because like I'm an artist and I understand how much is on my plate, right? Right. And I, the last thing I want to do is just try to throw something else at them, you know, kind of yeah, thing absolutely. as well. Because I understand, like, I've had, when it comes to, like, this tattoo stuff, I've had the taste of how much it is and how crazy it is. And I can't do that uh, when I was a livery artist, you know, like, back when I first got on the livery team. I understood how crazy that was, but now seeing how crazy tattoos are, I'm just like, holy shit. Like, <laughs> I'm just like, the last to do is, is, you know, just get somebody upset, you know, <laughs> or something. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So, I. Yeah. Here we are. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I think that's kind of just where where I'm I'm at with some of the other things. Uh, you know, I've I've been specifically working on some other projects that just kind of hit ahead, uh, and so it was like, all right, well, you know, if we're if we're saying no, then that's fine. Moving on, or if we're saying put a pin in it, fine. Moving on. Uh, there are so many other things that can be worked on. Like again, there there are like near-term mm -hmm. projects we can do to support artists and and like i i honestly am all oh, for now just figuring out the logistics of it so this is where we're at yeah. i guess um no <laughs> so i uh two things one i'm gonna run out of the city yep. here in a minute uh but i do want to finalize Same. this thought um i will begin working on some thought processes around putting together like a programmatic request um, something okay. that you and I can work on individually or, or independently or yep. no, not, not independently, collectively. <laughs> I've, I've spent so long in the city and talked so much. I'm just burnt out. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, you, things, you, uh, take yeah, a rest. I, boy, do I. Uh, but yeah, so things that we can work on collectively, um, something that we can kind of like put put our ideas around and then formalize as something that we can submit to the Senate. Um, again, all we're really trying to get, this is not like new legislation necessarily. This is just programmatic approval. Um, and then once they say yes, it's just, all right, let's, let's get people paid and then we'll work out the logistics for um, getting some, some new, new events going in the near term. Right. Right. A hundred percent. And awesome. I'm all for, you know, figuring out some kind of, you know, partnership documentation uh, thing when it comes to VLC and, yeah. and getting that more on a regular basis and, and like an application, I guess, if you will, uh, to showcase those artists and, and, mm -hmm. you know, all that kind of stuff. So I'm really down for doing all that. Perfect. Awesome. Well, Ruby, I thank you so much. Um, let me shoot you. I'll uh, let me close my eyes and then I'll shoot you my uh, my email. <laughs> yep, no um, problem. And then we can kind of talk a, a little outside the city as well. Sure. I think some of this might make more sense. Outside. <laughs> oh, okay. Do you have my email? Uh, no, I don't think so. 
but you can you know email me yeah, there I'll and just, then, yep, yep. <laughs> then we'll be connected Okay, I just thought, yeah. Perfect, got it. All right, well, uh, let's start working on some of this stuff. I, I honestly think we can probably get something like at least at the beginning of uh, the works, like in the next right. week. I mean, okay, there's no reason we well, can't get something. That would be it. awesome. Yeah, yeah, because if we can at least start getting the funding going or set up uh -huh. a funding program to keep this going that would be extremely helpful more than what we currently have you know because i mean i've had artists reach out to me and they're like well i have a carpet and i am you know trying to find you know freelance work but i can't find anything you know now that the markets have been you know gone there a lot of our markets actually like what we did freelancing um kind of dried up because yeah. we used to make banners, we used to make logos, we make all the pocket items, and it's just kind of vanished. <laughs> yeah. So, well, anything at this point to to boost this back up well, would be amazing. At this we'll, point, we'll call this the uh, the adrenaline shot to get something started back <laughs> up. Right. That's, that's the way I'll think about it, at least. Hell yeah. Cool. All right, okay. Ruby. I'm gonna run. Um, all right. Great chat. Thank, Thank you. you so much. This is very good. Right. Um, it was and very then, great. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll see what we can get started. Looking okay. forward to getting everybody paid. <laughs> oh, a hundred percent. I appreciate you uh, taking yeah. the time out. I know you have such a busy schedule. So. <laughs> I do. It's it's fine though. I, these are these are necessary things to make sure this city is um, back in a place of thriving. That's what right. I'm after. A hundred percent. Yeah, and if I can, you know bring artists back into the city that used to be here and stuff like that, that would be hella worth it. Yeah. To me. That would be so great. So I'm here yeah, for it. And my email is always open. If you ever need anything art related as well, so Perfect. just let awesome. me know. Yes. Uh, I, I have, actually may hit you I have up. like 25 artists underneath me. So <laughs> awesome. Perfect. Well, again, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to probably take a nap back here in the corner. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good night. Awesome. You, you too. We'll see you. <laughs> see ya. Yo, long stream. Uh, this is good though. A lot of things that needed to happen, a lot of conversations that needed to happen. All very good. Uh, we'll be back probably again, do it tomorrow. Repeat it, run it back. All right, y'all. We'll see you in the next one. Hope you had some fun. Peace. <laughs>